Her Big Fat Hunky Billionaire Boss, Clean Billionaire Romance Series, Book 3, written by Victorine E. Liskey, narrated by Karen Gunderson. Chapter 1 Damien scrolled through the photos in the online matchmaking service, feeling more frustrated as he went. Why did he sign up for this thing? His CFO convinced him privilegedsingles.com was the way to go, but after a few weeks of looking through the profiles, he realized Chuck just got lucky when he found his wife. The women on privileged singles were horrible. They all looked plastic. He blew out a breath and closed the website, not sure why he even bothered. He was damaged goods. He scrubbed his face with his hand and picked up his double-short, low-fat, no-foam latte and took a sip. The liquid warmed his throat. The twitchy bean always made his coffee just how he liked it. Some people called him particular. He simply knew what he liked and how to get it. Nothing wrong with that. Enough stalling. He clicked back over to the spreadsheet he'd been working on and sighed. Pleasant, hollow times. Another month of barely scraping by. The stupid newspaper was a thorn in his side. Not that Warren Industries couldn't take a loss. They were a multi-billion dollar company. But that small town newspaper made no sense. Warren Industries mostly owned tech companies. He'd asked his father why he owned it, but every time he tried to get answers, his father would brush him off. He wouldn't talk about it which made Damien insanely curious and irritated. And who even read the newspaper anymore? Everyone got their news online. Why had his father made him promise he'd keep it? Damien shook his head. The real question was, why was he still honoring his father's wishes? He'd passed away a year ago. There was no reason to keep the tiny newspaper business on the books. His father was gone, and Damien was in charge now. He stood from his office chair and walked to the large windows overlooking the city, the morning sun shining. He could see his reflection in the glass as he walked. His limp was more pronounced today. Stress did that to him. He'd have to do some of his exercises. What he really wanted to do was go to Pleasant Hollow, Wisconsin, and find out why his father bought the newspaper in the first place. Maybe there was some hidden value in the building that he'd see if he went there. Or maybe his father was just sentimental, hanging on to it because it represented a time gone past. His secretary beeped in. You have a call on line one. Who is it? The intercom clicked. Your mother. Oh, no. He didn't want to deal with her right now. Damien grabbed his coat and pulled it on, then pushed the intercom button. Actually, hold all my calls. I'm going to be out of the office for a few days. His secretary paused. A vacation? Damien scoffed. You know I don't believe in those. This is work-related. Yes, sir. He'd go to Pleasant Hollow and look around. If he didn't find anything, he could shut down the newspaper without feeling like he was betraying his father. He'd sell the building and finally get the strange, failing business off the books. He picked up his briefcase and coffee and left the office. As he stepped into the elevator, his phone buzzed. He cringed before pulling it out and answering it. Hello, Mother. Why have you been avoiding me? I have dinner all set up for tomorrow, and I don't even know if you're coming. Whoops, he'd forgotten about that. Sorry, I'm heading out of town. Whatever for? I told you I wanted to set up something special on Friday night. The elevator doors opened, and he stepped out into the underground garage. I know what your something special means, and I'm not interested. His mother sighed. How do you know you're not interested? You don't even know what I'm talking about. Damien rolled his eyes and started toward his Lexus. Who is she? Well, I... Mother, I don't want to be set up. He clicked his key fob, the chirping noise echoing off the concrete walls. She's lovely. You'll like her. How do you know her? Are you setting me up with a total stranger? She's Terry Johnson's daughter. His mouth dropped. Priscilla? Mom, we dated last year, don't you remember? She's the one who talked nonstop about the Kardashians. And then she dumped him when she saw his leg. 
but he held that last bit in. I think you should give her another chance. Was his mother serious? Mom, I have to go. I'm getting in the car. Well, are you coming tomorrow? I need to know. Damien slid into the driver's seat. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm on my way out of town as we speak. When will you be back? His mother sounded a bit desperate. What had she planned? I don't know. Maybe not for a while. A long while. Why do you have to leave? I've just got to conduct some business. I'll call you tomorrow, okay? He could picture his mother on the other end of the phone, frowning. All right. He hung up the phone, glad he didn't have to have dinner with Priscilla on Friday. Catherine Fox pulled her coat tighter around her while the biting air stung her eyes. She hurried to the back of the building, glad when she got inside and the warmth enveloped her. As she made her way to the front desk, she waved at Fred hunched over his computer. No matter how early she came in, Fred always beat her. Any news this morning? Fred didn't look up from his computer. His favorite orange and brown striped scarf still hung around his neck. He often wore it, even when it wasn't cold out. She'd asked him about it once, and he'd grumbled something about a doctor, and didn't she watch television, whatever that meant. Hey, Cat. Not much going on, except the impending blizzard. I've been fielding calls since I got here. You'd think people had never heard of snow before. Cat shrugged. It's supposed to be the first big snowstorm of the season. People just want to know how much to stock up. At least it's Friday. I'm planning on holing up in my cozy little house all weekend. She hung her coat on the rack and woke her computer up. Her boss's door was closed, the blinds shut. Is Lydia in? Nope, not yet. Cat walked to the sink and filled the coffee pot with water. Good. Then maybe she could work a little on her column before things started getting crazy. She poured in the water and set the pot in place. Back at her desk, she opened up her fake email account and scrolled through the messages. Viagra, delete. Fortune-telling, delete. Enlarging certain body parts she didn't even have. Yeah, delete. Ah, there was a good one. An inheritance. She clicked the message and scanned it. Dear Madam, it is of great importance I write you. With solemn reverence, I tell you King Jaharho has passed, leaving quite a large sum of money. I would like for you to collect your inheritance. Please respond quickly, as I have seven million dollars to send you. All I need is a thousand dollar transfer fee. This matter is very urgent. Dr. Brian Young. Cat smiled. This was perfect. She clicked reply. Dear Dr. Young, I am so saddened to hear of the death of King Jahar Ho. I barely knew the man, but I remember his fondness for Ho-Hos, which I thought was funny given his last name. He loved Santa as well, and gardening. Anyway, I'm shocked and surprised to learn he has left me such a large inheritance. He really didn't like me much, seeing as I made fun of his name all the time. Cat giggled, and Fred glanced her way. What's so funny? Just doing my job. Well, the fun part of my job. He shook his head. You have way too much fun with your column. I'm only doing this until Lydia lets me take a real reporting job. It's not all it's cracked up to be, Fred said under his breath. Cat ignored him and continued with her email. I see you need me to send you a thousand dollars in order to process the inheritance. I'm excited to say I have exactly a thousand dollars in the bank, and I am going to take it to Western Union right away. I just need to make sure you're not a scammer. Could you please send me a photograph of you holding a package of ho-hos? This will be the proof I need. I will send the money shortly. Much love. Catalina Mariachi Edwina Filipina. She pressed the send button and leaned back in her chair. Fred glanced at her, and the clicking of his keyboard paused. What did you ask this poor sucker to do? This one's going to be all about the ho-hos. We're starting with a photo. He chuckled. Do they even have ho-hos in Nigeria? Guess we'll find out. Cat went to check on the coffee. She pulled her mug out from the cabinet and filled it with the hot liquid. Fred shook his head. 
I don't know how you get these guys to actually do what you ask. She turned and shot him a cheesy grin. That was the best part. When she got a scammer to do something ridiculous, it felt like winning, getting back a little. You just have to know what buttons to push. He resumed his typing. You're insane. Cat laughed as the door opened and Lydia came rushing in. I think the storm has started. She brushed a few flakes out of her hair as she walked toward her office. The woman was a force to be reckoned with. She'd been running this place ever since Cat could remember, but didn't look like she'd aged much. Amazing what hair coloring could do. Lydia unlocked her office. Have Sarah find out why I saw a fire truck on Fifth Avenue. Cat hurried to get Lydia's coffee while Paul came in and stamped snow from his boots. The woman was a bear if she didn't bring it right away. As Cat filled the mug, she wondered if Lydia would ever give her the chance she needed to prove herself. She rushed to set the mug down on Lydia's desk. Lydia picked it up and sipped it without acknowledging her. Whatever. Cat went back to her desk. When Sarah entered, Cat called to her. Fire trucks on Fifth Avenue. Already on it, Sarah said. The front door opened and a man walked in. Talk about tall, dark, and handsome. Cat almost swallowed her tongue. Wow, who let the hottie in? With a suit and hairstyle straight from GQ, Cat was sure he wasn't from Pleasant Hollow. He wore an expensive coat and clutched a briefcase in his gloved hand. She cleared her throat. How can I help you? The man brushed snow off his shoulder while he took his time looking around. Finally, his gaze landed on her. Who's in charge here? Lydia didn't like it when Cat let just anyone back into her office, so Cat stood. What do you need? Maybe I can help you. Irritation crossed his features. I need to speak to the person in charge. Since that's obviously not you, I don't see how you can help me. Cat's first impression of the guy fell to the floor. Sure, he was hot, but rude guys were so not appealing. Lydia's in charge. Can I tell her who would like to speak to her? I'm Damien Warren. I own this newspaper. Oh, this could not be good. Lydia was always complaining about how Paul needed to sell more advertising or she'd fire him. But she never would. He had a wife and three kids. Deep down, Lydia was more of a softy than she liked to let on. I'll take you to her. Damien followed her past the desks to the back. She noticed a slight limp as he walked, and she wondered what was up with him. He didn't look old enough to be a war veteran or anything. He couldn't be much more than thirty. Cat entered Lydia's office and wrung her hands. There's someone here to see you. Says he's the owner? Lydia froze, her face draining of color. Whoa, what had her flustered? Cat had never seen her like this. Lydia stood and swallowed. Well, uh, show him in, please. Cat stepped aside so Damien could enter. Damien stuck out his hand. Lydia blinked for a moment, just staring at him. I'm Damien Warren. Lydia seemed to snap out of whatever held her captive, and she took his hand. Lydia Parker. Lydia glared at Cat. Will you close the door when you leave? Cat nodded and pulled the door shut. What was that about? As she walked past Fred's desk, she leaned over. Do you know that guy? Fred shook his head. Nope, never seen him before. Weird. Whatever it was, Cat hoped the newspaper wasn't in trouble. Christmas was two weeks away and she couldn't afford to lose her job. She barely scraped by as it was, and her mother needed her. Chapter 2 Damien sized up the woman standing behind the desk. She was in her early fifties, dedicated to her work, and flustered that he was in her office. If he was going to get to the bottom of this, he'd better play it cool. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Warren. I had no idea you were in town. Lydia twisted her hands together. I flew in last night. He glanced around her office. There was nothing of value, nothing special about the building. He didn't even see any printing presses, which might be worth something to a museum. Maybe they printed in another building. He'd have to ask. I see. Lydia smoothed out her pencil skirt. 
To what do I owe this pleasure? I'm here to check up on things. I've been running Warren Industries since my father's passing. Lydia slowly nodded. What would you like from me? Access to the books? To the building? Good. She was going to cooperate. Yes, I'll need both of those things. Of course. Anything you need. You'll see we run a tight ship here. Pleasant Hollow is a small town, but they rely on their weekly newspaper. Weekly? Damien sucked in a breath. You're not a daily paper. Oh, heavens no. We don't have enough staff to print daily. Wow. They actually brought in more income than he'd thought with just a weekly paper. Now he was more curious than ever to see their books. Do you have a desk I could use just for a few days? Lydia swallowed. She looked like she was going to faint. Yes, of course. Come with me. She brushed past him and opened the door, motioning for him to follow her. Everyone, this is Damien. He owns Pleasant Hollow Times. She began pointing people out. This is Sarah and Fred. They do the reporting. Paul is our graphic designer and he sells the ads. And Catherine runs the front desk and helps with whatever else is necessary. She turned back to her employees. Damien's going to be using Garrett's old desk for a few days. Please let him have access to what he needs. He's come all the way from New York. Damien felt the weight of all eyes on him. He tugged at his tie. Yes, thank you. Just go on doing your jobs. I'll try to stay out of your way. Lydia walked to an empty desk near the front of the room. You can sit here. Damien set his briefcase down on the scratched wood surface. It was more in the open than he'd like, but it would have to do. He didn't want to start off by kicking Lydia out of her office. Thanks. I'll go get the files you need. She left him there with everyone still staring at him. He glanced at Catherine sitting behind the front desk. She wore a baggy sweater with skinny jeans and tall black boots. It looked good on her. First things first. Do you know where I could get a good cup of coffee? Catherine stood up. I'll get you a cup. No, he said quickly, glancing at the cheap coffee maker on the counter. I'd rather order specifically what I like, if you don't mind. The woman glared at him, her hand on her hip. What's wrong with the coffee I made? Damien cleared his throat and stepped over to her desk. I'm sorry, Catherine. It's Cat. He started again. I'm sorry, Cat. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I'd just like to order from a coffee shop. Surely there's one around here. Cat pointed toward the door. If you haven't noticed, it's snowing outside. He glanced through the glass doors. It didn't look bad. Does your town shut down when it snows? She scoffed. No. Is there a problem? Lydia approached them and folded her arms across her chest. I was just asking if there was a coffee shop near here. Damien said. Lydia narrowed her eyes at Kat's. Dale's down the street sells coffee. Take Damien down and show him, Catherine. Right. Yes. Cat hopped up. I'll walk you to Dale's. She smiled at him, but it looked like that sweet kind of smile you get right before the wicked witch casts a nasty spell on you. Cat pulled a long black coat off the rack and slipped it on. Okay, follow me. We'll get you set up. She sounded chipper. Damien nodded and walked outside with her. The wind had picked up a little since he'd come in. It stung his cheeks. Cat walked briskly ahead of him and he rushed to catch up, hoping his limp wasn't too noticeable. You always in this much of a hurry? Only before a blizzard, she said under her breath. A blizzard? W wait, how much is it supposed to snow? She turned and gave him a funny look. About twelve inches last I heard. He looked up to the sky. It did look a little ominous. Cat entered a corner diner. He pulled his gloves off and slipped them into his pocket. Cat pointed to the gal behind the counter wearing an apron and chewing on a wad of gum. This is Harriet. She'll make your coffee just the way you like it. Great. I'll have a double short, low fat, no foam latte. Harriet squinted at him. A what? This wasn't a good sign. You can't make a double short latte. Honey, I can't even tell if you're speaking English. It was obvious Cat was trying not to smile. He wants some coffee, Harriet. 
She nodded. Decaf or regular, sweetie. His hopes of getting what he wanted swirled down the drain. I can't believe this, he said under his breath. Do you at least have iced coffee? Cat stepped up. You can make it special, can't you? He's come all the way from New York just to close our newspaper down. What? Where did she get that idea? That's not true, Damien said. Well, at least she shouldn't know that was what he was there for. Harriet scoffed and looked at him like he was gum someone had stuck under the table. Damien frowned. Look, I just want an iced coffee. Can you do that? We can do that for you, Harriet said. Great, thank you. No milk. Harriet punched in something in the cash register. Damien tossed a five-dollar bill on the counter. Keep the change. Sit wherever you'd like. I'll bring it out. Damien scanned the table and chairs. The place was empty. Hopefully that was because of the blizzard and not because they had disgusting coffee. He pulled out a chair and sat on the red vinyl seat. Cat sat opposite him and openly stared at him. So you're here to do what exactly? He wasn't used to people being so direct. I'm just checking on things. And if we're not making you enough money, you'll close us down. I never said that. She narrowed her eyes at him. You didn't have to. That's why you're here, isn't it? He sighed. He didn't want to lie to her. For some odd reason, he kind of liked her. She wasn't like any of the women he'd dated. There was a subtle beauty about her, and she was straightforward. Something told him she was smart as well. If he continued to lie, she wouldn't believe him anyway. Something like that, he finally said. She frowned and turned to look out the window. The people in this town wouldn't like that very much. Look, my father bought this newspaper years ago. I'm just trying to figure out why he's kept it for so long. It's not a big moneymaker. Damien sat, shocked at the words that came out of his mouth. Why was he telling this stranger these things? Especially since she was an employee. He really needed to keep his mouth shut. Harriet bustled over to him and set down a cup of black coffee, several melting ice cubes floating in it. Here you go, sweetie. Damien stared down at the mug as Harriet walked away. What the? Cat covered her mouth with her hand, but it didn't help. Her laughter escaped anyway. He stood and pulled his coat tighter around him. Very funny. Cat continued to laugh as she followed him out the door. The look on your face. He turned to her, the snow coming down faster now. You're telling me there are no coffee places here at all, not even a Starbucks. Sorry, she said, sobering. No fancy coffee shops. But Harriet's coffee is really good. Come on, I'll pay for another cup. He ground his teeth together, trying not to say something he'd regret. Forget it. Let's just get to work. You're the boss, she said, brushing past him. Damien entered the newspaper behind Cat. Lydia approached him and handed him a thumb drive. Here are all the files. You'll see everything is in order. I have to get a key to the building made, though. I can have that to you by Monday. Sounds good. He pulled out his laptop and shoved the thumb drive in it. Let me know if you need anything else. Lydia walked back to her office and Damien looked around. A couple of reporters, one guy selling ads, and a woman at the front desk. Was that all this operation took? Damien spent the next three hours going over the books and looking at the advertising revenue coming in versus the money going out. This place definitely wasn't a big money maker, and he couldn't see anything special about it. Questions swirled around in his head. At noon, Lydia sent Cat out to get sandwiches from Dale's because no one wanted to drive anywhere for lunch. When she came back, she set his food on his desk. He unwrapped the foil and took a bite. At least the diner could make a good ham on rye. Damien ate his sandwich, then balled up the wrapper and looked for a trash can. He spied one under Cat's desk. Maybe he could get some information out of her if he got her talking. He stood and crossed the room. Can I toss this in your trash? Cat eyed him. Sure. She slid the trash closer to him with her boot. Can I ask you something? He leaned on her desk. Okay, she said tentatively. 
How does a newspaper work when you don't have any printing presses here? We outsource our printing. The newspaper in New Haven prints ours for us, and then they deliver them to the parking lot where the carriers get them. He'd figured it was something like that. Now he knew what the big expenses to New Haven Press were. They could probably make more money if they owned their own printing operation, but there was no room for one here, so they'd need a new building. Why was he thinking about that? Making this tiny business successful wasn't his objective. He needed to figure out why his father even cared about it. What do you know about Lydia? Kat stiffened. Why are you asking? Just curious. She runs the newspaper. Kat gave him a cheesy smile and curled her hair behind her ear. Nice. Guess he wasn't going to get much out of Kat. He tried not to scowl. And? I don't know. She's the boss. Presses people to get stuff done on time. She does a good job. Right, but what do you know about her personally? Know any good dirt? He gave Cat a smile, hoping to bring out the gossip. Cat leaned closer to him and lowered her voice. It was kind of sexy. He found himself liking her despite her attitude. Her blue eyes were quite stunning. You know, I never thought it was weird until now, but sometimes I see her coming in the building late at night, meeting with strange men. That wasn't what he expected to hear. Really? Yes, and sometimes, in the morning, there's odd stuff lying around. Damien could barely hear her now. Her whisper was so low and he leaned in closer. What kind of things? Empty candy bar wrappers. Her lips twitched. I think she's running a smuggling ring for Snickers. This newspaper is just a front. Damien straightened and rolled his eyes while Cat grinned. Thanks for that, he said. You're welcome, she called in a sing-song voice as she spun her chair back to her computer. He spent the rest of the afternoon looking through the last five years of data, not finding anything special. His head started to hurt. Why had he even come here? He should have taken care of things from New York. At five o'clock, Lydia came out of her office. Just heard from Janet. The major streets are plowed, but they're shutting down for the night since visibility is so low. Be careful out there. It's not supposed to quit till morning. The room grew noisy as everyone packed up and hurried to leave. He slid his laptop into his briefcase and pulled his coat off the hook. Maybe he could study the files tonight in his hotel room. By the time he'd packed up, the place was empty. The employees had left through the back, but since Damien had parked on the street, he pushed the handle and walked out the front door. Damien gasped. The snowplow had come by, all right. The wind whipped through his hair as he stared at the huge mound of snow that used to be his rental car. There was no way he'd get it dug out. He was stuck. Maybe Lydia would give him a ride to his hotel. He turned to go back inside, but the door was locked. The lights were already out. He swore under his breath and knocked on the glass. Hello? He put his hands up and peered inside. No movement. He shoved his hands into his coat pockets. Great. Now what? Chapter 3 Cat quickly brushed the snow off her windshield and got in her 1992 Volkswagen Jetta. She turned her windshield wipers on high to get rid of the rest she was too lazy to scrape off. They made a terrible noise as the rubber vibrated against the glass and ice. She stuck her hands by the vent, rubbing life back into them. She could almost see well enough to drive. It would just take a second. The figure of a man came around the side of the building. He carried a briefcase and had a slight limp just like boss man. Ugh. He approached her car. What did he want? She rolled down her window a crack. Yes? He pointed toward the building. My car is buried. Can I have a ride to my hotel? Cat glanced around, desperate to find someone else who could give him a ride. The parking lot was empty. Crud. She really didn't want to spend any more time with him than she had to, but she couldn't leave him alone in a blizzard. She motioned to the passenger seat. All right, get in. 
Thanks. He walked around the car and tried to get in, but the door was frozen shut. She leaned over and pulled on the handle. Then she shoved the door as hard as she could. With a cracking sound, the door swung open, hitting Boss Man in the gut. He grunted. Oops. Sorry. Damien slid into the seat. I appreciate the ride. No problem. Which hotel are you staying at? She glanced over at him, but couldn't hold it in and laughed. Just kidding. We only have one. She put the car into gear and stepped on the gas. The car lurched forward. Damien grabbed onto the door as if clutching it for his life. Don't worry, I know how to drive in snow. She sped out of the parking lot and turned onto Main Street. Are you sure you do? Because we're sliding all over the place. He looked legitimately scared. She took her foot off the accelerator. Wimp, she said under her breath. He either didn't hear her or ignored it. How long have you lived in Pleasant Hollow? All my life. You really like it that much here? He seemed surprised. What's not to like? He opened his mouth, then closed it like he wasn't sure what to say. There's nothing here. Typical big city attitude. Cat held in a scoff. There are people here, good people. Something he wouldn't care about. He was going to shut them down, cutting off the town's only source of local news and putting hard-working people in the unemployment line. She pulled into Microtel Inn's parking lot. Here you go, she said, trying not to grind her teeth. Damien pulled his phone out of his pocket. Do you mind if I call you tomorrow for a ride to my car? Lydia would kill her if she said no. That's fine, she rattled off her cell number. He got out and leaned down. Thank you, Kat. No problem. She said it, but she didn't mean it. It was a problem. He was the problem. He shut the door and she drove off. She needed to get her mind off Mr. Boss Man. She needed to make some hot chocolate and curl up with a good book. When she pulled into her small driveway and clicked the garage door opener, she found her sister's car sitting in the garage. Nice one, Hillary. Now she'd have to dig her car out in the morning. She clicked the garage door shut and pulled out onto the street in case Hillary needed to leave. Snow crunched under her boots as she walked up to her house, the house she'd grown up in. At least the neighbor boy would shovel her driveway and sidewalk for twenty dollars, the best money she'd ever spent. She opened her front door and stomped off the snow before entering. Good, you're home. Her sister came around the corner with a steaming pot in her hand. She stuck a spoon out to Cat. Try this. Being used to it, Cat allowed her sister to shove the spoon in her mouth. She swallowed the warm liquid. A savory flavor filled her mouth. That's delicious. She took off her coat. What is it? A new soup I'm trying out. It's got beans, chicken, and sausage. I love it. Cat grabbed her laptop and plopped down on the couch. So, what are you doing here, your roommate getting on your nerves again? Her sister made a face, then went into the kitchen. She's having a party. You know how I can't stand her friends. Who has a party during a blizzard? Right? She's crazy. Well, stay as long as you like. It's not like anyone else moved into your old bedroom. Cat didn't mind, especially because Hillary cooked when she was bored. They updated to say we'd get 14 inches tonight. I am not going anywhere this weekend. Cat whistled. That's insane. Isn't it? We should totally have a girls' movie night. Good idea. Cat opened up her email and grinned. She had an answer from Dr. Yong. Dear Miss Filipina, I am having much happy you are writing. I can assure you I am no scammer. Please see attached photo. I am getting the inheritance money ready for when you send the thousand dollars. Dr. Young. He'd sent her all the details for the Western Union transaction. Cat looked at the attached photo of an African man wearing a suit. It was missing the box of ho-hos. She grinned. She didn't mind a challenge. Dear Dr. Young, I am also having much happy. I can't wait to spend my millions of dollars. However, there is something wrong with the photo you sent. 
It has a serious lack of ho-hos. I do apologize, but I must insist on this. I cannot send you money unless you first send me a photo of you with a box of ho-hos. Please send it right away, as I have been contacted by Prince Twinkie, and he also has an inheritance for me. Yours truly, Catalina. Dinner's ready, Hillary called from the other room. Cat walked into the dining room and inhaled. You made bread, too? Hillary leaned over the table and set the silverware down. It's just the frozen kind. Good enough for me. I would have heated up a microwave dinner. Thanks for all this. Hillary nodded. She was the polar opposite of Cat. Hillary had pretty blonde hair where Cat's was just plain brown. Her sister was the cheerleader type, while Cat had spent high school in the journalism room. Hillary was good at everything domestic. Cat was lucky to not accidentally burn the house down. They ate for a while in silence. The soup was so delicious, Cat finished it in a few minutes. Hillary stared down at the tablecloth. I went to see Mom today. The familiar pang of pain erupted in Cat's chest. How's she doing? About the same. You should go see her. Cat knew Hillary was right, even though the visits were always painful. I'll go on Sunday. She bit into her roll. Good. Hillary folded her napkin and laid it on the table. You'll never believe what happened at work today, Cat said after swallowing the bite. Hillary raised an eyebrow. What? Some rich guy from New York came in. Turns out he owns the place and is here to see if he wants to shut it down. Are you kidding me? Shut down the newspaper? I know, right? He was super rude to me. Guess he's some hotshot that owns a ton of businesses, Damien Warren or something. Hillary dropped her spoon, which clattered to the table. Get out. Damien Warren? Are you sure? Why, you know the guy. He's a billionaire, owns half the world. I was just stalking his profile on privilegedsingles.com. Cat held in a snort. A privileged single? You? Hillary stuck out her tongue. Hey, I was just messing around. And yes, I could be a privileged single. You can be whoever you want to be online. Cat laughed, but then she jumped up. Oh my gosh, that gives me an excellent idea. Hillary stared at her. What? I should totally make a fake account on privileged singles. I could chat with him and get the inside scoop. A skeptical look crossed Hillary's face. How are you going to get him to do that? Cat smiled and went to get her laptop. She set it up on the table. Easy. I just have to read his profile and then create the perfect woman for him. Hillary broke off a piece of her bread. I bet you can't get him to bite. Cat gave her sister a flat look. Oh, ye of little faith, I bait scammers for my column. I can get him to answer me. She pushed aside her empty bowl and called up the privileged singles website. Hillary moved her chair so she could see. Cat scanned Damien's profile. He loved classical music, especially the strings. He went to Stanford. Seriously? Cat pointed and snorted. He actually put in that he likes long walks in the moonlight? How cheesy is that? I think it's romantic, Hillary said. Shows he's got a soft side. It shows he has no imagination. Hillary turned back to the screen. What else can you use? It says he loves Charles Dickens. That's an easy one. And his favorite movie is The Mask, which shows he's got a quirky side to him. You do quirky so well, Hillary said. Cat whacked her sister. Shut up. She pulled up a stock photo website. Help me find a girl to use for the profile photo. What style do you think he'd like? Blonde? Brunette? Cat thought about it. Brunette, I think. He was kind of staring at me a little today. You wish. No, I don't. Cat made a face. He's self-absorbed and putting me out of a job. I don't want to date him. I want to get back at him. Well, if you can get him to think this is real, that would be a perfect way. Hillary pointed to a woman on the screen. 
This one. She looks smart with those glasses, but she's still pretty. Perfect. Cat clicked and downloaded the photo, then proceeded to create a profile on privileged singles. She had to sign up for the service, but she was willing to spend a little to see if it worked. What are you going to say in your profile? Hillary grabbed another roll. She could eat anything and not gain an ounce. Let's see. First, I need a name. Does Amelia sound too old-fashioned? Go for it. I think it's classy. Hillary leaned closer. Cat typed in Amelia Johnson. I think she'll live in New York. That way, he'll think he has a shot at meeting her. Cat frowned at the next question. How much money does she have in the bank? What should I say? Is a million okay? Should be plenty. How did Amelia get the money? Cat tapped her chin. She typed inheritance in the box. I think Amelia likes jazz music, Cat said as she continued to type. And her favorite book is A Christmas Carol. Her favorite movie of all time is Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Her favorite food is What's Something Rich People Eat? Caviar? Sure, that'll do. And I'll put a little Easter egg in there. She loves Snickers. Hillary scrunched up her nose. Why is that an Easter egg? Just something I said to him today. That won't give you away, will it? Cat thought about it. Surely lots of people like Snickers. And it was something different. No, should be fine. But when I reveal myself, he'll remember it and feel foolish. She grinned at her sister. Oh, I forgot one more thing. She clicked on the box. Amelia loves fancy lattes. Okay, is it ready? Cat nodded and clicked to save. Then she went over to Damien's page and sent a wink showing her interest in him. Let's hope he's bored tonight and answers me. Hillary stood and gathered up the dishes. Let me know, I can't wait to see if you pull this off. Thirty minutes later, while they were watching Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, because mentioning the film made them both want to watch it again, her computer beeped. Cat pulled the laptop onto her lap and grinned. He took the bait. He wants to chat. Hillary paused the movie and rubbed her hands together. Now the fun begins. Cat clicked OK to the chat request and the empty screen popped up. She typed something. Hi. Kind of dumb, but she wasn't sure what to say at first. The screen showed Damien typing. Hello, Amelia. I must admit your profile intrigued me. Cat giggled and shoved her sister's shoulder. See? Do I know how to do it or what? Answer him, Hillary said. What part intrigued you? It's rare to find a woman who likes both caviar and Snickers. Cat laughed. The Snickers drew him in. Go figure. She tried to think of something witty to say. I rarely eat them together. LOL. I bet. The conversation stalled and Hillary motioned for her to continue. Ask him something. Cat typed. What are you doing tonight? I'm actually out of town, snowed in at my hotel. That stinks. Yeah, I tried ordering dinner, but no one was delivering with the storm. I'm starving. Guilt surfaced in Cat's chest before she remembered what he was there to do. Put the newspaper out of business and her out of a job. Hillary whacked her on the arm. The poor billionaire has nothing to eat. Is he above eating what they have at the hotel? They don't have a restaurant at the hotel. Oh, well, then I feel a little sorry for him. I'm trying not to, Cat said. He doesn't care about this town or the people here. She continued to type. That doesn't sound like any fun. What are you doing tonight? What are you going to tell him? Hillary was getting far too into this. Cat thought about it before typing a response. I'm just curled up with a good book. What book are you reading? I'm rereading A Christmas Carol. I just love Charles Dickens. Don't lay it on too thick, Hillary said. They waited while the cursor blinked. Finally, he answered, He's my favorite author. I know. That's one thing that drew me to your profile. Cat twisted her hands together. I'm going for it. Cross your fingers. What are you doing out of town? 
Kat held her breath as she waited for his response. I'm on a business trip. What kind of business? Nothing exciting. What do you do? Ooh, deflection. Keep an eye on that one. Yep. Kat waited until Hillary was out of the room. She tried to think of a career that would make her sound affluent and smart. She tapped her fingers lightly against the keys. She had to think of something good. Chapter 4 Damien sat back in the hotel chair, waiting for the response. He wasn't sure what made him get on the Privileged Singles website, but finding a woman like Amelia on there intrigued him. She wasn't like all the others. I'm a hedge fund manager, but it's a boring job, so don't ask me too much about it or you'll fall asleep. Damien raised his eyebrows. She was in finance. Interesting. He hadn't met too many women who were in the field. He responded, LOL. Fair enough. As he tried to think of something else to ask her, another message came through. You were evasive, though. Are you embarrassed by your business? Wait. Let me guess. Do you make urinal cakes? Is that right? He chuckled and shook his head. Who was this woman? He told her why he was in Pleasant Hollow. For some reason, he found her easy to talk to. Damien picked up his hotel coffee and took a sip. Disgusting. But the only other thing to drink was tap water, which was about as appealing to him as toilet water. Her response came. Sounds intriguing. Like a mystery. Have you found anything yet about why your father bought the newspaper? Nothing. I'm honestly baffled. What do you think you'll do? And that was the big question, wasn't it? He looked out the window at the snow coming down by the street lamp. I don't know yet. He waited for her to say something back, but the cursor just stood there, blinking. He stood and stretched before a reply came. Maybe your father kept the newspaper because he didn't want to put people out of work. Damien rubbed the back of his neck. His father had no qualms about laying people off. It was part of the business world. When you needed growth, sometimes you had to cut out the cancer. But maybe Amelia wouldn't see it that way. Maybe. But why did he buy it in the first place? The cute receptionist? Just kidding. It's a mystery for sure. Damien chuckled. The receptionist was good-looking, but way too young for his father. Besides... His father was married to his mother when he bought the newspaper, so it couldn't be anything like that. I'm going to dig deeper on Monday. Let me know if you find anything. I feel bad you're stuck at a hotel with no food. Damien glanced at the empty chip bag. He wasn't too happy about it either. I ate some Doritos from a vending machine. I usually hate hotel breakfasts, but I admit I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully they have something good. His cell phone vibrated and he checked the screen. His mother. He didn't want to talk to her right now about Priscilla. Or any of her other friend's daughters. He tossed the phone on his desk. He'd call her tomorrow. Right now, he wanted to know more about Amelia. How long have you lived in Manhattan? Only a few months. What about you? All my life. Where did you live before you moved to New York? The cursor blinked for a long time. Damien took another drink of the coffee. At least it was hot, and it didn't have ice floating in it. I'm from a small town you've probably never heard of. I actually like small town life, if you can believe it. Really? He couldn't. What's so great about a small town? It took another long pause before she answered. Everyone knows everyone. You get smiles everywhere you go. This time of year is magical, because the town comes together to celebrate the holidays. Neighbors help each other. People go out of their way to be nice. Surprisingly, she did make small town life sound pretty good. But what is there to do? There's a lot to do in a small town. Give it a chance. Maybe you'll like it. Right. If he ever got his car unburied. Okay. I will. Now, I'm curious about something. Where did you go to school to learn so much about finance? I went to a small state college. But enough about me. I want to know more about you. What kind of goals do you have in life? Wow. He hadn't expected the conversation to get deep. He had to think about that one. I guess my goal has always been to show my father I was capable of running his business. Now that he's gone, I'm not sure what my goal is. I'm sorry. 
Was his passing recent? Damien's throat grew tight, and he stood from the chair. It was still hard for him to talk about. Why had he brought it up? He walked over to the window and put his hand on the cool glass. Feelings of anger and abandonment coursed through him. He stuffed them down so he could answer her. A year ago. It's still hard. I understand. My father passed away when I was twelve. Such a young age to lose a parent. He felt bad for her. That must have been hard for you. Yes, it was. Wow, that was a downer, right? Want to talk about war and starving children in Africa now? He smiled at the computer screen. He liked this woman. Ha ha, I should probably get some sleep. It's even later where you are. Yes, I should get to bed. His fingers hovered over the keys. He didn't really know this girl, but chatting with her tonight had been fun. It took away the boredom of being stuck in a crappy hotel room. But would it be cheesy to tell her that? He sighed and went ahead with it. Who cares, right? Maybe he'd never chat with her again. Thanks for talking to me tonight. I enjoyed it. He waited for her response. Why was he so anxious to see what she'd say? She was a stranger. I had fun talking with you, too. Maybe we can do it again sometime. He smiled. I'd like that. Good night, Amelia. Night. He shut his laptop and dressed for bed. The snow outside was still coming down strong when he turned off the lamp. He was not looking forward to digging the rental car out tomorrow. Cat lay in bed, trying not to feel guilty for dropping Damien off at the hotel without making sure he had food. Her mother would kill her if she knew what had happened. Cat could just imagine Mr. Specialty Latte sitting in his room eating Doritos for dinner. He was such a snob, but she couldn't help but feel a little sorry for him. Arg! What a sap she was. She was looking at unemployment soon. There were no jobs in Pleasant Hollow. If anything ever opened up, everyone knew about it, and it was filled within the hour. She was extremely lucky to have her job at the newspaper. If Damien took that away from her, she'd probably lose her childhood home. She'd have to leave Pleasant Hollow. And what would they do about their mother? She should hate him, but for some reason she couldn't muster up the emotion. Maybe she was just tired. She rolled over and pounded on her pillow. She didn't remember falling asleep, but when her phone rang and woke her up, early morning sunlight was peeking past the blinds. She squinted and fumbled for her phone on the nightstand. She swiped to answer. Hello? I didn't wake you, did I? Mr. Bossman's smooth voice came through. She almost opened her mouth to tell him off, but Lydia would be livid if she found out. No, she said, sitting up and rubbing her eyes. I'm awake. Good. I was wondering if now was a good time to ask for a ride. Seriously? She wanted to throw the phone across the room and cover her head with her pillow, but remained calm. Sure, I can give you a ride. And do you have a shovel I can borrow? She closed her eyes. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I'll see you soon. Okay. Cat hung up and groaned. She was over feeling sorry for the billionaire. He was horrible, and he could eat Doritos for dinner every night for all she cared. Cat pulled on a pair of jeans and a sweater. She had serious bedhead, but didn't care if he saw her like that. It wasn't like he was going to stick around or anything. She had her coat on and her boots zipped before succumbing to the urge to run a brush through her hair. She grabbed a granola bar and her keys and opened the door to her garage. Shoot! Hillary's car sat there. She'd forgotten she'd parked on the street and was now buried. Dang! She was going to have to take Hillary's car. When she walked back inside, Hillary was rummaging in the fridge. Can I take your car? Cat said. I'll just be a minute. Where are you going? I have to give Boss Man a ride. Hillary turned around, clutching a container of yogurt. You're picking up Damien Warren? Yeah, but it's not as big of a privilege as you're making it sound. Cat opened the granola bar wrapper and took a bite. Fine, take my car, but I want a full report when you get back. Thanks, 
and I'm just taking him across town. No biggie. Cat grabbed Hillary's keys and went back into the garage. She tossed her shovel into the trunk, got in, and clicked the remote to open the garage door. The neighbor boy had already shoveled the driveway for her, thank goodness. As she was backing out, her phone rang. She glanced at it. Lydia? Why would she be calling on a Saturday? Cat put the car in park and answered it. Hello? I heard you're on your way to help Damien. Yes, I'm giving him a ride to his car so he can dig it out. Wait, you're not helping him shovel? That's rude, Catherine. Cat's mouth dropped. I'm doing him a favor. Listen, all our jobs are on the line here. I need you to give him special treatment. Shovel his car out, spend the day with him. Take him to the Christmas activities tonight. Show him our town needs a newspaper. Are you kidding me? Cat clamped her lips together. It wouldn't be a good idea to make Lydia mad. You need your job as much as I do. You need to give him the royal treatment or he will close us down. Cat couldn't believe what she was hearing. How am I supposed to do that? I don't know. Think of something. Show him Pleasant Hollow matters. I'll let your contribution reflect in your Christmas bonus. A click on the line let Cat know Lydia had hung up. She sat there and stared at her phone. Great. What on earth was she supposed to do? Harass the guy all day? Cat let out a breath and put her sister's car into gear. Had Lydia gone crazy? How was showing Damien around going to make him keep the newspaper? He was a billionaire, for heaven's sake. He didn't care at all about Pleasant Hollow. Luckily, all the main streets had been plowed. She passed the town square with all the people setting up for the Christmas carnival. Lights were being hung and Santa's house was almost built. The skating rink was decked out with Christmas trees. A vendor was setting up a kiosk to sell hot chocolate. She could almost taste it. She loved the carnival, even as an adult. When she pulled up to the Microtel Inn, Damien came out and hopped into the passenger seat. You got a new car? It's my sister's. He'd traded his suit for casual wear, and she couldn't stop staring. It was like he had a team of stylists following him around. It was so not fair that one man could look that good this early in the morning. She shoved a hand through her hair, glad she'd at least brushed it. Just drop me off in my car. I'll return your shovel when I get done. Cat swallowed. How was she supposed to get him to let her show him around town? And what would Lydia do if she didn't? Chapter 5 Damien stared out the window as the snow-covered streets went by. Yesterday, Cat had driven like a crazy woman. Today, she inched along so slowly, he wondered if she were waiting for ice to form on the tires. We'll make it there today, won't we? He meant it as a joke, but Cat didn't laugh. She coughed and turned a lovely shade of pink. Sorry, icy streets. You had no trouble at all on them yesterday. I'm just distracted, I guess. She bit her bottom lip and pulled over behind the mountain of snow that held his rental car captive. He hopped out and assessed the situation. You brought a shovel? Cat opened her trunk and lifted it out. Here you go. All right. I'll swing by your place when I'm done. What's your address? He pulled out his phone to type it in. She shoved her hands into her coat pockets. Well, I was thinking I could stay and help you dig your car out. Her gaze darted all over the street like she was nervous. Well, that's okay. I can get it. She nodded, but didn't move. Instead, she stared down at her boots. I could show you around town, since you're new here and all. Damien took in a breath and let it out slowly. This was an interesting development. The girl was coming on to him. Although she was pretty, he couldn't date an employee. But he didn't want to crush the girl. Maybe it would be okay if he spent the day with her, as long as he sent enough signals that there wasn't going to be anything between them. All right. Cat's head snapped up and she looked relieved. Good. Then it's settled. I'll get the windshield scraper out. She pulled a long brush out of the trunk. He began shoveling around the tires as she brushed off the top. 
She was attacking the roof with such gusto that little flakes were hitting his neck. He looked up and a blast of snow hit him full in the face. He sputtered. Hey! Cat's head popped up from the other side of the car. Oops! She grinned and bit her bottom lip. I didn't mean to get you. He brushed off his coat and hair. Just be more aware of what you're doing. It came out way grumpier than he'd planned, and he cringed. When had he turned into a sour old man? He bent down again to dig, and a pile of snow fell on the back of his head, getting in his collar and falling down his shirt. He jerked up, and Cat let out a laugh. It echoed off the downtown buildings. Lighten up, Scrooge! Maybe he deserved that. He scowled at her. Funny. He bent to pretend to shovel again, but instead scooped up a handful of snow. Two could play this game. He snuck around the car. When she wasn't looking, he ran behind her and tossed it down the back of her sweater. She squealed and did a little dance. Oh, that's it. You're on. She scooped up a large pile of snow and came at him. He backed away. No fair, that's three times as much. Too bad. She lunged at him, slipping on the ice. He reached out to catch her, but they both toppled over. Snow slid down his back, and he let out a shriek. Cat laughed and tried to get up off him, but slid again and landed on his chest, forcing out a grunting noise. You, you screamed like a kindergarten girl, she said, trying to catch her breath as she laughed. He tried to frown at her, but it didn't work. He couldn't stop smiling. I did not. Her giggles cascaded over him as she tried once again to get off him. Okay, it's official. We're stuck like this. He looked up into her blue eyes. They were like deep pools of glass. Her face practically glowed when she smiled. His heart stuttered and he sobered. He couldn't look at her that way. He rolled to his side and they both sat up. Guess we'd better keep digging or we'll never finish, he said, his voice husky. Cat stood and shook the snow off her. Yes, you're right. As they shoveled, Cat's phone rang. She answered it, turning away from him, maybe so he wouldn't hear. But it didn't work. He could hear her just fine. Hey, sorry, it's going to take longer than I thought. She paused. Yes, I'll talk to you later. Another pause. Right, I promise to tell you everything. Cat looked up at the sky. I'm hanging up now. She touched the screen and pocketed her phone. What was that about? Cat shook her head. Just my sister asking about her car. After they finished digging the snow, he drove to the hotel and parked. When he was back in Cat's vehicle, he said, Okay, what does this town have to offer? First, let's go to Russ's. What's that? She shrugged. You'll see. She drove to a part of town he hadn't seen before. When she pulled into the parking lot, he gave her an incredulous look. A grocery store? What's so special about this? Cat hopped out of the car. Come on, if I'm going to show you my awesome town, you're going to have to trust me. Damien followed her to the door. It looked just like a regular grocery store. As they walked, his phone chimed. He looked at the display. His mother. He silenced the phone and slid it into his pocket. He would call her later. Cat walked up to a woman holding out samples of cheese and crackers. Hey, Sandra, how's it going? Cat leaned on the table and popped a piece of cheese in her mouth. Sandra smiled warmly and slid more food toward Cat. Her plump figure and soft demeanor reminded Damien of a nanny he'd had as a child. I was a bit worried about the streets, but they seem to be okay. I think we'll still bring in the crowds for the carnival tonight. Cat swallowed and picked up another sample. Mm, the smoke kind is good. She held the cheese square toward his mouth. Try it. Seriously? She wanted him to eat it out of her hand? Was she insane? Damien backed up. No, thank you. Cat made a face. Open up. You'll like it. Several shoppers stopped to stare at him. Heat rose up his neck. I don't want to try it. She rolled her eyes and popped it into her mouth. Okay she said with her mouth full. But you're missing out. It's on special today, Sandra said. Only two ninety nine. 
Cat picked up a block. Sold. How's Henry? Sandra sobered and shook her head. Eh, he needs surgery. I just don't know what we'll do. We're barely scraping by as it is. We may have to wait until after Christmas. He's just in so much pain I don't want to wait too long. Who's Henry? Damien asked, taking a step closer as he got into the conversation. Our basset hound. He's got a tumor. How much is the surgery? Cat ate another sample. They said it would be over $4,000. Sandra shook her head and blinked back tears. I just don't know what to do. We may have to put him down. Damien felt bad for the woman, but he couldn't do anything about it. Sorry to hear that. Cat patted Sandra's arm and swallowed. I'm sure you'll find the money somehow. I'll be thinking of you. We best be going. Say hello to Fred for me. Damien blinked. Wait, you're Fred's wife? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't properly introduce you. Sandra, this is Damien. He's the one who's here to shut down the newspaper right before Christmas. Sandra's mouth pinched into a thin line. No, I'm not. She's kidding. He forced a chuckle. Always a kidder, this one. Happy holidays. Damien grabbed Kat's arm and pulled her down the aisle. He rounded on her. Why do you keep doing that? I'm just messing with you. She gave him a sweet smile, but there was a bite to it. Lighten up. Look, you can't go around saying stuff like that. You're going to cause panic. And you're not causing panic? You heard her. They may have to put down their dog because they can't afford the surgery. Cat's eyes flashed at him. I heard, and I feel sorry for her, but there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing you can do? Cat let out a frustrated grunt and tossed her hands up in the air. She walked away. Of course there's something you can do, she said as he followed her into the feminine products aisle. She stopped suddenly and turned to him. Keep the newspaper in business. I still don't know if I'm shutting it down. I need to find out more information. Cat frowned. Fine, whatever. Damien stared at her. Is that why you dragged me in here? So I could feel bad for Fred and his wife? It was more of a kill two birds kind of thing. Cat muttered and handed him the block of cheese. I can do some shopping while we're here. She stood back and looked at the shelves of tampons. Are you kidding me? Nope. She picked up a box and stuck it out to him. He stepped back. No way am I holding that. What? You have a fear of tampons? Cat's voice rose as she spoke. Stop that, he hissed. Didn't you have any sisters? No, and I changed my mind. I don't need you to show me around town. He handed her the cheese. Take me back to my hotel. Cat's eyes widened. Wait, I'm sorry. I sometimes get crazy when I kid around. Please don't go. There's more I want to show you. Real stuff this time. He couldn't figure this woman out. One minute she was coming on to him, the next she was acting passive-aggressive toward him. Was she into him or did she hate him? It seemed more like the latter, so he turned to leave. Cat ran after him. Come on, there are salami samples in the meat section. You don't want to leave till you've tried them, do you? He rounded on her. Meat samples? Are you crazy? Cat lowered her gaze, her hands falling to her sides. No. Just hungry. All I ate for breakfast was a granola bar. What? Damien hadn't expected that. Why didn't you say something? I didn't want to be rude, she mumbled while looking at the ceiling. He couldn't help but smile at her. You? Rude? Never. She snorted. Let's go get something to eat. If I recall, Dale's has good food. Her face brightened. Deal. She handed her purchases to the checkout lady and paid for them. Soon they were sitting in the red vinyl chairs eating sandwiches. Damien studied Cat when she wasn't looking. She was not like other people. Even though she got under his skin, he found himself really liking her. Tell me something. Why do you want to work at the newspaper so badly? She raised her eyebrows at him. Have you ever done something and you were really proud of it? And then a lot of people told you they enjoyed it? What was she talking about? 
Um, no. Well, I have, and it feels good, you know? He squinted at her. Not really. Kat glanced around the diner. She got up and walked to a table in the corner, picked up a newspaper, and came back, slapping it on the table in front of him. Page 12. Damien unfolded the newspaper and turned to the page. Geriatrics doctor retires? She scoffed and pointed. No, this. He scanned the column, then he stopped and read it closer. This is hilarious. Someone actually responded to one of those dumb emails? She grinned and rocked back on her heels. Yep. Surprised, he looked up at her. You? Uh-huh. She sat down opposite him. Is this response real? Did you get a scammer to write you a sonnet in the style of Dr. Seuss? Her grin widened. I sure did. What you see there is a condensed version. You should see all the back-and-forth emails before he did what I wanted. Damien studied the newspaper. How long have you been writing this column? About a year now. She picked up the last of her sandwich and took a bite. And this is why you don't want the newspaper to shut down? She glared at him. You don't get it, do you? What I do there matters to people. Maybe not as much as what Fred and Sarah report on, but I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to write stories, and people will read them. If you shut it down, I'll lose more than just my job. I'll lose my home and my connection with this town. And what's so great about this town? Kat's eyes suddenly filled with tears, and she turned from him. It's all I have left. Chapter 6 Cat blinked away her tears. What was wrong with her? Why was she getting all sappy? She did not want to tell Mr. Bossy Pants about her personal problems. She mentally pulled up her big girl panties and sucked it up. Sorry, did it just get all weird in here? Maybe we should talk about something lighter, like the food and water shortages of the world. Damien looked at her funny, then smiled. You don't have to do that. She took a huge bite of her sandwich to stop herself from talking anymore. Do what? She said around the food. Deflect like that. She swallowed. Who's deflecting? Anyway, I want to show you Walton Park when we're done eating. Damien slowly nodded. Okay. They sat and ate in silence for a few minutes. Kat stuffed the rest of her sandwich in her mouth and stood. Ready? I've never seen anyone talk with food in their mouth as much as you. But surprisingly, I can always understand you. It's a talent. She walked outside and got in her sister's car. Damien's limp was a little more pronounced, and she wondered what had happened. But it felt weird to pry, so she didn't say anything. After he buckled, she took off down the street. Walton Park is Pleasant Hollow's largest park. There are camping facilities, and that's also where we have the fair in the fall. Should I be writing this down? He gave her a cocky grin. You kind of sound like a pamphlet. She rolled her eyes. Shut up. My town is awesome, as I'm going to show you. She pulled into the parking area and shut off the engine. Damien looked out the window. Nice. They've shoveled the trails already. The Christmas carnival brings in a ton of people to the town. I'm sure Parks and Rec are just getting ready for them. She got out and locked the car. Damien caught up with her as she started down the trail. Tall pine trees lined the walkway, their branches heavy with glittering snow. A squirrel chattered in a nearby tree. Damien seemed to be struggling to keep up, so she slowed. Does it hurt? The words were out before she could censor them. He gave her a blank look, so she clarified. Your leg. Damien's gaze darted away. Not as much as it used to. She bit her lip, trying to keep the rest of her questions at bay, but it didn't work. What happened? She blurted. He worked his jaw muscles. Car accident. She sensed there was more to the story, but let it go. She'd done enough prying for one day. They followed the path down the hill to a pond. A wooden bridge crossed over the shallow end of the water that was frozen over. Cat stopped in the middle and leaned over on the railing. She peered down to the ice. Damien followed her gaze. What are you looking at? Just wait. It didn't take long. 
A family of ducks came waddling out of the trees and over to the pond. The mother duck stepped onto the ice, and the little ones followed her. Damien smiled. They're adorable. They quacked as they waddled over to the bridge. Cat leaned over to get a closer look. How did you know they were going to come over here? People come here to feed them. Now they think whenever they see people, they'll get food. Damien's eyebrows knit together. But we didn't bring anything for them. That's okay. They get plenty of birdseed from the local kids. As if to punctuate her statement, shouts from children beyond the hill carried in the air. Damien pointed up the path. What's over there? Cat grinned at him. Come with me. I'll show you. She started up the walkway, Damien by her side. When they crested the hill, Cat stopped. Here it is. The best sledding hill in all the land. Damien chuckled as they watched the Larson boys playing with their round toboggans. Cat shoved his shoulder. Come on, let's go try it. He gave her a confused look. We don't have a sled. We'll borrow one. But we... Cat didn't wait for him to finish. She started through the deep snow to where the kids were gathered. Damien grunted and followed her. She approached the oldest boy. Hey, Timmy, my friend here has never gone sledding. Damien frowned. I have... Cat kicked his shoe and Damien stopped talking to glare at her. She patted his shoulder. He's seriously missing out. Can we borrow your toboggan for a minute? Timmy shrugged. Sure. He handed her the sled. She plopped it down on the snow and climbed on top. She waited for a moment before looking up at Damien. This is the part where you sit on it? He shook his head. I don't think so. It's fun, Timmy said with encouragement. Two can sit on it, like this. He climbed on his brother's toboggan, wrapping his arms around his sibling. Then you push off, like this. Timmy shoved off, and they sped down the hill amid squeals of delight. Damien frowned at her. No, thanks. Would it hurt your leg? Cat asked. No. Then just sit down. She patted the space in front of her. Damien huffed. No. Cat tried not to glare at him. What a fussy pants. If you want me to show you what there is to do in this town, you're going to have to be open to new experiences. I've been sledding before. Why was he being so stubborn about this? How long ago? I don't know. I was probably seven. Then it's time for another go at it. Come on, please. She batted her eyelashes at him. He made a face. All right but I'm not going to be the little spoon. What are you talking about? I'm not sitting in front. She held in a laugh. Little spoon. What a funny thing to say. She silently vowed to make him be the little spoon before the day ended. Fine, she scooted forward. He sat down behind her on the orange plastic. Let's make fools of ourselves. Getting him on the sled felt like a victory, like when she convinced a scammer to do something ridiculous. She grinned. Okay, wrap your arms around me or you'll fall off. Damien made a scoffing noise, but he did as she said. She scooted so her back was pressed up against his chest. His cologne smelled good. Her heart was doing this funny little stutter thing. Oh, good grief. She was a grown woman. She could sit close to a handsome man without turning into a hormonal teenager. She ignored the way her body responded. Okay, hang on. She shoved them off and the toboggan slid. She gripped the handles. They picked up speed as they got to the middle of the hill, and Damien's hold on her tightened. Her stomach flipped as the sled sped down the hill. She let out a whoop and cold air rushed past her, the speed exhilarating her. She had started out joking around, but when Damien wouldn't get on, it felt more like a challenge. But now it was just pure fun. The toboggan hit a bump and they both went flying, landing in the snow. Cat laughed as she rolled over and pushed off his chest. Her heart pounded at his proximity. That was great. Damien moaned. Panic raced through Cat. Are you hurt? Lydia would kill her if she maimed the billionaire boss. She leaned closer to see if there was any blood. Damien's lips twitched and he tossed snow in her face. Hey, she wiped it off. What was that for? 
for getting snow down my shirt again, he said, sitting up on his elbows. The whole grumpy thing didn't work because he smiled. She shoved his chest, pushing him back in the snow. Want to do it again? His smile widened. You're acting like a juvenile. I don't care. Come on. She stood and grabbed the toboggan. They climbed the hill and went down several more times before the boys had to leave and take their sled with them. Damien brushed the snow off his clothes as they walked back to the car. Okay, I admit, that was fun. Cat grinned at him. More fun than you've had in a long time? Don't push it. He stuffed his hands into his coat pockets. There's a lot to do in New York. Okay, okay, but I'm not done showing you Pleasant Hollow. Next, we'll go to the museum. I'm sure it will rival any museum from your fancy big city. Damien raised an eyebrow. What kind of museum? She held in a laugh. <laughs> You'll see. Chapter 7 Damien stood in front of the display, staring in disbelief. He glanced around the small room, wondering if this was a joke. Unfortunately, it looked depressingly real. A lint museum. Seriously? The only one in the world. Cat grinned at him, her hands behind her back. I know it doesn't look like much, but in the back room, we have the world's largest lint ball. Took the town three years of collecting lint to make it. Damien swallowed, unsure of what to say. This is what small towns did in their spare time? Build weird museums? Um... The front door opened, making a bell ding. A woman with blonde hair approached them. Hey, Cat, there you are. She brushed her hair over her shoulder. I was wondering where you'd gone off to. Cat's eyes widened. He kind of liked the look on her, like she was caught off guard. Hillary, what are you doing here? Hillary pointed to the display, talking about the belly button lint. Just wanted to check some things out. I haven't been here in a while. She scanned the display, pretending to be interested in it. Damien hid a smile. Who was this woman? How did you know we were here? Kat said between clenched teeth. Find my friend's app. Remind me to disable that, Kat muttered. She shoved Hillary toward the door. Well, good to see you. I'm sure you're busy, so I'll talk later. Hillary maneuvered around Kat toward Damien and stuck out her hand. Hi, I'm Hillary, Kat's sister. Damien shook the woman's hand, enjoying their interaction a little too much. Damien, nice to meet you. Kat's expression soured. Did you drive my car? Hillary shrugged. Yep, didn't think you'd mind. She glanced around the small room. Have you taken him in back yet? Kat's shoulders slumped. No. Great. I'll tag along. I always love watching people look at the world's largest ball of lint for the first time. Damien held in a chuckle. He wasn't sure what was going on, but having Kat's sister around was proving to be hilarious. Hillary grabbed his arm and tugged him toward the back. Kat tells me you're from New York. What's that like? Wonderful. There are shops there that do nothing but make brilliant coffee. Kat snorted and Hillary gave her sister a scowl. She turned back to him. Sounds lovely. They approached a massive mound of what looked like different colors of dryer lint mashed together to almost form a ball, but not quite. It was too saggy. There was a burgundy velvet rope surrounding the mess, as if they expected a crowd soon and wanted to keep the giant ball of lint from being harmed. Damien stared at it, trying to think of something to say. Well, that's one big ball of lint. Cat and Hillary dissolved into giggles. Hillary patted his arm. Okay, now that you've seen that, you're probably wondering what else Pleasant Hollow could offer. Let me tell you, we have our own historic movie theater that opened in 1956. It's worth the experience to go. Cat folded her arms. I was going to take him to living on a spare. Oh, yes, that's good, too. Hillary turned to him. Do you bowl? Damien took a step back from her. Bowling? Not really his thing. 
No. Don't worry. We'll let you use the bumpers. Cat snickered as she left the room. Damien followed her. I don't even know what that means. She turned around by the display of pocket lint. I know, and that's why we must do it. Come on, it'll be fun. She gave him one of her sweet smiles that looked like she'd just figured out a way to kill him in his sleep. Hillary came between them. Yeah, just some harmless fun. He shook his head. No, thank you. They sell beer, Cat said. I'm more of a sherry drinker. Of course you are, Cat said under her breath. Maybe you'd rather stay here. Damien glanced around at the different displays. What was he doing? Did he really want to spend the rest of the day looking at lint or eating stale Doritos in his hotel room? Took a deep breath and let it out slowly. All right, fine, you win. Let's go bowling. Cat struggled to keep her composure as Damien slipped his feet into the ugly cream and brown bowling shoes. He made a face. Do I have to wear these? Yep, don't worry. Everyone's wearing them so you don't look funny. That so wasn't true. He looked funny. But only because in her mind's eye she saw him standing in Dale's ordering a double short, low fat, whatever specialty coffee, turning his nose up at what she'd made. He stood and picked up the bowling ball. Is this our lane? Yep. Cat exchanged a look with Hillary. Oh, this was going to be good. Damien nodded and took a step. He watched a 12 year old girl in the lane next to him as she released her ball. She knocked down five pins. Damien mimicked her moves, lowering his arm and throwing his ball as she had done. It slid off the lane and went into the gutter. Damien frowned as he walked back to the chairs. What did I do wrong? Cat tried not to laugh. He really looked perplexed, like he expected to knock all the pins down. It's harder than it looks, isn't it? Yes. Well, the good news is you'll get another chance. Here's your ball coming back now. Cat walked to the machine and grabbed the black ball he'd picked out. She handed it to him. I'll show you how to aim. She followed him to the lane and stood behind him. Mentally, she laughed at him now being the little spoon. Hold the ball like this. She put her arms around him to show him and immediately knew she'd made a mistake. All the hair on her arms stood on end and electricity shot over her skin. He smelled like some billion-dollar cologne and it made her weak in the knees. She showed him how to hold it and then quickly backed up from him, her heart pounding. He turned toward her, holding the ball in front of him. Like this? She was too flustered to say anything, so she nodded. Then what? Cat mentally smacked herself. What was wrong with her? She needed to get it together. She cleared her throat. Then approach the lane. Keep your back straight and shoulders square, but bend your knees. He turned back around and did as she said. He looked stiff and uncoordinated. Now, approach the lane, and when you aim, look at the dots in front of you, not the pins at the end. And you have to throw it harder this time. Damien walked to the lane and tossed the ball. It sailed high into the air before crashing down onto the lane. Cat cringed and snuck a peek at Dave, the owner, who scowled at her. Try not to break the lane. Damien seemed confused. What did I do wrong that time? You released the ball too late. Just make sure your hand is low when you release it. Cat gave him an encouraging smile before turning away. She needed to stop looking at him. He was too handsome and she was acting like an idiot. Damien nodded. This game is more of a challenge than I thought. Cat took her turn, bowling a spare, then sat down while Hillary went. Damien sat forward. So is it just you and your sister here? Cat's stomach clenched. She really didn't want to talk about her family, but he asked a direct question. How could she ignore it? She tugged at her sleeve. My mother's in a care facility on the other side of town. My sister and I visit her when we can. It's just the three of us. He looked surprised. A care facility? Why is she there? Cat looked away, a lump forming in her throat. She has young, onset dementia. She can't live alone anymore. He studied her. That must be difficult. Yes, and expensive. 
She just nodded her head and tried not to look like she was getting emotional. Hillary came back to the seats and plopped down. I only got five. Cat tapped Damien's leg with the back of her hand. You're up again. Damien bowled, knocking down three pins. He turned and grinned at Cat. Her heart thumped in her chest. Hillary leaned over. Dang, he's a hottie. Yeah, but don't forget, he's here to put me out of work, and we can't afford that, she hissed. I know, but it doesn't hurt to look. Hillary wiggled her eyebrows up and down. You're terrible. Damien bowled another gutter ball, but you wouldn't think it was the case when he came back smiling. And knocked three down. Did you see that? Good job, Hillary said. She leaned over to talk to him as Cat walked up to the lane. Why was Hillary even here? She was just being nosy. Annoyance ran up Cat's back. She threw a gutter ball. Arg! this game wasn't going very well. They bowled for an hour, playing two games. Damien continued to improve while Cat had her worst two games of the year. Hillary didn't seem to care about her score as she looked like she was only there to flirt with Damien. By the end of the second game, Cat was ready to rip Hillary's head off. As soon as Damien went up to the counter to turn in his shoes, Cat rounded on Hillary. Okay, you had your fun. Now make an excuse and leave. Hillary blinked. Why? You're messing up my mission. How am I doing that? You're just jealous he likes me. Hillary took off her bowling shoes. Right, jealous. No way. If Hillary even had a brain, she'd know Cat hated Damien. But Lydia expressly said to make sure Damien fell in love with the town, not her sister. Cat huffed and put her hands on her hips. If you stay, I'm telling him about the time you wet your pants at Chuck E. Cheese. Hillary frowned and pulled on her boots. Fine, I'll leave, but I'm staying over again and you are spilling everything when you get back. Deal. Damien approached them and Hillary stood, slipping her purse over her shoulder. Well, I must be going now. Nice to meet you, Damien. She wiggled her fingers at him before stalking off to the front door. Cat picked up the shoes Hillary left behind. You hungry? Starved. Good. We can get some food at the carnival. Damien nodded and walked with her. I'm looking forward to this famous Christmas carnival. She nodded. Me too. She tossed the shoes up on the counter as they passed. The sun was almost down when they stepped outside, making the snow sparkle with the last of the evening light. Cat couldn't help but feel a little excitement as they walked. She shoved that aside, mentally scolding herself. This wasn't a date. She couldn't like Mr. Fussy Pants. He was the enemy, and she had to keep that in the back of her mind, or she'd really mess everything up. Chapter 8 Damien cut a slice of his hot dog with his plastic knife and stabbed it with the fork. It looked disgusting with the chili on it, but when he put it in his mouth, he had to admit it didn't taste half bad. The sound of bells jingling came from up the street. Crowds of people hurried by. Cat squinted at him. How is it that you're in your thirties and have never gone bowling or had a chili dog? He shifted on the metal park bench. They were seated in a parking lot by a food truck. How could he explain what his childhood had been like? He'd grown up with nannies and catered parties. Fast food was not tolerated. His mother would faint dead away if she knew what he'd been up to today. I grew up differently. Like on another planet? She picked up her chili dog and took a bite. He wasn't sure how she did that without getting it all down the front of her. No, I was just brought up on the finer things of life. Ah, I see, she said around her food. You grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth. Not wanting to debate it, he said something like that. Well... There's more to life than money. The familiar pang of regret entered his chest. I know. He sawed off another chunk of the hot dog with his knife. He didn't want to think about Luke or what happened ten years ago. Cat swallowed and set down her chili dog on her plate. So, tell me what you do when you're not putting poor people out of work. 
Damien groaned. I told you, I need to... I know, she said, holding up a hand. Just kidding, sort of. I'll shut up about it. What do you like to do in your spare time? I don't have any spare time. Cat gave him a funny look. You just work? That's it? Pretty much. When I'm not working late at the office, I'm working late from home. Boy, that sounded lame. Was his life that pathetic? He hadn't thought about it before now, but saying it out loud made him look dull. She picked up her soda and took a sip. You don't have any hobbies? He began to feel uncomfortable. He'd had a hobby at one time. It didn't work out too well for him, as he was reminded each day by his mutilated leg. Not really. He didn't want to talk about hobbies anymore. What about you? Where did you go to school? Cat played with her straw, stabbing the ice in her drink. I took some classes at the community college in New Haven, but then Mom got sick and I couldn't keep doing that. So I quit and took the job at the newspaper. Since I was taking journalism classes, the job was a perfect fit. Damien studied her. Cat seemed like an intelligent woman, even though she was a bit quirky. Why did she want to work at some dumpy small-town newspaper? Don't you think a larger city would offer you more opportunities? She made a face. Yeah, there's more to life than just your job. But... A group of carolers started singing We Wish You a Merry Christmas behind him, and Damien gave up. She wouldn't admit her small town had less to offer, no matter what he said. When the carolers had moved on, he changed the subject. What was Christmas like when you were a kid? Cat grinned. We loved this time of year. Dad would pile us all in the car, and we'd go driving around to look at the Christmas lights. While we were gone, Santa would come. We'd go home to find our presents under the tree. So your mom stayed behind? Nope. But it's funny. Each time we'd get in the car, Mom would always forget something in the house and have to go back in and get it. Cat chuckled. I was ten before I suspected anything. And what about your sister? How much younger is she? She's three years younger. We were enemies growing up, but we're no longer at each other's throats. <laughs> Not much, anyway. Cat gave him a smile. He liked this open side to her. When she wasn't trying to embarrass him, she was fun to talk to. And what does Hillary do? She works in the kitchen at Pizza Hut. It's a job, but what she really wants to do is go to culinary school and own her own restaurant. Let me guess. She'd rather not do that because she loves Pleasant Hollow and doesn't want to leave. Cat rolled her eyes. No, Hillary would love to leave. It's just our mom. Oh. Damien felt like a jerk. Sorry. He really needed to think before he started talking. Don't be. It's just the situation. A man approached their table. His belly sagged over his belt. He patted his receding hairline. Hey, Cat. How's it hanging? He clicked his tongue and pointed a finger at her. Cat cringed. It's not hanging, Elliot. It's never been hanging. It's just a figure of speech. Elliot chuckled, his gaze traveling over Damien. What, are you on a date or something? No, Cat said, way too fast. Heavens, no! Damien stared at her. Should he be offended by that? Elliot grinned and swiped his hand over his hair again. Good, because I thought I might have some competition going on. He waved his hand, indicating the two of them. Want to go to the movies tomorrow? I hear they're playing the new Transformers. That Michael Bay is a genius. Cat sucked in a breath and let it out slowly. Ah, uh, no thanks, Elliot. You know me. I'm a homebody. She gave him a lame smile. Elliot nodded and did a little swagger thing with his hips. If you ever want to date a real man, you know where I live. He pointed at her again before continuing down the sidewalk. Damien wasn't sure if the guy was for real or not. Where does he live? Cat scrubbed her face with her hand and moaned. Next door to me. Oh, well, you should go out with him, you know, because he's a real man. Cat whacked him on the arm. Funny. He wasn't appealing to me in elementary, junior high, or high school. And he's certainly not appealing now. Damien chuckled as he stood from the bench. He picked up his paper plate and dumped it in the trash can. Too bad. He could be your soulmate. 
He ate paste in first grade, like every day. I think it did something to his brain. Cat hunched into her coat. He's harmless, but no thank you. Speaking of no thank you, what's wrong with being on a date with me? Damien fell into step beside her. Cat looked at him funny. You? You're a fancy latte. I'm just plain coffee. What? She made a motion indicating all of him. You're a billionaire from New York, way above my pay grade. Confused, he stopped walking. Then why did you come on to me this morning? What are you talking about? You wanted to spend the day with me, show me around town. What was that about? Cat threw back her head and laughed, the sound echoing off the buildings around the town square. I wasn't coming on to you, meathead. I was just... She stopped talking, her eyes growing wide. You were what? Nothing. Come on, there's ice skating over there. She grabbed his arm and pulled him toward the skating rink. What did she mean by that? He was so confused, but went with her down the sidewalk, not wanting to press her. He'd try again later. Cat was an intriguing woman, and he wanted to see what else the night held for them. They rented ice skates and sat down on a bench to put them on. Christmas music blared over a pair of speakers. Cat laced up her shoes. Now, the trick to these is to keep your ankles straight. I know how to ice skate. Her eyebrows flew up in surprise. You do? He chuckled. I learned how to skate as a boy. He hadn't been since his accident, but he figured it wouldn't be too difficult. Maybe his limping wouldn't be so noticeable. Do you know how to skate a figure eight? He shook his head. No, but I can probably stay upright for the most part. Cat laughed and gave him a funny look. You have a strange way of saying things sometimes. He shrugged and stood on his skates. Let's do this. Cat shoved off and he immediately felt intimidated. She looked like she'd been doing this for years. She came back to him and stopped with the tips of her skates. What's wrong? I can skate, but I'm not that good. Cat grabbed his hand. Come on, don't be a chicken. I'll go slow. A pair of young girls passed them, giggling. They looked like sisters. Damien hid a smile. As they skated around the rink, Damien began to loosen up a bit. He looked at Cat. If you won the lottery, what would you do with the money? I'd hire a full-time nurse and move Mom into my house. Then I'd buy the newspaper from you and give myself a promotion. She shot him a cheesy grin and he laughed. Good idea. She sobered. Then I'd give the rest of the money to research Alzheimer's. A pang of sorrow passed through him. He could tell she meant it. She'd really give up a fortune to help her mother. The girls passed them by again, this time going faster. One of them clipped Damien and he jerked, slipping on the ice. Cat reached out to steady him and he ended up clinging to her. She laughed as he hung on to her. You okay? Yes. He looked down and got swallowed up in her blue eyes. Her lips were bright red, maybe from the cold. Her cheeks were a lovely shade of pink. Her dark hair shone in the moonlight. She was beautiful. The thought entered his mind like a thief, stealing his breath away. How had he not noticed her beauty before? An insane idea jumped into his brain and he struggled to shove it away. No way was he going to kiss her. She was an employee. That would be totally inappropriate. He let go of her and backed away, careful not to slip. I'm fine. All right, then, she said slowly as if she wasn't sure what had just happened. Let's go a little faster now if you can handle it. She took his hand and started skating. Electricity zapped between them. Her soft hand felt good in his like it belonged there. Wait, where'd that come from? What was wrong with him? Just because he was with a beautiful girl didn't mean he had to get a crush on her. He was there for business. Nothing else. Chapter 9 the cold night air numbed Cat's face as she skated next to Mr. Bossman. She'd thought she would be bored spending the day with Damien, but it had turned out differently than she'd imagined. He was starting to loosen up, and, surprisingly, she liked this side of him. 
Listen to this, Damien said, leaning closer to her as they rounded the corner. When I was a kid, I decided I wanted to run a business like my father. What kind of business? I was going to sell joke books. Damien looked like he was trying not to smile, but it didn't work. His eyes smiled for him. Joke books? Where did you get them from? Oh, I made them myself. I cut up some computer paper and stapled the pages together, then made up jokes for them. Cat couldn't wait to hear about this. Do tell me some of the jokes you put in them. Damien lost the war with trying to keep a straight face. Why did the elephant cross the road? Why? Because elephants can do whatever they want. Don't question it. Cat laughed. That's not too bad. Want another one? Go ahead. Damien squeezed her hand, which sent tingles up her arm. She ignored them. This was no time to be crushing on Mr. Fancy Latte. How do zombies say hello? How? They just do. She couldn't help but laugh again. You were really good with the jokes. Damien's smile warmed her. I know. I have no idea how I didn't become a millionaire on the spot. Do you still have any of your joke books you made? Sadly, no. Mother thought they were trash and threw them away. His smile faded. She didn't like scraps of paper lying around. Oh, that's sad. Cat touched his arm, but it felt a little too intimate, so she removed her hand. It would be fun to have one as a memento. Mother doesn't like those either. He gave her a little smile, but it didn't reach his eyes. She sounds like a ball of fun. He was silent for a moment, looking off into the distance as they skated. She's not so bad. She means well. And your father? What happened? Cat couldn't believe how bold she was being. Why did she ask that? He died of cancer. The way he said it was weird, like he was trying not to choke on the words. Last year, it was sudden. I'm sorry. Damien motioned to a bench. Mind if we sit for a minute? My leg. Guilt surfaced in Cat. She'd been making him do all these physical things today. How could she be so insensitive? Of course, I'm sorry. He stopped himself on the railing and sat down. <laughs> no need to be sorry. I'm the one that messed up my leg. Accidents happen. I'm sure it wasn't your fault. She could feel how cold the bench was, even through her jeans. It was, he said, quietly. She didn't know how to respond to that. Fortunately, he changed the subject. So, you bowl and ice skate and go to fascinating museums. What else do you do in your spare time? Besides baiting scammers? He chuckled. How did that get started anyway? She shrugged. I don't know. I guess I was bored one day and was angry I kept getting nonsense emails, so I replied to one. I never expected the scammer to reply back. Then it just sort of developed into a game. How so? She looked at him. He seemed genuinely interested. I guess I sort of wanted to see how far the scammer would go to get money out of me. At first, I just wanted to know who I was talking to. So I told him I needed a photo to verify who he was. I was shocked when he actually sent a photo. But how did you know it was a photo of him? Cat pointed at Damien. Right, that's what I was thinking too. So I figured if I made him do something in the photo, it couldn't be just some random picture from the internet. That's when the fun began. I told him to put on lipstick, and he did. Cat laughed, remembering the photo. It was hilarious. I can't believe that. I was going to send him several thousand dollars. At least that's what he thought. I suppose it was worth his time to appease me. And then it blossomed from there. I started responding to more emails and getting more people to do weird things. I shared the emails with my co-workers and Lydia asked if I could make it into a column. I was so excited. It was the first thing I'd ever written that was printed in the newspaper. And the people in town really love it. I get asked about it all the time. I can see why people like to read it. You're very witty. Her heart warmed at the compliment. She tried not to blush. Thanks. He exhaled, his breath making fog in the cold air. He pulled his coat tighter around him. Are you as cold as I am? I know what we need. 
she stood. Let's turn in our skates and get some hot chocolate. He smiled up at her, and she realized she liked his smile. There was something genuine behind it, something she hadn't noticed before. That sounds good. They took off their skates and walked to the hot chocolate stand. As they stood in line, the music from the carnival rides up the street floated in the air. Crowds of people walked by. When they got to the front of the line, she saw Abby working the window. Hey, girl, how's it going? Abby grinned at her, red and green ribbons holding her dark hair up in pigtails. She always did whatever she wanted, in style or not. Going good. Even with the storm, we've had a record-breaking year. What can I get you? Her gaze fell to Damien, and she gave Kat a raised eyebrow look. Wow, she mouthed. We'll have two medium hot chocolates, Kat said. Do you want whipped cream on those? No, Damien said. Kat frowned at him. Why not? It's delicious. She turned back to Abby. Yes, I want whipped cream. Damien took a step closer. Is it low fat? Why do you care about low fat? Kat whacked him in the abs. They were rock hard. Dang she said, feeling his stomach again. When she realized what she was doing, she dropped her hands. Heat rose to her cheeks. Had she really just felt her boss's abs? She was such an idiot. Sorry. Abby looked like she was trying not to laugh. It's not low fat, but I don't think there are many calories in it. Damien nodded. I guess I'll try it then. Abby grinned and began filling the styrofoam cups. You'll love it. When she was done making them, she set them on the metal surface outside the window. Be sure to catch a ride on the Ferris wheel, she winked at Cat. Cat's cheeks flamed, and she wanted to shove Abby back in her little window. No, I don't think we will. She picked up the cups and handed one to Damien. Why not? Sounds like fun. Damien took a sip. You're right. It's good with the whipped cream. He started down the street toward the carnival lights. Cat hurried after him. No, seriously, she was just joking around. We don't have to ride the Ferris wheel. Especially not with Harry working it. He always put her on the spot. Come on, we're almost there. But... Damien took her hand and pulled her along. It'll be fun. The carnival music drowned out her protests. Damien walked up to the Ferris wheel, which had no line, of course... The universe was trying to embarrass her. How much for tickets? Two dollars a ticket, Harry said, taking off his driving cap and scratching his bald head. Then he noticed Cat. Hey, Cat, I didn't see you there. How's it going? Fine, Harry. The elderly black gentleman gave her a smile as he slipped his cap back on. How's your mom doing? About the same, Cat fidgeted. She didn't want to talk about her mother anymore. Damien handed him the two dollars. Harry opened the gate. Take a seat. I'll give you an extra long ride. No, I don't want you to get in trouble. Cat took a step back. Nonsense. You and your man get on. He gestured to the swinging seat. I'll make it really special for you. A couple got in line behind them, and Cat couldn't back away gracefully, so she stepped up to the seat. Her face warmed. Thanks, Harry. Harry clicked the bar into place and patted it. Real special. Cat sank into the seat, mortified. Damien gave her a questioning look. What's he mean by that? Cat pointed up to the green sprig of mistletoe tied to the top of the overhang. The ride creaked as they lifted up and stopped to let the other couple on. Damien's eyes grew wide. Mistletoe? Yep, town tradition. Harry stops you at the top and you're supposed to kiss. Why didn't you tell me? I tried. The ride jerked into movement. It was a small Ferris wheel with only eight cars, so it didn't take long for them to go around a few times. Cat sipped her hot cocoa and hunched her shoulders. Maybe Harry wouldn't stop the wheel for them after all. Damien pointed out over the town square as they rounded the top. I love all the lights. Must have taken days to get them all strung up. Yeah, they're beautiful. Damien looked at her. What are your New Year's resolutions going to be this year? I don't know. I'm terrible at keeping them. I think I'm not going to do any this year. She gulped down the rest of her drink as it had cooled into lukewarm chocolate. That's too bad. He looked down at his drink. 
I find making goals keeps me driven. I get more done when I have something I'm trying to accomplish. I think I'm going to do this thing I read about on the internet. Instead of resolutions, at the end of each week, I'll write down the things I was able to do. That way, I'm more focused on celebrating what I achieved instead of making goals I can never reach. Damien slowly nodded. That's not a bad idea. The ride slowed and then stopped. The couple that got on behind them were let off, and Harry stepped back to give her a grin. He turned the ride back on and stopped it with them at the top. His voice carried up from below. It's kissin' time. The crowd below cheered and Kat's cheeks heated again. Sorry, you don't have to. Harry can't even see us. Damien seemed to be enjoying her embarrassment. No, but that crowd can. Kiss her! Someone from the throng of people shouted. Come on! Do it! Everyone seemed to stop and stare up at them. Cat slid lower into the seat. Could her day get any weirder? How long will Harry make us wait up here if we don't? Damien asked. I don't know. People usually come to the Ferris wheel to make out. Ah! Uh, how had she gotten herself into this mess? Well, we'd better just do it then. Damien cupped her face in his hands, and before she knew it, his lips were on hers. Chapter 10 Damien knew the second his lips touched hers, he'd made a mistake, but he couldn't back down. Loads of people were staring at them from the ground. He moved his lips over hers and a heat ignited in his veins. The electricity shooting over his skin didn't ease as she responded to the kiss. It intensified. Her hand slid up his chest. Cat was like no girl he'd ever dated, and she fascinated him. She was a whirlwind moving in directions he couldn't begin to predict. And kissing her was sending his heart into overdrive. He found himself drawn to her like a gravity he couldn't fight against. Her lips were soft and warm, and he craved more. He shifted, snaking his arms around her small waist and pulling her closer. Her scent enveloped him, and he deepened the kiss. She wrapped her arms around his neck. His heart felt like it was going to pound out of his chest. Had he ever experienced a kiss like this before? All others paled in comparison. Someone below whistled. The ride jerked to life and he forced himself to break the kiss. Cat stared at him, her eyes wide. Crud. He shouldn't have kissed an employee. What was he thinking? He ran his hand through his hair and scooted away from her, embarrassed that he'd gotten so involved in the kiss. What must she think of him? He looked away and tried to gain his composure. He was a professional person. He needed to maintain a distance. The man operating the ride slowed their car as they got to the bottom. He stopped the ride, then lifted the gate, giving Cat a knowing smile. Have a Merry Christmas, you two. Cat's cheeks flushed. Thanks, Harry. As they walked away from the crowds, Cat exhaled. We probably should call it a night. Right. They headed toward Cat's car, and Damien grew more uncomfortable. How could he have thought kissing her was a good idea? Now things were awkward between them. Should he apologize? Ignore it and pretend the kiss never happened? He settled on the latter. Best not to bring it up. Ever. Again. Cat stopped and unlocked the passenger door. She turned to him. Ah, uh, thanks for letting me show you my town. Yes, it was stimulating. He cringed as he slid into the car. Stimulating? Why did he say that? His brain wasn't working right. Cat started up the car and turned on the heat at full blast. Good. Maybe she wouldn't try to talk to him as she drove him to his hotel. Unfortunately, after three blocks, she turned the fan down and looked at him. About that kiss... Let's just pretend that didn't happen. The words rushed out of him like women trying to get to a shoe sale. We're both adults. We didn't mean anything by it. Let's move on. Cat narrowed her eyes at him but didn't say anything else. She pulled up to his hotel and stopped the car. 
For a moment, she just sat there, the car idling, her stare making him feel like a creep. Finally, she said, Good night, Damien. He nodded and got out of her car. She sped away like a she-demon. He watched her taillights disappear down the street. He let out a breath that hovered in the cold air. At least that was over. As he walked to his room, his cell phone vibrated. He pulled it out and looked at the screen. His mother. Probably shouldn't put her off anymore. He answered the call. Hello, mother. Are you through ignoring me? He sighed. She was right. That's what he'd been doing. Guilt surged through him as he took out his key card and unlocked his door. Sorry, I've been busy. When are you coming home? I'm not sure. Why? He refrained from asking who else she had planned on setting him up with. He held the phone to his ear with his shoulder as he slid off his coat and hung it in the closet. She paused and Damien sat on the bed and slipped off his shoes. He grew nervous with her silence. Mother, what is it? It's nothing, really. There's this event coming up. I'd like you to help plan it. An event? How odd. Call Charlie. You always have her plan your events. No, it's not like that. I'd really love your help with this. Where are you? Pleasant Hollow, Wisconsin. His mother sucked in a breath. Damien gripped the phone and stood. Mother, what is it? Why are you there? Her voice was almost a whisper. Business? What's wrong? He stilled, waiting for her to answer. I just... I, I need you to come home. Now. Obviously something's upset you. Tell me. He listened to his mother's fidgeting on the other line. She exhaled. Damien, please. Whatever it is you're doing, just let it go. Come home. Damien's mind spun. What do you know about this newspaper? Nothing. She was lying to him. He pressed his fingers to his temple, massaging it. What was going on? Why wouldn't she just tell him? What's upsetting you? And what's so important about this newspaper? I'm not leaving till I find out. His mother sat silent for a moment. This whole thing is upsetting me. Why? I can't talk about it. Damien tried not to fling the phone across the room. Then I'm staying until I find out. Nothing I say will make you come home. Not unless you tell me what's going on. He was tired of her games. She was quiet. And then a click came and he realized she'd hung up on him. What was that all about? He stared at his phone. There was something weird going on, and it all had to do with the newspaper. Tomorrow, he'd figure out what it was. Cat pulled into the garage and lowered the door. When she entered the kitchen, Hillary practically pounced on her. What happened? Tell me everything. Cat's heart raced. How could she tell her sister she kissed Boss Man? The incredibly hot boss man. Oh, she was a disgrace. She tossed her purse on the green kitchen countertop from the 70s. Hillary was always complaining about it, like she had enough money to renovate the kitchen. Let me take off my coat. Jeesh. Hillary followed her into the living room. Come on, what happened? Well, first of all, I was only taking him around town because Lydia made me. Cat rolled her eyes. So, you spent the day with him, and I saw the way he was looking at you, and the way you were looking at him. There was something there. Hillary wiggled her eyebrows. Was there? Cat shook her head to get those thoughts out. That stupid kiss was making her crazy. You're silly. He's a billionaire. I make coffee for Lydia. Trust me, there was nothing going on between us. Cat sat on her mother's favorite chair an old rocker. Hillary curled up on the couch. So, what did you do after bowling? We ate chili dogs and went ice skating, just normal carnival stuff. Nothing happened. Cat desperately tried to keep her face straight, but she could tell by the way her sister was looking at her. She wasn't doing a good job. Oh my gosh, something totally happened. Cat buried her face in her hands and moaned. Am I that easy to read? What? Did you kiss? Hillary pulled Cat's hands down and stared at her face. You did. You kissed him. 
How do you do that? Cat hit her sister on the leg. Was he a good kisser? Hillary bounced on her seat. Tell me! Cat sank back into the chair. It was amazing. Where did he kiss you? How long did it last? Are you seeing him again? Hillary shot off the questions like a rapid-fire weapon. Before you get all crazy, the kiss didn't mean anything. He insisted we go on the Ferris wheel, that's all. Harry stopped us on the top. Still, he wouldn't have kissed you had he not wanted to. He was totally into you today. Hillary grinned and nudged her leg. He totally was not, and I don't even like the guy. Hillary gave her a flat look. You can't lie to me. I can see everything on your face. Cat gave up. Okay, so maybe I started out not liking him, and maybe somewhere along the way I noticed how handsome he is and that he's not a totally terrible person. That doesn't mean he likes me or that anything is happening between us. I'm too small town for him. Don't do that. Don't put yourself down. You're awesome, and you know it. And when you were showing him how to bowl, he totally snuggled into you. Cat threw her head back and laughed. You are so wrong. Hillary jumped up. Let's argue over snacks. I made this dip today. I want you to try it. She went into the kitchen and came back with a bowl and a bag of corn chips. Now, be honest. Is it too spicy? Cat took a chip and scooped a little of the red and orange concoction onto it and put it in her mouth. No, it's good. She chewed, and then the heat hit her. Okay, I take that back a little too spicy. She stuffed another chip in her mouth to try and calm the heat. Her mouth burned. Way too spicy. Hillary frowned. I was afraid of that. The burning intensified and Kat started coughing. What did you put in there, ghost peppers? I'm dying. She hopped up and ran to the kitchen. Maybe, her sister called after her. Are you kidding? Kat pulled a glass out of the cupboard and opened the refrigerator. She grabbed the milk and poured, then gulped the milk down, not caring that it ran down the side of her face. It helped a little, but not much. Are you trying to kill me? Hillary came in and set the bowl down. I tried something to calm the heat. I guess it didn't work. Didn't you taste it? Not yet. A grin formed on her face. I wanted to see what you thought first. Cat whacked her sister's arm. Dork. So, he's a good kisser. Hillary leaned back against the counter and folded her arms. Cat took another long drink from her milk glass before setting it down. Good kisser didn't even come close to describing it. It was like flying through space on the outside of a rocket. Her heart hadn't settled down from it. Her skin felt alive. Her lips still tingled from it. The smell of him lingered on her clothes. Yeah, she managed to say. Where are you taking him tomorrow? Cat blinked, trying to snap herself out of whatever she was in. I don't think we're going anywhere tomorrow. We didn't discuss it. Well, call him in the morning. You have to capitalize on this thing you have going on. Cat was tired of telling her sister there was no thing, so she just stared at her. Hillary set the chips down. He won't close down the newspaper if he's in love with you. And there it was. The perfect answer to her problem. Hillary was right. If Damien had feelings for her, he wouldn't take away her only employ. All she had to do was keep seeing him and make him fall for her. There was only one problem with the plan. She was already starting to get in over her head, and the last thing she wanted to do was fall in love with Damien Warren. Chapter 11 Cat brushed her teeth and readied for bed, but thoughts of Damien wouldn't leave her brain, so she curled up against a pile of pillows on her bed and logged on to privileged singles to stare at his profile photo. Her stomach felt like it was full of feathers fluttering around. Why did he have to affect her that way? His jet black hair was perfectly styled. He probably went to some expensive barber shop. He would look perfectly natural on the front of People magazine or Forbes. His eyes were such a dark brown, sometimes they looked black. His gaze 
always sent a tiny thrill through her. As she stared at his photo, a message came through. I see you're online. The fluttery feeling intensified. Blast it all. She should hate the guy. He was just kissing her moments before, and now he was online chatting up another woman. At least, what he thought was another woman. She gathered up her emotions and tried to be mad at him. It didn't work too well. She could still smell his cologne clinging to her. She needed a shower. Yes, she answered. She might as well see where this headed. She did create Amelia to get information from him after all. How are you doing? I'm fine. You're right. There's more to do in a small town than I realized. Cat itched to ask him about how his day went, but hesitated. What if he talked about her? What if she learned something that she didn't want to know? She didn't want to hear from him that he hated her. Or whatever that was that made him not want to talk about the kiss he gave her. But she was insanely curious as to what he'd say. She took in a breath before answering him. Oh? What did you do today? Sledding, bowling, and ice skating, for starters. Wow, you had a busy day. Cat squirmed against the pillows. She should not be talking to him about this. But for some reason, she couldn't stop. Were you alone? He hesitated before answering. No. This was it. He was going to start talking about her. If she wanted to change the subject, she needed to do it right now. Her fingers flew across the keys without her consent. Did you meet someone special there? No. And there it was. Confirmation that she knew she didn't want. She wasn't anything special to him. It stung, but she knew better than to let it fester. After all, she barely knew the guy. As she thought about what to say back, she forced herself into her character. What would Amelia say? Good. I'm interested in you. And I don't want you falling for some girl before we even get a chance to meet. She held her breath. What would he say to that? It wasn't what she'd planned on saying to him. You're more forward tonight. Cat bit her lower lip. Yeah, that had just slipped out. Best to keep going with it. I'm not one to mess around. I see something I like and I go for it. I like that. I'm not one to mess around either. Cat wondered what he was thinking. That was until his next message came through. Can I call you? Her heart jumped into her throat. Could she talk to him on the phone? What would Amelia say? Nerves shot through her as she came to the conclusion that Amelia would definitely want to talk to him on the phone. But what if he recognized her voice? And she couldn't give him her real phone number. Damien already had that. She did a quick internet search and found a service that would allow her to get a dummy number that would forward to her phone. She quickly set that up, then answered him. Okay, you can call me on my cell at 555-0142. Her fingers trembled as she waited for the phone call. When her phone rang, she almost lost her nerve, but after it rang three times, she swiped and answered, Hello? She kept her voice low, hoping he wouldn't recognize it. Amelia? Yes. Hi, Damien. Cat pressed the phone so hard to her ear it started to ache. She switched to her other ear. I'm so glad you said it was okay that I call you. For some reason, talking on the phone is more my speed. Cat blinked. What should she say to that? Yeah, I like it too. She held in a groan. There was no way she was going to pull this off. Why had she given him a phone number? Damien ignored her awkwardness. In the interest of full disclosure, I should let you know I did spend the day with a woman. Cat's stomach clenched. This was such a bad idea. She tried to play it off as unimportant. Oh? She's an employee of the newspaper, and while I have to admit she's very attractive, I don't see any way a relationship could form. Conflicting feelings rushed through Cat. He thought she was very attractive? Wow! But... Of course, there couldn't be anything between them. She already knew that. Even after the kiss, she hadn't been thinking of them as a couple. Had she? Amelia. Cat had to think like her. Amelia was direct and to the point. That's good. I don't want to waste my time with this if it's not going anywhere. Then we're on the same page. 
His smooth voice made her want to sigh. She was so dumb. I'm glad. Damien didn't say anything right away, and Kat closed her eyes, hoping she didn't sound like an idiot. Your voice sounds husky. It's kind of sexy. Kat froze. Was he some kind of creepy guy? She hadn't thought he was, but you never could tell. Damien coughed and cleared his throat. Sorry, <laughs> that came off as weird, I think. I didn't mean anything by it. That's okay, Kat said, relieved he wasn't going in a strange direction. Before we meet, I should tell you something. What? Kat couldn't possibly guess what he was going to say. I was in a car accident ten years ago. My leg was badly burned. Kat sucked in a breath. That was what was wrong with his leg? She couldn't even imagine the pain of having a burn like that. Guilt wrapped around her chest, and she'd made him do all those physical things. I'm sorry, she said. I don't tell you for sympathy. I wanted to let you know because sometimes women react poorly when they see my leg. Kat couldn't believe that. Poorly? How? The last woman I dated said it was disgusting and she'd never dare be seen with me in public if my leg was showing. Wow. Kat couldn't imagine how a person could be so insensitive. And how had that made Damien feel? So I wanted to let you know in case it mattered to you. No, Kat said quickly. That doesn't matter. It won't affect anything. Her heart squeezed in sympathy for him. How horrible to have someone treat you that way. Damien was silent on the other end of the phone, and Kat couldn't stop the next question from coming out. How did the car accident happen? There were rustling noises before he spoke. I don't like to talk about it. Suffice it to say, I was at fault. The way he said it made Kat think someone else had been involved in the crash as well. But she didn't want to push him too far, so she bit back the rest of her questions. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's in the past. I've gotten over it. Kat snuggled under the covers. He hadn't gotten over it, she could tell by his voice. But she let it go. It was nice talking to you tonight. Yes. I hope I can call you tomorrow. I look forward to it. Kat closed her eyes. Only those words were a lie. Chapter 12 Damien sat at the small table, his knee bouncing. No one else was in the breakfast area. He wasn't even sure if anyone else had stayed at the hotel last night. It had been eerily quiet. The scrambled eggs from a box weren't doing much for his stomach. He downed his orange juice and stood. It was time to get to the bottom of the small town newspaper. He pulled out his phone and dialed Cat. She answered on the third ring. Hello? Do you have a key to the office? I need someone to let me in. Yes, she said, but she sounded hesitant. What exactly do you need? Can you meet me there in ten minutes? I'll tell you then. Okay. He hung up and went back to his room to get his coat. Soon he was sitting in the parking lot behind the newspaper office. Cat pulled up in her car and got out. He met her at the door. Thanks for coming. Kat unlocked the door and let them inside. She flipped on the lights, then turned to him. Okay, what are you looking for? You want to be a reporter, right? Here's your chance to dig something up. I need to know why my father bought this place and why my mother freaked out when I mentioned Pleasant Hollow. The only thing that comes to mind is my father had an affair with Lydia years ago. But I need to find proof. Kat's eyes widened. An affair? Why would your mother hide that? You'd think she'd have exposed it. I don't know. That's the only thing that makes any kind of sense, though. Do you have a key to Lydia's office? Maybe we can find something in there. Kat swallowed and bit her lip. Yeah, but she'd kill me if I let you in there. Then we won't tell her. I don't know about this, Kat said but she walked to Lydia's office and unlocked it anyway. The door swung open with a creak. I'll take full responsibility if she comes in while we're in there. Cat followed him inside. If she comes in, I'm using you as a human shield. He chuckled. Deal. Damien pulled out Lydia's chair and motioned for Cat to sit in it. She shook her head. Oh, no, I am not sitting there. If she comes in, she'll fire me on the spot if she sees me in her chair. Damien sat down and pulled out a drawer on the desk. 
I won't let her fire you. Cat's gaze snapped to his. You won't let her fire me? Are you promising me job security? Does that mean you're not closing the newspaper? Damien sighed. He had no clue why he'd said that. He was letting his emotions for Cat get to him. He couldn't promise her anything. In his heart, he knew he was going to close the newspaper. Yet, he couldn't bring himself to admit it to her. He rubbed his forehead. I don't know what I'm doing yet. Cat leaned against the filing cabinet. I see. They searched through the drawers in the file boxes, finding nothing personal. Nothing incriminating. Nothing to suggest Lydia even knew his father. What's in this locked drawer? Damien asked, tugging on it. Cat shrugged and sat on the desk. I don't know. Maybe that's where she keeps all her photos of her secret lovers. Funny. Damien searched through her other drawers looking for the key. All he found were loose paper clips and rubber bands and an old cough drop wrapper. Do you think she taped the key under the desk? Cat scoffed. You watch too many movies. Try thinking like a busy woman who runs a newspaper. She'd want it handy so she can get into her drawer easily. How do you know that? Cat pointed to a nail on the wall with a key hanging on it, a smirk on her face. I looked up. Damien grabbed the key and fitted into the lock. The drawer slid open. A stash of candy bars lay in the bottom of the otherwise empty drawer. Cat let out a laugh. She's a closet junk food junkie. Damien frowned and locked the drawer back up. He hung up the key, sat back, and threaded his fingers together. How would you continue this investigation, you reporter? She squinted at him. If I find the information you need, are you going to promote me? No, he was still going to shut down the place, but he pretended to consider it. Maybe. Then let's do some real digging. Come on. She hopped off the desk and walked out of Lydia's office. He stood back while she locked Lydia's door. We're not going to find anything in here, Cat said. Let's try some super sleuthing. What does that mean? They went outside and Cat motioned to her car. Let's go get my laptop. We'll Facebook stalk her. That might work. Damien got out his keys. I'd better follow you. I don't want my rental sitting here alerting Lydia that I was here digging around. That's fine. He followed her to an older part of town where the homes were well established. Cat pulled in front of a two-story bungalow with a one-car garage. He parked behind her. When they entered, a wonderful smell enveloped him. Did you bake something this morning? Hillary came into the living room. Her hair was up in a messy bun and she wore a long nightshirt. She gave him a raised eyebrow look before smiling. Hey, Damien, nice to see you. I'm so glad my sister told me she was bringing you over so I could get dressed. She tossed Cat a glare. You live with Cat? No, Cat said. She just bakes here and sometimes spends the night. Cat smiled sweetly at her sister, that same look Damien had grown to recognize as dangerous. What are you making? Stuff for the fundraiser this afternoon. You didn't forget about it, did you? I told them you would be there. I didn't forget. This shouldn't take all day. Damien just needs my computer expertise. She sat down on an old lime green couch and pulled a laptop off the end table. She patted the seat beside her, so Damien sat down. Okay, guess I'll go make myself more presentable. Hillary stuck her tongue out at her sister, then turned on her heel and headed down the hallway. She's moody today. Cat opened her laptop and logged in. As she waited for her computer to boot up, her gaze traveled to his injured leg. He shifted uncomfortably. He didn't want her to ask more about it, so he said, You don't fool me. I can tell you like her. Yeah, she's all right, as far as sisters go. Her gaze lifted back to her computer screen. You seem close. Damien actually envied that, being an only child. We are. We've been through a lot together. Cat logged on to Facebook and pulled up Lydia's page. It was sparse, with not much personal information. Damien watched as Cat went looking through the different groups Lydia was in. She's in a group for moms? I didn't know she had a child. You think she and my father, he couldn't say the words, 
Would his father have hidden a half-sibling of his? He pushed the thought away. Surely his father wouldn't have buried something like that. I don't know. Let me join the group and poke around. Cat clicked to join, then went back to Lydia's profile. As Damien leaned closer to look at the screen, the smell of Cat's shampoo or laundry soap caught his attention, and he was instantly reminded of how it felt to have her in his arms. The memory of her warm lips on his filled his mind, and he backed away from her. He couldn't develop feelings for her. She was not only an employee, but she would never leave her small-town life to be with him. Plus, he was starting a relationship with Amelia. We'll have to wait to see if they'll let us in the group. Kat switched over to her email and smiled at him. Look, I got a response from my ho-ho guy. Damien scanned the message. Dear Miss Filipina, I do want to comply with you, however, I live in an area where it is hard to purchase some items. We do not have packages of ho-hos where I am from. But, I can assure you, I am not the kind of person to take advantage of others. Please send the thousand dollars right away, so I can send you the inheritance money and you can live happily on the seven million U.S. dollars. Dr. Young. Cat flexed her fingers then began her response. Dear Dr. Young, I am quite sad to inform you that I have already spent my thousand dollars after having a lovely conversation with Princess Ding Dong. However, I do expect to get a large sum of money soon, so there's still time to send me that photo. As I'm sure you are a busy man, I have searched far and wide, and I have found a website where you can buy a box of ho-hos. Here's the link to Amazon. If you have the box rushed to you, we might be able to complete this transaction soon. Have a wonderful day, Miss Filipina. Cat added a link to the email and sent it off. Do you really think he'll buy a box of ho-hos from Amazon? Yes. I don't know. I'm guessing he'll just try to convince you to send him the money. Cat opened a folder on her computer and images popped up. She clicked on one and it enlarged. A balding man stood there with a banana on his head. Damien tried not to laugh. You got him to do that? Yep. Here's another. She clicked and a second photo opened. This time, a man had a hundred grand bar stuck on his lip like a mustache. That's hilarious. How did you get him to do that? And did he have to buy that on Amazon? Yep. I sent him the link and he ordered it. Cat's grin was mischievous. They bend over backwards when they think they'll get money out of you. That's kind of mean, though. Mean? They scam little old ladies out of money. I read about a scammer who brings in $60,000 a month. 60000 a month. That's mostly retirement money from innocent people. There's no real way to catch them. The police over there don't do anything about it, so I fight back this way. I'm just wasting their time so they're not draining some old lady's bank account. I suppose you're right. Besides, I try to donate to children over there when I can. I know there are starving kids in Africa. Damien's heart constricted. She barely scraped by. It was really kind of her to do that. That's really thoughtful. He decided to look into the charities that fed children over there and donate a large sum when he got back to New York. The conversation stalled and Damien's thoughts went back to his father. What would he do if his father had a child with Lydia? He would have a sibling he'd never met. Anxious energy filled Damien, and he stood. Sorry, I can't stop thinking about Lydia. Cat clicked on Facebook. Sorry, they haven't let me in the group yet. That's okay. Maybe I just need to go confront Lydia and let her know my suspicions. Cat bit her lip. I, I don't know if that's a good idea. If Lydia's been keeping this a secret, she might wig out on you. Maybe. Hillary came into the room. She looked like she'd put herself together. She was wearing jeans and a sweater. She stuck a plate of cookies in front of him. Here, try these. Are they any good? The cookies were dark brown, and he couldn't tell if they were burnt or just had too much cocoa in them. Damien glanced at Cat. Go ahead. Usually I don't regret being her test rabbit. Just make sure there are no ghost peppers in them. Damien raised his eyebrows at Hillary, but she just laughed and shoved the plate at him again. Try one. He picked up a cookie and bit into it. Despite how it looked, it tasted delicious, 
more like a dark chocolate delicacy. This is good. A smile spread across Hillary's face. Thanks. He picked up a second one. But I might have to test another one, just in case. Hillary laughed, and Cat made a groaning noise. Then Cat kicked his foot. Hey, come look, we're in. Chapter 13 For some odd reason, Cat's nerves were in a jumble as she typed in Lydia's name to search the group for posts. Only one came up. It was from a couple of years ago. My son won't stop talking about the new Transformers movie, but he gets scared easily. Is it appropriate for young children? Damien let out a breath of air. Well then, it can't be my father's child. He bought the newspaper almost 30 years ago. Sounds like her kid is still in grade school. Cat chewed on her thumbnail. There was something off about the situation, but she couldn't quite pinpoint it. Yeah, I guess. Then it must be something totally different. Damien smiled at her, obviously relieved that his father hadn't had an affair. Maybe he just liked this town. Sure, maybe. The words came out, but Cat knew that wasn't it. He'd said his mother got really upset when she found out where he was. The simple answer wasn't going to work, but she didn't want to make him anxious again, so she let it slide. Are you coming to the fundraiser this afternoon? Hillary asked. Cat shot her sister a warning glance. I don't think Damien wants to hang around an old folks' home. Damien pointed to the plate Hillary held. If you're bringing these, I'm there. And brownies and cupcakes, too. It's an auction to fund the activities at the center. Hillary seemed pleased he liked her baking. She rocked back on her heels and grinned. Then I'll make sure I'm the highest bidder. Cat had had enough of their flirting. She hopped off the couch. Okay, sounds good. We'd better get some lunch going then if we want to be on time. Already on it, Hillary said, turning toward the kitchen. I've got stuffed chicken in the oven. Should be ready soon. Damien looked like he wanted to kiss Hillary. Cat wanted to gag. Great then, she set her laptop down on the couch. I guess I'll get the table set. I'll help. Damien followed her into the dining room. Cat grabbed a rag from the kitchen and started wiping down the table. You don't have to flirt with her to get food, she muttered. She'll feed you anyway. Damien folded his arms across his chest. I wasn't flirting. Cat scrubbed at a spot on the wooden surface, the force making the table wobble and the dishes in the china cabinet clink together. Right. Damien chuckled. Are you jealous? Ha! Right. Why would I be jealous? Cat's arm started to hurt as she continued to scrub. What was that spot anyway? A blob of superglue? Why wasn't it coming off? And what a ridiculous notion that she was jealous. So off base, it wasn't even funny. You're going to scrub a hole in the table? She turned to glare at him, and his smug smile made her want to smack him. She straightened and tossed the rag at him, maybe a little more forcefully than she'd planned. Fine, you clean it off. I'll get the plates. Jealous. That was the stupidest thing she'd heard all year. She opened the cupboard and grabbed three plates. What did he think, she was crushing on him? She stormed into the dining room and set the plates down. Just because you are rich and handsome doesn't mean every girl is going to go all nuts for you. You think I'm handsome? He raised one eyebrow. Heat flamed in her cheeks. Had she just admitted that? How stupid. You're impossible, she said to cover her embarrassment. She turned back and went into the kitchen. As she gathered the silverware, Hillary came in and opened the oven to check on the chicken. What's got you all hot under the collar? Nothing. She didn't mean to shout, and she clamped her mouth shut. I mean, man, he's so infuriating. Her sister raised an eyebrow at her. Uh-huh. Cat rushed back into the dining room. Unfortunately, Damien was headed toward the kitchen, and she ran right into his solid chest. Whoa, he said, grabbing her around the middle so she didn't fall. I didn't mean to make you so upset. I was just kidding. His strong arms around her made her knees weak. She looked up at him. His eyes held a hint of humor and something else she wasn't sure about. He gazed at her, and the memory of the kiss they'd shared surfaced. 
that toe-curling, amazing kiss. Why was he so good-looking? And why was he just staring at her, that goofy expression on his face? His cologne made her insides quiver. What was that smell? Hot, rich guy? Where do you even buy a scent like that? He leaned closer and her heart raced. Was he going to kiss her? What would her sister say if she caught them kissing? Seriously, he said, his face sobering. I'm sorry. He let her go and took a step back. Cat just stood there, gripping the silverware in one hand, her heart pumping so fast she got lightheaded. Words. She needed to say words. Um, that's okay, I overreacted. Now she felt foolish. She set the silverware in place and went to get napkins. Why was she having such trouble around him? She was losing her mind. As she sat across from him at the table, she realized what it was. It was that stupid kiss at the top of the Ferris wheel. Dumb. She lost her head over it and hadn't quite grounded herself from it. He didn't mean it as a real kiss. Why was she going all stupid over it? Damien's gaze connected with hers across the table. So, your sister cooks. What about you? He sawed into the chicken on his plate. Cat shrugged, then shot him a cheesy grin. I know all the good takeout places. Damien raised his eyebrow. Both of them? Ha ha, funny. Cat didn't want to admit there were only three fast food chains in Pleasant Hollow. I cook too, I just don't enjoy it as much as Hillary. Yeah, he said, turning to her sister. I heard you want to go to culinary school. I'd love to. Hillary smiled. But that's just a dream. She looked down at her plate and stabbed at a green bean. Cat's heart went out to her. There was nothing her sister would love to do more. If only she was making more at work, she could help her sister realize her dream. But even if she made reporter, there wouldn't be enough to pay all the bills, keep her mother in the facility, and pay for culinary school. A dream that you could make happen. Damien ate a bite of the chicken and made a face like he was eating a piece of heaven. And you'd be very successful. This is delicious. Hillary blushed. Thanks. She didn't lift her gaze. Cat grew annoyed at Damien. He didn't know their situation. She'd tried to tell him about their mother, but he didn't understand the money it drained from both of them. And his solution would be to move to a big city and get a higher-paying job. But they couldn't leave their mother sitting in a room in Pleasant Hollow Senior Center like a forgotten piece of furniture. She was their flesh and blood, even if she didn't remember it anymore. Cat cleared her throat, ready to change the subject. Where did you go to school, Damien? Stanford. Business? Damien looked like he was trying to figure her out, as if he wasn't sure why she was suddenly asking about his schooling. Yes. Did you always know you were going to take over Warren Industries? It's been the plan ever since I was born. Cat picked up her water glass. And you enjoy it? He stared at her, his gaze boring into her. Of course. You never tire of it. Seems like a boring life, just working all the time. He flinched a little before Hillary interrupted. I'm sure he does other things with his time, Cat. She raised an eyebrow at him. He told me last night he likes to concentrate on work at the office and at home. As soon as the words left her mouth, she felt guilty. Why was she badgering him like that? What time does the fundraiser start? Damien continued to stare at Cat, even though the question was directed at Hillary. Two o'clock, Hillary said, her gaze ping-ponging back and forth between them. We'd best hurry, then. Damien finally broke his gaze, digging into his lunch. Cat welcomed the silence as they ate. She had no idea why she was sparring with him. She needed to stop acting like a stupid teenager. After they cleaned up, Damien helped her and Hillary bring all the baked goods to the car. They traveled to the facility in silence. When they got to the Pleasant Hollow Senior Center, Cat brought in four plates of cookies while Damien held the door for her. She and Damien helped set up the tables for the baked goods. When everything was set up, Damien folded his arms and studied her. Can I meet your mother? Conflicting feelings surged in Cat. She loved her mother, but it was always difficult to visit her. 
she wasn't sure what kind of a day she was having. And why did Damien care anyway? After considering it, she decided it would be okay to take him down there for a minute. So she nodded. All right. Cat walked down the hallway to room 132, Damien beside her. She knocked lightly on the door before letting herself in. Mom? Her mother sat in her floral chair by the window. She turned to look at Cat. Who are you looking for, dear? I'm afraid it's just me in here. Cat's heart sank. The days when her mother would recognize her were growing farther apart. Mom, I want you to meet someone. This is Damien Warren. He owns the newspaper. Damien, this is my mother, Annabella Fox. Damien stepped forward and extended his hand. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Fox. Her mother's eyes lit up as she shook his hand. Oh, aren't you handsome? Cat wanted to crawl under the bed. Mom? Damien just chuckled. You look lovely today, Mrs. Fox. Her mother patted the back of her hair. Besides a few gray strands, it was still dark brown, making her mother look young. Thank you. Are you here to fix the sink? It's been acting up today. Damien glanced toward the bathroom. Oh, uh, no, I'm afraid not. Her sink is fine, Cat whispered. Aloud, she said, Damien's here to help with the fundraiser. Oh, the fundraiser, her mother said, obviously not knowing what that meant. Her gaze traveled around the room. I, I forgot about that. It's okay, Mom. They'll have games later today. I know you like the games. I do. She smoothed out her house dress. Who are you again? I'm Cat, Mom. Her voice betrayed her emotion as it cracked. How was breakfast? It was nice. I ate a cinnamon roll. I always like those. Yes. I know you do. Cat swallowed the lump in her throat. Her mother smiled, an empty look in her eyes. Uh, who did you say you were looking for again? I'm afraid she's not here right now. Unwanted tears swelled in Cat's eyes. She blinked them back. That's okay. I have to go now. Cat leaned over and kissed her mother's cheek. See you next week. As she walked out, she wiped at her tear, hoping Damien hadn't noticed. He didn't say anything, but he did put his hand on her shoulder. It was a comforting gesture. Chapter 14 Damien's heart swelled for Cat as they left her mother's room. It was hard on her seeing her mother unable to remember her. That much was obvious. And Cat's mother was so young, which had to hurt even worse. Cat swiped at her cheek, her eyes forward, her jaw clenched. Damien leaned closer. Do you want to talk about it? Cat shook her head. Not really. Then let's go bid on some dessert. He squeezed her shoulder and dropped his hand. If there was one thing he knew how to do, it was attending a fundraiser. His world was full of them. They entered the large room and walked by the plates of delicious items. It looked like a good turnout. The room was crowded and more people were coming in. Half the town must have shown up. Cat pointed. The desserts on this table are set up for a silent auction. The rest they'll auction off live in a few minutes. Damien spied a plate of Hillary's dark chocolate cookies and headed toward them. Perfect. I'll bid on these. He leaned over and wrote a figure on the paper. Cat gasped. A thousand dollars? She whispered. Are you? Crazy. I want to make sure I win them. Well, a hundred would have done it. I'm sure they can use the money. Damien slid his hands into his pockets. Cat seemed to appraise him with her gaze. You're right. Thanks for giving to the center. He bid on a few more items before they chose two empty chairs to sit on and wait for the auction to start. Damien found himself thinking about Cat as people filed into the room. She was a strong woman. Yet there was a part of her that was tender. He could see it in her eyes. She cared about others. He liked that about her. She was also spunky and witty. She liked to have fun. And surprisingly, he enjoyed being with her. Before thinking about it, he reached over and patted her leg. 
The gesture felt intimate, and he grew self-conscious. He shouldn't be connecting with her like that. He withdrew his hand. Cat leaned over to him. That's Jerry. He's the center's director. She gestured toward an older gentleman. His white hair looked like he'd tried to tame it, but it rebelled and stuck up anyway. He had a plump figure, and his smile was wide and genuine. Jerry picked up a microphone and tapped on it. I'd like to welcome you all to our auction today. Like a cow walking through tall grass, I'm utterly tickled to be here. Damien chuckled as the crowd responded with laughter. He liked this guy. First of all, let's give a hand to everyone who brought in such wonderful desserts. Jerry motioned to the crowd as most people attending had brought something in. The room erupted in applause. When the noise died down, Jerry pointed to the first item. First up for auction is a lovely pineapple upside-down cake made by my wife, Sarah. If you've never eaten anything made by Sarah, you're missing out. A man doesn't get to be my size by accident, you know. He patted his belly. Damien waited until Hillary's plate of cupcakes were up for auction before bidding. She'd frosted them to look like snowmen. He raised his hand to start it at five dollars. A woman across the room bid six. It went back and forth a few times, the woman giving him stares over the glasses perched on her nose as he jumped the price up a few times. Cat poked him. That's Mrs. Boeing, she whispered. She's the mayor's wife. Let her have them. They look good. I want them. Cat let out a scoff. You're so stubborn. Just let her have them. A tiny twitch on her lips told him she was enjoying the back and forth. He grinned. No. Mrs. Boeing raised her hand. Fifty dollars. Jerry's smile widened. Well, it looks like this plate will go to one hundred dollars, Damien said. He couldn't help himself. The crowd took in a collective breath. Mrs. Boeing postured. She adjusted her fur hat. Two hundred dollars. Several people made ooing noises, and everyone's eyes rested on him. Damien was up for the challenge. Two thousand dollars. Cat sunk into her chair and put her hand up to shield her face. You had to do that, didn't you? She mumbled. Mrs. Boeing smiled, although a little tightly. You may have them, Mr. Warren. Jerry seemed frozen at the front of the room. At Mrs. Boeing's statement, he held up the plate. Well, thank you, Mr. Warren. Looks like you bought yourself these delicious treats. And your contribution will help fund many wonderful activities here at the center. Let's give Mr. Warren a round of applause. The room filled with noise as people clapped and whistled. Cat seemed to want to disappear into the floor. When they went on to another item, he leaned toward her. Sorry if I embarrassed you. Seems to be a regular occurrence around you, she said under her breath. She poked him in the side and he wasn't expecting it, so he let out a yelp. A five-dollar bid from Mr. Warren, Jerry said. Do I hear six? Cat dissolved into a fit of giggles and sunk lower in her chair. You get any lower and you'll have to sit on the floor, he whispered. She stuck out her tongue at him. He chuckled and went back to paying attention to Jerry. After the auction, he went to the front of the room to pay for his goods. The total came to $3,600. Jerry shook his hand enthusiastically. Thank you for coming today, Mr. Warren. The residents here will really enjoy this upcoming year. You've done a great thing. Mrs. Boeing tossed her nose in the air. Damien held out the plate of cupcakes to her. Mrs. Boeing, I bought these for you. Mrs. Boeing's mouth dropped. Well, thank you, Mr. Warren. She took the plate before walking out the door. Cat helped him get the rest of the desserts into the car. Hillary joined them. I can't believe you bid so much on those cupcakes. It's going to a good cause. Cat tossed him a look. I think you were just showing off. Hillary climbed into the back seat but didn't shut the door. I'm honored that my cupcakes were fought over so viciously. Damien climbed into the front seat and Cat drove everyone home. After getting the desserts inside and onto the kitchen counter, Hillary turned to them. Well, I'm beat. I'm going to take a nap, 
She and Kat exchanged a look, and he wasn't sure what it meant. After she left, he asked, What was all that about? Kat leaned on the counter. Nothing. It's stupid. What? He tried to lift the wrap so he could steal one of the cookies. Kat swatted at his hand. Seriously? It's almost dinner time. No sneaking cookies. You're deflecting, he said, his gaze capturing hers. She blushed and looked down at the counter. My sister thinks you like me. He wanted to laugh it off, but something made him stay serious. He was curious about her. He wanted to know what Cat felt about him. I do like you. She rolled her eyes. Not like. She thinks you like like me. She shook her head. Now I sound like I'm in sixth grade. Just ignore Hillary. She doesn't know what she's talking about. He played with the edge of the plastic wrap. Maybe I do like like you. He lifted the wrapping and stole a cookie. He had it halfway to his mouth before Cat realized it. Hey! She started after him, but he anticipated it and ran into the living room. He was taller than her and he held the cookie up so high she couldn't reach it. Give me that! she said as she jumped to try to get the cookie from him. She managed to snatch it away from him, and he grabbed her around the middle, pulling her close so she couldn't take off with it. She squirmed, but his hold on her was too tight. Let me go, she said, her smile betraying her. Unlikely. Fine, then suffer the consequences. She stuffed the cookie into her mouth. What happened to it's almost dinner time, he said trying but failing to hold back a laugh. She chewed for a second before swallowing. It was instinct. Sorry. She gave him a wide grin. He suddenly became aware of how close she was. Her face was inches from his. He could feel her cookie-stealing breath on his cheek. She felt good in his arms, like she belonged there. His thumb grazed across her side where her sweater had exposed a tiny slice of skin, and his heart pounded. She sobered, and he gazed into her eyes. They looked like the surface of the ocean on a calm day. Did you mean it? she said, quietly. And that was when he realized what he'd said, what he was doing. He couldn't flirt with Cat. He couldn't like like her either. Things between them would never work, for so many reasons. He couldn't tell her he was beginning to have feelings for her. He was there to do one thing, close the newspaper down, and, if he did, she would hate him. He released her and took a step back. He had to get out of this without hurting her feelings. What's not to like, he said, forcing his voice back to being lighthearted. He punched her shoulder like a buddy would do, then he walked back into the kitchen to steal another cookie. Cat didn't follow him. Chapter 15 Cat stood in the living room, her heart pounding. What had just happened? Damien had flirted with her. He'd almost come out and said he liked her as more than just a friend. But then he'd cooled and shut down. Why? She didn't understand, but her emotions couldn't handle any more Damien today. She took a deep breath and steeled herself. Then she walked into the kitchen. We should put your desserts in your car so you can take them to your hotel. I'm sure you have things to do. Damien looked at her, his gaze intense for a moment before he broke the connection and stepped toward his coat. He picked it up and slipped it on. You keep them. Are you sure? He eyeballed the cheesecake. Maybe I'll take this one. He picked it up, a small smile on his face. Okay. She tried not to look at him, but her body wouldn't cooperate with her, and his dark gaze met hers. Neither one of them spoke for a moment, but the mood in the kitchen shifted, deepened. He swallowed. She could see the indecision on his face, and then he steeled himself, and she knew what was coming. Cat, I... Don't, she turned from him. You don't have to say anything. I understand. She was playing coffee, and she knew it. He stood there for another moment before turning and walking out the door. Her hands trembled as she stood there waiting to hear his car pull away. 
Why was she going all schoolgirl crazy for him? He was not available. Not really. He was leaving and not coming back. And her life was here, in Pleasant Hollow. She stood there for a long time, listening to the clock ticking on the wall. Her sister walked in and stopped short. Did Damien leave? Yes. A perplexed look crossed her face. Why? Because I'm plain coffee, and we both know it. In a spontaneous move, she grabbed her car keys. I've got something I've got to do. I'll see you later. But... Kat didn't wait for Hillary to finish. She grabbed her coat and left. She had to go see Lydia. The sooner she could find out answers, the sooner he'd leave and she could get on with life. She knew Lydia lived outside of town, but she wasn't sure which house, so she pulled out her phone and looked up the address before she started her car. Soon she was on the highway. As her GPS led her to a small white farmhouse, she crossed her fingers. It was a big risk, but if things went down the way she suspected, she'd be out of a job soon anyway. The tires of her car crunched on the snow packed on the gravel driveway. She slowed and stopped in front of the house. The front walkway was neatly shoveled, a vinyl snowman on the front door. A festive wreath hung on the siding. Kat shook off her nerves and walked to the front door. She pressed the bell before she could change her mind and leave. A moment passed before the door opened. A man stood behind the screen door, and Kat knew immediately who it was. His jet-black hair and dark eyes looked just like Damien. But that was where the similarities stopped. His almond eyes, flat bridge, and small stature told her why Lydia was asking about a children's movie. He had Down syndrome. She cleared her throat. She had to follow through with this. Is Lydia home? He nodded, a smile stretched across his face. He turned and yelled, Mom! Lydia came to the door. Her face paled when she saw Kat. She turned to her son. Wes, go finish with your project. Wes nodded and disappeared into the house. Lydia stared at Kat. Catherine, what are you doing here? I need to talk to you. Kat stuffed her hands in her pockets and crossed her fingers. There's nothing to be said. Surprise, surprise, Lydia didn't want to talk. But this wasn't going to go away. Kat took in a breath. Well, you can talk to me, or I can tell Damien what I suspect, which might not be accurate. You're not going to tell him anything. Yes, I am. But what I say depends on you. Lydia clenched her jaw a few times. Then she nodded and opened the screen door. All right. Come in. Lydia led her into a small living room. She motioned to a chair. Sit. Cat did as she was told. Lydia sat on the love seat and rubbed her temples. What do you want to know? Is that Damien's half brother? She paused, then said, Yes. You had an affair with Damien's father. Even though it wasn't a question, Lydia answered anyway. Yes. And Damien has no idea? Lydia blew out her breath. She looked tired. When did she get all those wrinkles on her face? She looked ten years older. Right, she admitted. Lawrence didn't want Damien to know. How did you meet Damien's father? Lydia's gaze snapped up to meet hers. We met in Green Bay. He was there on business and I was living there at the time. You have to understand, Lawrence had separated from his wife. He thought their marriage was over. It wasn't until we were involved that his wife wanted to reconcile. But by then, I was pregnant. How old was Damien? He was just a little boy. Two, maybe three years old. Too young to know what was going on with his parents. So Lawrence bought the newspaper to give you a source of income? Lydia nodded. It was my idea. Lawrence wanted to make things work between us, but I knew he needed to go back to New York. I was feeling guilty for what we'd done. I didn't want to break up his marriage. I found the newspaper for sale and moved here so I could run it. And hide your son. The words tasted sour on Kat's tongue. It wasn't like that. Lydia's lips pinched together, showing her displeasure. Wes required more resources than I had. 
so I hired people to work with him. He needed special care, and he could get it here, at home, in an environment he was familiar with. Cat wasn't about to argue with her, even though she'd never seen a single photo of Lydia's son, nothing on her desk at work, no mention of him, ever. She swallowed. What are you going to tell Damien? Lydia's eyes narrowed. Nothing. He doesn't need to know. He has a brother. That's going to mean something to him. He will not react well to finding out. Our only chance of keeping this newspaper alive is if you make him like Pleasant Hollow and the people here. How did things go yesterday? Lydia was back to being the boss, her critical gaze on Cat. Cat thought about the day with Damien, the kiss, her cheeks heated. Things went well. Lydia studied her. Cat grew warm under the scrutiny. Then a slow smile formed on Lydia's face. You like him. Perfect. Just what she needed. Lydia concocting something up between them. He's arrogant. Don't try to deny it. I see it on your face. What happened between you two? Nothing. The word was out before she could think. Then why are you blushing? Dang. She was a much better liar through email. No one could see her face then. Okay, maybe something small is going on. But I really don't think he cares that much about me. We need him to. Where is he now? At the hotel. Lydia frowned. Then take him out tonight. Her gut twisted. What exactly are you asking me to do? Nothing. Just spend time with him. Make sure he likes you. Lydia stood and Cat knew the talk was over. She walked to the front door. Keeping his brother from Damien is not a good idea, Cat blurted out. That's not for you to decide. Lydia practically shoved Cat out onto the porch. I know you'll do what's best for everyone. You know we need this. I'll see you at work tomorrow. Okay, Cat said as the door shut in her face. She shrunk into her coat and walked to her car, a bad feeling spreading in her chest. This wasn't a good idea. She couldn't go running back to Damien now, not after the awkwardness of this afternoon. And how was she supposed to keep such a big secret from Damien? She didn't feel right about it. He should know about his blood relative. She cranked the ignition and backed out of the driveway. But Lydia was right. If Damien found out, it would solve the mystery and he would close the newspaper for sure. No matter what she did, she'd be in trouble. She was so dead. Chapter 16 Damien's phone chimed as he stepped out into the hallway with his ice bucket. He looked at the screen. What was his CFO doing calling him on a Sunday evening? He quickly answered. Chuck, what's up? Sorry to bother you. I just got wind of something, so I thought I'd call and let you know. What is it? Consolidated Tech is making a play for IMB. I've been trying to handle things, but it looks like IMB is going to make their decisions soon, and I'm not sure we're in the lead. Damien gripped the phone tight. Are you kidding me? We need IMB. I know. Things spiraled out of control on Friday. I should have called sooner. I need you here to run the negotiations. Damien held in a swear word. He shouldn't have left town. He knew things weren't in the bag with IMB. How long can you hold things off? I can't leave right away. I might be able to stretch things out a day. Can you make it back by Tuesday? I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Chuck. No problem. Damien hung up and stuck the ice bucket in the machine. He had to finish up his business here and quickly. If they lost the IMB deal, they'd lose out on potentially millions of dollars. He couldn't waste any more time on this stupid newspaper. Maybe if he confronted Lydia, he'd get the answers he needed. He'd go to her office first thing in the morning and make her talk. And if she didn't know anything, he'd pull the plug and go back to New York. He walked back to his room and set down the bucket of ice. His thoughts wandered back to Cat. Why had he been so flirty with her earlier? He'd messed things up big time. Yes, she was original and beautiful, and he couldn't stop thinking about her. But that's where it had to end. Amelia was in New York. Amelia was in his social class. He liked her, 
She was who he should be thinking about. He picked up his phone and dialed Amelia's number. She answered on the second ring. Hello? Amelia, I'm glad you picked up. Is this a bad time, or can you talk? I can talk. Good. Damien took off his shoes and sat down on his bed. I'm having a dilemma, and I thought talking it out would help. Go ahead. Something's come up at work, and I have to go back to New York, but I haven't gotten the information I need from here yet. I want to know why this small-town newspaper was on the books, but it's not worth the risk of losing the business deal in New York. Maybe you should go back to New York and leave the newspaper on your books for a while. It's not hurting anything, is it? No, but I want to resolve this while I'm here. It would just be easier. Damien stretched out on the bed. Amelia sat silent for a moment. Maybe it's best if you don't resolve it, she said, her voice low. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just being selfish, I guess. You should do what you feel is right. Selfish? What was she talking about? I'm not sure what's right. I don't have all the information I need to make an informed decision. Amelia let out a breath. Have you gotten to know the people who work at the newspaper? Only one, but she's just the secretary. Ouch, Damien, you sound like such a snob right now. Damien pulled the phone away from his ear to look at it. He called Amelia, right? I'm not a snob. I'm a realist. The secretary is a nice woman, but that's not any reason to keep a struggling business on the books. Well, then, shut the place down and go back to New York. The phone silenced and Damien looked at the screen again. Amelia had hung up. What was that all about? He was so confused. Amelia sounded upset about it, but she had no skin in the game. Unless, since she was from a small town, she didn't like the idea of him shutting down a small town business. Maybe that was it. He made himself look like a jerk to her. Nice one. He drew in a deep breath and let it out slowly. He was not good at this relationship thing. Maybe he should just accept the fact that he was going to be single the rest of his life. He picked up his phone and called the local pizza hut. It wasn't Hillary's cooking, but he'd messed things up with Kat as well, and he probably wouldn't be invited back over to her place again. He rattled off what he wanted, then hung up and sat down on the bed. His shoulders hunched. For some reason, he felt defeated. Nothing had worked the way he'd planned, and now he had to leave with things unresolved. Kat paced her bedroom floor. How could she have done that? She let her emotions dictate her actions, and that never worked out well for her. Now Damien would for sure guess who Amelia really was, and she'd lose her inside edge. Not that there was much edge anymore. It was clear what he was going to do. He'd close the newspaper down tomorrow, whether he found out the truth or not. She was going to be out of a job either way. Her sister came in the room. What is wrong? You're stomping around, making the walls shake. Cat flopped down onto her bed. I screwed everything up. How so? Hillary sat beside her. I yelled at Damien on the phone. I think I blew my cover. Wait, your Amelia cover? Yeah, stupid. Hillary patted Cat's leg. So he knows it was you? How mad was he? Cat grabbed a pillow and hugged it to her chest. I don't know for sure that he knows. I just yelled at him, then hung up. Maybe he hasn't figured it out yet. Then don't get all upset until you know for sure. Cat groaned. Lydia wants me to go out with him again tonight. She wants me to make him like me. Hillary raised an eyebrow at her. Seriously? You don't know that the guy already has a thing for you? Right. Her sister was crazy. Stop it. He does not. Hillary huffed and stood from the bed. If it's one thing I know, it's when a man is interested. And that man has been interested in you from the start. If you don't see it, you're just blind because you're so into him as well. Just be honest with yourself. She turned and walked out of the room, leaving only her perfume. Cat laid back on the bed and sighed. Why did this have to be so complicated? Hillary was right. If she were honest with herself, she had to admit she liked the guy. A little too much, actually. And he was probably leaving tomorrow. Cat scrambled to stand up. Maybe she should go talk to him. She wasn't sure what tomorrow would bring. 
She pulled on her coat and yelled to Hillary as she neared the door. I'm leaving. Go get him, her sister yelled back. Yeah, that wasn't what she was doing at all. She was just going to talk to him. Maybe spill the beans about his brother. She was going to see him because he deserved to know the truth, not because she had a thing for him. The drive to the hotel didn't take long, and before she knew it, she was at the front desk. Peter Whitmore sat behind the desk. He was a few years older than her, but she'd known him growing up. She slapped the desk and grinned. Hey, Pete, how's it going? Pete looked up from the book he was reading. Fine, quiet as usual. Then he got a funny look on his face. You don't need a room, do you? Nope. I'm looking for my boss, Damien Warren. Can you tell me what room he's in? Pete tugged on his tie. Well, I'm not supposed to give out that kind of information. I could get in trouble. Cat gave him a sweet smile. I won't let anyone know. The front doors opened, and a man in a Pizza Hut shirt walked in. He hurried past. Cat watched him disappear around the corner, then she looked at Pete. You know, never mind. Maybe I'll just call him or something. She tossed Pete another innocent smile and then walked toward the door. When Pete looked down, she turned and followed the pizza guy down the hallway. He stopped at a room and knocked, and Cat flattened herself against a recessed door and peeked around the edge. It was Damien's room, all right. She could hear his deep voice as he spoke to the pizza guy. The kid waited for his money, then hurried back down the hallway, not paying attention to her. Her heart pounded as she snuck down the hallway. What was she doing? This was crazy. What was she even going to say to him? She stood at the door for a stupidly long time before getting up the nerve to knock. Panic shot through her. If she ran down the hall, would she make it to the corner before he opened the door? Too late. Door opened and Damien stood there, staring at her. Cat, what are you doing here? She bit her lip. I was just wondering the same thing myself. Chapter 17 Damien wasn't sure why Cat was standing at his hotel door, but he stepped back and motioned for her to come in. He swallowed hard as she walked by. What did she do? She looked even hotter somehow, even though she wore the same red sweater from earlier. Cat turned to him, her hands stuffed into her coat pockets. Look, I, I don't know if this was a good idea. I just felt like I should come talk to you. Curious, he sat down on the chair. Okay, let's talk. He pointed to the pizza. Want a slice? Cat gave him a sheepish grin. Actually, I'm starving. She slipped off her coat and sat on the end of the bed. He picked up the box and held it out to her. Have as much as you'd like. She picked up a piece and bit into the end. Cheese strung out until she lifted the piece and bit it again. Mmm, this is good. I love olives and pepperoni. Sorry there's not another chair. This hotel room is... He couldn't think of a flattering word, so he said, small. Cat waved away his concern. I don't mind. She took another bite of her pizza. They were silent for a few minutes as they ate. Damien wondered if Cat was there to talk about the awkwardness between them. What would she say about it? He thought she'd wanted to ignore it. When they were done eating, Cat cleared her throat. I don't know how to say this, so I'm just going to come out with it. All right. He leaned forward. Your father did have an affair with Lydia years ago. She took in a deep breath and exhaled. The news didn't surprise him by the way his mother had reacted. He was disappointed in his father, especially since keeping the newspaper probably meant he continued to carry a torch for her through all the years, but he couldn't say he hadn't been thinking that was it all along. You found this out how? I confronted Lydia. Damien steepled his fingers and nodded. I see. And there's more. Cat's gaze dropped. You have a brother. I thought Lydia's son was too young to be. No, he's not. Cat fiddled with the bedspread. He's got Down syndrome. 
That's why Lydia was asking about the content of the film. Damien let her words sink in. So, it was as he'd suspected. His father had done the cowardly thing, hiding his affair and setting it up so his mistress and child could have an income, but not take away from his billion-dollar corporation. He swiped his hand through his hair. I should have known. He was a selfish man to the day he died. Frustration and guilt welled in Damien, and he stood and crossed the room to the window. He knew his father had been fighting his own inner demons. He knew he shouldn't think of him as selfish and weak. He just couldn't help it. Damien struggled to keep his breathing even. I'm sorry, Kat said, her voice sounding small. I thought you should know. Damien clenched his jaw. He touched the cold surface of the glass with his fingertips. My father was not who the world thought he was. He made a mistake. Damien rounded on Cat. No, this was not some mistake. He spat out the word. It was a calculation. A way to get out of taking responsibility. Just like... Damien stopped before he said too much. Cat stood and walked to him. She put her hand on his shoulder. Like what? Damien sighed. It didn't matter if he told her. Who was she going to tell? She lived in the middle of nowhere. He scrubbed his hand over his face. My father didn't die of cancer last year. He committed suicide. His throat constricted. Cat sucked in a breath. Oh, no. That's terrible. Pain stabbed through him as the memories from last year flashed through his mind. The awful way he had to lie to the public to cover up what his father had done and to make the company look good. The way he'd had to act sad when he was consumed with his anger. His father had never really been there for him. And this was his last act of abandonment. The last twist of the knife he stuck in Damien's gut. And all his anger just multiplied his guilt because he knew he shouldn't feel that way about it. Cat put her arms around him and drew him close to her. He buried his face in her hair, swallowing back the emotion threatening to overpower him. He chose the easy way out, Damien whispered. He hadn't ever told anyone how he felt. How could he? He couldn't let anyone know he blamed his father. He was horrible for feeling that way. He was suffering, she whispered. You can't know what he was going through. Yes, she was right. His father had been tortured. The signs of depression had been there, but no one had put it together until it was too late. But knowing his father had been under mental duress made him feel even guiltier for his own anger. There was a time when Damien had wanted to do the same, take the easy way out, but he didn't. He faced his bad decisions head on. He lived through the agony. His father gave up and deserted his family. I know I shouldn't blame him, Damien said. It's just so hard not to feel angry and abandoned. Cat reached up and placed her hands on his face, forcing him to look her in the eyes. He found compassion in her gaze. You're hurting. Those feelings are natural. I understand what you're going through. She blinked back tears. I felt the same way when my mother's condition grew so bad we had to move her to the facility. I was angry. I blamed her. But I knew it wasn't her fault. So then I felt guilty for that anger. Damien nodded. That's exactly how I feel. Cat laid her head on his chest, her arms pulling him to her again. It's okay to be angry. I've learned that you can't change those feelings. You just have to realize they are normal and accept them for what they are, part of the grieving process. Damien swallowed. She was right about all of it. Yes, he whispered. You don't have to feel guilty. You want to know the last thing I said to him? Damien kept going before he couldn't get the words out. I told him I would be glad when he was dead. He clenched his fists into her hair emotion choking him. Who says that? Damien. He pulled away from her, his loathing for himself too strong. He turned, unable to face her. I don't deserve your sympathy. 
Cat reached for him, taking his shoulders and forcing him to look at her. We all say things we regret. You had no idea what was going to happen. He broke her gaze. It's not only that. If you knew what I'd done, what my father couldn't forgive me for. He stopped, his pain too great to go on. You're a good person, no matter what happened. The urge to tell her grew in him. She should know who he really was. My accident. I was drag racing. It was stupid and illegal, but I was an angry young man. I, my best friend, died that day. And it was my fault. Cat shook her head. It wasn't. You didn't crash on purpose. No, but I disobeyed my father. I made a stupid decision. And my best friend paid for it with his life. He exhaled, a great weight lifting from his shoulders. He'd never talked about that day to anyone. People make mistakes. Cat wrapped her arms around him. No one is above that. You had a terrible experience, but it's made you stronger. Damien swallowed. Sweet Catherine. Of course she would dismiss the ugly side of him. He ran his thumb down her cheek and she closed her eyes. He cupped her face. You have a tender heart, he whispered. Before he could stop himself, he pressed his lips to hers. Her lips parted and an energy surged through him. Cat saw past his weaknesses. He let her see inside of him and she hadn't backed away. She'd accepted him. He wrapped his arms around her, pulling her to him. His lips moved against hers, the kiss growing intense. A hunger for her flowed through him. She suddenly pushed away from him, breaking the contact. She shook her head. No, Cat said under her breath, her hand flying to her lips. Her rejection stung. He turned away from her, clenching his hands into fists. Right, sorry, I got carried away, I guess. Look, I, I didn't mean... I know. He understood. She didn't feel that way about him. And he shouldn't feel that way about her, either. He was just emotional from talking about his father and what happened to Luke. Connecting like that with her made him forget who he was for a moment. He needed to get a grip. Cat walked to the bed and pulled on her coat. I should go. A sudden urge for her to stay spiked, and he held out his hand. Please don't. I, I don't want you to. Wow, how lame did that sound? Desperate much? He almost took it back, but Cat nodded and stopped moving toward the door. She looked around the small hotel room. An awkwardness settled in. Do you want to go for a drive? Cat asked. Where would we go? The town was 16 blocks. It would be a quick drive. New Haven's only 30 minutes away. She paused, then gave him a shy smile. They have a Starbucks. Are you freaking kidding me? He opened the closet and brought out his coat. <laughs> Let's go. He couldn't believe Cat was holding out on him like that. He wanted to throttle her and kiss her at the same time. They left the hotel and paused at Cat's car. He'd been in her passenger seat enough to know how she drove. Let's take my rental. She sighed. Fine. He clicked the key fob and the doors unlocked. Cat slid into the passenger seat. After he started the car, he turned to her. Which direction is New Haven? Just go west on Main Street and keep going. He pulled out of the parking lot. The silence in the car was awkward, and he felt odd after revealing so much of himself. He tapped the steering wheel. Thanks for listening to me in there. I don't know why I felt the urge to share all that with you. I'm not usually like that. Cat played with a large button on her coat. The awkwardness between them hadn't lifted. I didn't mind. I think finding out that I have a brother my father hid from me made me go a little crazy. Cat placed a hand on his leg. You're a good person. I meant it when I said that. You have a good heart. He swallowed and kept his eyes on the road. He didn't want to get all wrapped up in Cat again. She was the kind of girl he could easily fall for. Or maybe he was already falling for her. 
That thought didn't sit well with him. They had no future together. Thanks, he said, keeping his tone light. What are you going to do? About Lydia? He glanced at Kat and she nodded. I don't know yet. Something's come up back home and I really should leave tomorrow, but things here feel unfinished. Kat seemed surprised. I thought maybe you'd close things down once you found out. Mystery solved, end of story. He shook his head. I have a brother I haven't even met. I can't just pretend he doesn't exist like my father did. And I suppose my mother as well, since she seemed to know about it too. He tightened his grip on the steering wheel, unable to fathom how they could do that. Then you're not closing things down? Her voice sounded hopeful. Clarity suddenly hit him, and he realized why Cat had wanted to spend time with him, why she was showing him around the town. This was all about saving her job. His mouth grew dry. Yeah, I'm not shutting it down. Oh, my gosh. I'm so relieved. I thought you were going to destroy the paper and Lydia was going to kill me and then resurrect me and then kill me again. Of course, he should have known. It had to be Lydia's idea all along. So, Lydia put you up to this? To what? He kind of didn't want to know the truth, but his mouth asked anyway. Spending time with me. Well, yeah, she asked me to give you the royal treatment, but I didn't think it was going to do any good. I was sure you were out to... Cat stopped talking and looked at him. What? He forced his gaze to the road. Nothing. She had no interest in him at all. Everything that had happened was her trying to save her job. He tried not to let it bother him. He knew there couldn't be anything more between them anyway. It just added to the rejection he felt after he lost control and kissed her and she stopped him. He wouldn't make that same mistake again. Chapter 18 Kat looked at the menu, trying to decide what she wanted. Damien had already ordered his special latte whatever. She looked at the choices. Finally, she gave up and ordered a tall, medium roast with no cream. Damien made a little scoffing noise, but his eyes held a smile. They got their drinks and sat down at a table by the window. The Starbucks was in the New Haven Mall, if you could call the building that housed the twelve stores a mall. Cat watched as people walked by the windows, getting last-minute Christmas shopping done. Bing Crosby's voice sang out over the speakers. Damien's phone rang, and he looked at the screen. Sorry, I should take this. No problem. Damien put the phone to his ear. Hello, Mother. Cat tried not to eavesdrop, but he was sitting right there at the table. It was impossible not to hear. I'm leaving tomorrow, but we need to talk when I get back to New York. Cat picked up her coffee and stared at a woman walking by, several shopping bags hanging from her elbow. I don't want to talk about it now. I'm with someone. Cat played with the cardboard sleeve on her cup. Yes, she's a woman. Damien sighed and rolled his eyes. No, mother. I'm hanging up now. I'll see you tomorrow when I get back. Yeah, that wasn't awkward at all. Cat took a sip and then set her cup down. So, are you ready for Christmas? Are you done with your shopping? Damien nodded, his gaze not meeting hers. He shifted in his seat. What? You celebrate Christmas, don't you? Mother caters a party on Christmas. I attend. We don't really sit around and open presents, if that's what you mean. Oh. Cat thought about Christmas with her family, how it used to be before her father died. Even with just her and Hillary, they always went to the facility and opened presents with their mother, even though it was sometimes hard. They always managed to have a good time together. But you bought your mother a gift. What did you get her? Damien sat silent for a moment before lifting his gaze to hers. I had my secretary send her a fruit basket. Oh, Damien, that just won't do. Let's go look for something you can get her. Cat picked up her drink and stood. There has to be something here she might like. Damien looked skeptical, but he followed her out into the mall. Cat turned to him. What kinds of things does she like? Expensive things. Well, 
We don't have any fancy hoity-toity stuff here. Let's go into Bath and Body Works. Women like to be pampered. There are nice things in there. Cat practically dragged him into the shop. He looked at the shelves for a few minutes, a picky scowl on his face. Cat wanted to whack him, but she kept her hands to herself. She picked up a tester spray and spritzed the air. This one smells nice. Damien made a face. She's not really the $10 perfume type. Oh, my word, Cat said under her breath. She put the spritzer back and walked to a large display of bath bombs. How about some of these? They're pretty luxurious. Damien picked up one of the large balls wrapped in plastic and looked at it. She only uses lavender and bergamot oils in her bath. He put the bath bomb back on the display. Well, how about some lotion? Does Her Majesty get dry skin? Damien's gaze snapped to hers. Cat covered her mouth. Whoops, did I say that out loud? His lips twitched. Yes, you did. Sorry. She handed him a bottle of lotion. Smell this. Do you think she'd like it? He popped open the lid and stuck it beneath his nose. Not really her smell, but I like the idea of lotion. She does go through a lot of it, and she complains that her hands are always dry. Cat pulled him over to the Christmas scents. Maybe this vanilla one. That is nice, he said after smelling it. I think she'd actually like this one. Okay, we found something. Good. Cat took it to the register. Maybe if you tell me more things about her, we can find something else she might like. Damien frowned as he pulled out his wallet. We're not really that close. A sadness settled over Cat. She'd give anything to have her mother back, her mind working again. It killed her to think of Damien and his mother, such a distance between them. What does she like to do in her spare time? She plans a lot of parties. Cat slowly nodded. Maybe a piece of jewelry, something she can wear to one of her parties. He paid for the lotion and they walked three stores down to the jewelry store. A thin Christmas tree sat in the corner decorated with silver and gold ornaments. A saleswoman came up to them. Are you looking for something in particular? She sized them up. Maybe an engagement ring? Damien coughed and his ears turned pink. No. Cat hid a smile. She could totally have fun with that one. We're just looking. Okay, let me know if you want to try anything on. They walked around the store, peering into the display cases. Cat pointed to a gold necklace with a tree pendant. Oh, I love that one. Look at how the branches twist together. It's the tree of life. Damien scratched his cheek. Not really something my mother would wear. Do you see anything here she'd like? His eyes bounced around the store. Not really. She buys her jewelry from a New York designer. Sorry, I know you're trying to help. All right, that's fine. Is there anyone else you need to buy a present for? No. They walked out of the store. How about you? Do you have any shopping to do? I do need to find something for Fred. He's so hard to shop for. Damien quirked an eyebrow. You buy gifts for your co-workers? He tossed his empty coffee cup into a wastebasket. Yes, just little things. And you don't know what to buy the guy who wears a Doctor Who scarf everywhere? Damien's lips curled up into a smile as he pointed to a store window. A large display of Star Wars, Harry Potter, and Pokemon items stared back at them. You're brilliant! Cat tugged him into the store. What should I get? This TARDIS pencil sharpener is good. Damien picked up a blue thing that said police box and showed it to her. How do you know so much about Doctor Who? My nanny let me watch TV after I got all my homework done. He grinned at her, and she realized she liked his smile. Something about it seemed genuine. I bet your mom didn't like that. Yeah, we didn't tell mother about that. Cat laughed. Good idea. She took the TARDIS from him. I'll get this. I'm sure Fred will love it. She paid for the gift. As they walked the rest of the mall, the crowd started to thin out. It's getting late, she said. I think the mall closes soon. We'd better head back to your car. Damien nodded. Thanks for this. 
I enjoyed it, and not just the coffee. The way he looked at her, his dark eyes intense, made her knees weak. Sure, she said, trying to be lighthearted. They couldn't get serious again. Not when he was leaving tomorrow. Not when there was no chance they would ever have a relationship. She did not want to get all wrapped up in someone she couldn't have. Damien sat at the desk, staring at his laptop screen. He knew he should go to bed, but the need to talk to Amelia surged in him, and he sat looking at the icon that would tell him when she logged on to the single's website. He tapped the desk with a pen. The icon lit up. She had logged in. He quickly sent her a message. Can you talk? What was he doing? He didn't even know Amelia, and the last time they spoke, she seemed upset with him. Why did he even want to talk to her? An answer came back. Yes? Do you mind if I call you? Go ahead. Damien dialed the phone and waited for Amelia to pick up. Hey, sorry it's so late, he said when she answered. Let me know when you want to get off the phone. I'm okay, she said. What did you want to talk about? First, I should apologize for earlier. I didn't mean to upset you. You probably don't like the thought of me closing down the newspaper since you grew up in a small town. But I decided not to close it down, so I think you'll be happy. Good, she paused. And second? Damien ran his hand through his hair. I guess I just wanted to talk. I've had a strange day. But I always seemed to talk about me. How about you? What did you do today? I actually spent the day with a man. That was not what Damien expected to hear. He sat back in the chair. Oh. Amelia sighed and something rustled. But things are complicated. Great. He thought Amelia was looking for a relationship. It was just his luck that she'd find someone before they had time to meet. Complicated how? I don't know. We're not dating, if that's what you're wondering. Okay, that was good. He picked up his pen and clicked the end. I'm glad to hear that. He didn't want to know more about the man, but his curiosity got the better of him. How do you feel about him? Amelia was silent. Damien stood from his chair and walked to the window, disappointment settling in him. I see. It's not that simple. I shouldn't have even brought it up. Pretend I didn't. Damien chuckled despite the bad mood that was threatening to overtake him. Come on now. You can't do that. I don't want to start something with you if you're interested in someone else. This is weird, talking to you about this. I think it's healthy. Believe me, it's not. He could hear a smile in her voice. Damien pulled the curtains closed and sat on the bed. He didn't want to ask, but it came out anyway. Do you love him? Amelia didn't answer for a few moments, and Damien held his breath as he waited. Finally, she whispered, maybe. Well, I can't compete with a man from your past. That's just it. Uh, he's not from my past. I just met him. Wait, you just met? And you're in love with him? Warning bells went off in Damien's head. What kind of a woman was he talking to? You're right. It sounds insane. It is insane. I'm insane. It's not love. It can't be. And he doesn't feel that way about me anyway, so it's not a concern. I'm going to ignore the kiss and move on. Wait, you kissed him? This was getting worse. It didn't mean anything. How can you kiss a man but not have it mean anything? Maybe getting all of this out was a good thing. Maybe he needed to stay away from Amelia. She blew out a breath. You're right. What did you do today? I'm sure you didn't kiss someone you barely know. Damien's mouth went dry and he suddenly couldn't breathe. Ah. Uh... You know what? Never mind. I think I need to get some sleep. I'm feeling drained. Wait, I'm sorry. I've upset you again. I shouldn't have rushed to judgment. I was hoping we'd get to meet. Maybe next weekend? Amelia sucked in a breath and then started coughing. S sorry, she choked. Just a second. It sounded like she set the phone down and left the room. He waited for her to come back on the line. After what seemed like forever, she came back on the phone. I will be out of town next weekend. Sorry. That's fine. Maybe we can connect when you get back to New York. She paused. I'd like that. Me too. 
Thanks for talking with me tonight. Good night, Damien. He hung up the phone and stared at the screen. That had been a strange conversation. But in the end, he was more intrigued by Amelia than before. But as he closed his eyes and pulled the blanket over him, it wasn't Amelia who filtered back into his mind. Chapter 19 Cat tried to ignore the waves of nerves in her stomach as she sat behind the front desk. She'd come in so early, Fred hadn't even arrived yet. She started the coffee and sat at her computer waiting for the bomb to drop. Fred entered through the back. He stopped short when he saw Cat. You're here early. Just wanted to get the day started, I guess. Not really. She'd wanted to skip over today altogether. Huh. Fred hung up his coat and sat down. The clicking of his keyboard was the only sound in the room. Cat grew anxious and opened up her email box. Another email from Dr. Yong sat in her inbox. Dear Miss Filipina, I have ordered the box of snacks you wished me to. I hope you will be patient as it takes a while for things to ship to me. I hope you are in good spirits today. I look forward to hearing more from you. Dr. Brian Young. Good. She'd get the photo she wanted soon. Better start a new one. She clicked to scan through her incoming emails. One caught her attention and she opened it. Sorry for this unexpected message to you. I am Mr. Brady Marvel, a security manager at the Dayton International Airport, Dayton, Ohio, USA. During a recent routine check at all storage units at the airport, I discovered an abandoned shipment in your name which was on transit to your city but was intercepted by the Dayton International Airport Security for lack of proper clearance papers. The consignment was scanned and discovered to contain valuable cash between U.S. 4.5 million U.S. dollars. The consignment was placed on hold until proper clearances are provided by a reliable government source. I have taken it upon myself as a security manager at the Dayton International Airport to contact you personally about this abandoned shipment. After the confirmation is made, I will go ahead with all negotiations with the airport authorities for the release of the consignment box to me as your representative so I can arrange for the delivery to your city. Lastly, to enable me to confirm if you are the actual recipient of this consignment box, I will advise you to get back to me as quick as possible and reconfirm your address and personal information so that I can be sure that the box is going to the rightful owner. Regards, Mr. Brady Marvel, Security Slash Inspection Manager. Cat grinned. This would be good. She clicked to respond. Dear Mr. Marvel, first of all, what an awesome name. Secondly, I am indeed shocked that a shipment of this size was found in my name. However, I do have a distant uncle who was known to send me large amounts of cash in strange ways, so it's fortunate you have found my email address. I can't believe he sent me between $4.5 million. I'm wondering what it's between, but that's beside the point. I will gladly send you my mailing address, my bank account information, and my mother's maiden name so you can properly secure the shipment to me. I have the perfect thing I'm going to buy with this money. A giant statue of Thor. I saw one just the other day and thought the $4.5 million price was very fair. Anyway, there is just one thing I need from you. I need you to send me your identification so I can be sure you are actually Mr. Brady Marvel, the security slash inspection manager from the Dayton International Airport. Please send this right away, and I will confirm all information for you. Regards? Cat bit her lower lip. What name should she use? She wanted to tie in the Marvel theme, but didn't know the comics very well. She googled female Marvel characters and found the perfect one. She got back to the email and signed her name. Natasha Romanova. She clicked send and then glanced back at Lydia's office. Her throat grew dry. Lydia was here already. Cat hadn't noticed her come in. Her office door was open, but her blinds were closed, so Cat couldn't see in. Cat swallowed and got up to fetch Lydia's coffee. No words were exchanged as Cat set the mug down on Lydia's desk. 
Lydia didn't even look up from the mail she was sorting. Relieved, Kat scurried back to her desk. Sarah walked in and unwrapped her scarf. Man, it's cold out today. I can't wait for Christmas vacation. I am so glad Mom lives in Florida. It's 60 degrees there today. Lucky, Fred said without looking up from his computer screen. Paul walked in and stamped the snow from his boots. Was lucky. Sarah's going to Florida next week, Fred said. Take me with you. I think my nose hairs froze while I walked in. Cat laughed. You poor baby. You guys are wimps. I grew up here. This is nothing. The front door opened and Damien entered. He didn't look at Cat as he walked by her desk and back toward Lydia's office. Cat sucked in a breath. This was it. She heard the deep baritone of Damien's voice. I need to speak with you. In private. The door to Lydia's office shut and Cat strained to hear something. Anything. But all she could hear was the pounding of her heart. Then the door opened and Damien stepped out. His face was a mask of stone as he walked toward the front door. As he passed by her desk, his gaze connected with hers. He nodded, then continued on without a word. The door swished closed behind him, and that was it. He was gone. Cat was simultaneously relieved and angry that Damien hadn't spoken to her. Part of her didn't want to talk to him, didn't want to share a conversation while her co-workers listened to every word. The other part of her wanted to run outside and slap him for treating her like she was just a secretary. Like they hadn't spent the weekend together getting to know one another, sharing personal things. Ugh, how could she have thought that maybe she'd fallen in love with him? He was a world-class jerk. The seconds ticked by and her anger grew. Before she could control herself, she marched outside. What are you doing? Damien turned, startled, stopping in the middle of putting on his gloves. He blinked at her. I have to leave town. She sucked in a breath as the wind froze her skin. I don't care. What was that in there? You, walking by like you didn't even know me. She hadn't meant for it to come out so lame. She sounded pathetic, even to her own ears. Damien's gaze softened. I'm sorry. I didn't want to bring you into anything. I spoke with Lydia and said what I needed to. I'll be back after my business deal. She crossed her arms. And you weren't even going to say goodbye? It's freezing out here. Damien took a step toward her, shrugging out of his coat and slipped it around her shoulders. Dang! Why did he have to do something nice? It melted her anger. Now she just felt stupid running after a man. And they weren't even a couple. Damien seemed conflicted. His gaze shifted. Cat, I'm thankful for your help, but... Stop! Cat had heard enough. She didn't need him to spell it out for her. She got it. He didn't feel anything for her. The flirting, the kisses, they didn't mean anything. She was a fool to think otherwise. I get it. Damien swallowed hard. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. She didn't need his sympathy. She took off his coat and shoved it at him. Don't be. I understand. I'm just the secretary. He flinched. Good. She wanted to hurt him. She turned from him, but he caught her elbow, forcing her to look at him. I wish things were different. She narrowed her eyes at him. That's the stupidest thing anyone has ever said to me. She jerked her arm away from him and stalked back into the building. Her hands trembled as she sat back down and tried to go back to her computer work. She felt the stares of everyone in the office. Catherine, Lydia said, her voice echoing. I'd like to speak with you. Lydia's cold tone made Cat cringe. Great. She was dead. Cat stood and went to face the music. She walked to the back of the room and entered Lydia's office. Close the door. Lydia looked up from her desk and gave Cat a death stare. Cat did as she was told. One thing. I asked you to do one thing. Lydia's voice was low, but at least she wasn't yelling. I'm sorry, I couldn't... I know. Lydia gripped the sides of her chair so tight her knuckles went white. And now things are all messed up. He said he wasn't going to close the newspaper. Cat was hoping he kept his word. 
He isn't, at least not right now. But that's no longer your concern. Kat's palms grew sweaty. Why? she asked, her voice small. Because you're fired. Pack up your things. I want you out. Lydia made a motion with her hand. But don't argue with me. I asked you to do one thing and you deliberately disobeyed. I can't work with people I don't trust. Now, leave before I call the police and have you escorted out. Cat blinked back her tears. She was not going to cry. She burst out of Lydia's office and quickly walked to her desk. She didn't have much, but she gathered it up and grabbed her coat. Sarah sent her a questioning glance. I got fired, Cat said. What? Sarah's eyes widened. Why? I doubt I'm at liberty to say. Maybe you should ask Lydia. She choked on the last few words, then hurried from the building before her tears could start in earnest. She sat in her car, the heater on high, and let her emotions surge. Fired. How humiliating. And right before Christmas. What was she going to do? She needed the income. She couldn't lose her childhood home and all the memories it held. It was the last connection she felt she had with her mama. Tears fell onto her coat as she gripped the steering wheel, still sitting in the parking lot. She wiped her eyes. Better get looking for a new job. Maybe Pizza Hut was hiring. She put her car into gear and steeled herself for a day of rejection. She didn't have time to wallow in her self-pity. Chapter 20 Damien sat back in his chair and steepled his fingers. Negotiations had gone well. They had IMB in the bag. He should feel elated. But for some reason the victory was flat. Thoughts of Cat kept flashing into his head and he couldn't stop them. It had been three days since he'd left Pleasant Hollow and all he could think about was Cat. Stupid. Why did he always fall for the ones he couldn't have? Cat was everything he'd ever wanted. She challenged him, she made him think, and the chemistry between them was undeniable. Yet, his life was in New York, and she'd never leave her small town. It just wouldn't work between them. He had to stop thinking about her. Chuck entered his office. Great job on the IMB deal. I knew you could do it. He grabbed a chair, flipped it around, then sat on it backward. Damien hid a smile. That was Chuck. He didn't care what anyone thought. We pulled it in together, Damien said. Chuck nodded slowly. We did. He rested his arms on the back of the chair. When Chuck didn't make a move to leave, Damien studied him. Need something else? Just wanted to check in with you on how things were going. You've been different the last few days. Damien raised his eyebrows. Different? How? Oh. Distracted. That's not like you at all. Chuck eyed him. You met someone, didn't you? How did Chuck do that? Damien exhaled and ran the hand through his hair. Is it that obvious? A wide grin spread across Chuck's face, and he hit the back of the chair with his hand. Ha! I knew it. Who is she? Damien shook his head. I can't get her out of my head. She drives me crazy, and yet there's something so likable about her. Sounds like love to me. Chuck looked extremely pleased with this. He'd been almost as bad as his mother trying to set him up. Damien chuckled. We just met. Sometimes it doesn't take long. Damien slowly nodded. Chuck was right. He was definitely attracted to her. But in love? Probably not. He just couldn't get his mind off her. That didn't mean he was in love, right? It was privileged singles, wasn't it? Damien froze. Sure, Amelia. That's who he should be pursuing. That's who he could actually date. And he did like her. He cleared his throat. Yeah, great. I knew you'd find someone on there. When do I get to meet the woman who has you this flustered? Was he flustered? Damien didn't like that. He'd better get his head in the game. She's out of town this weekend. Well, maybe after Christmas. Chuck stood and slid the chair back into place. He patted Damien on the back. Congratulations, man. 
After Chuck left, Damien twisted his chair around and stared out the window at the skyscrapers. The sun was setting, reflecting off the glass. Amelia. He hadn't checked in with her in a while. He should call her tonight. His phone rang and he picked up. This is Damien. How did things go today? His mother's voice seemed strained. Fine. We closed the deal with IMB. Good. She exhaled. Are you still going back to Pleasant Hollow? He was tired of this argument. Yes. Why don't you leave well enough alone? You've already opened old wounds. You know how this pains me. He gripped the chair rest, his anger surging. Pains you? I have a sibling I never knew about. How do you think that makes me feel? You can't just pretend he doesn't exist. They want nothing to do with us. Tired of having the same conversation, Damien stood. I'm leaving tomorrow. His mother sucked in a breath. I can't believe you're blatantly disobeying my wishes. You are walking on thin ice. And there it was, a veiled threat. That's how his mother operated. He stood and crossed the room, grabbing his coat. What are you going to do, mother? Write me out of your will? Go ahead. I don't need your money. I have plenty. The phone clicked, and he clenched his teeth, shoving the phone into his pocket. His mother would not forgive him for digging up this skeleton, but he couldn't pretend it wasn't there. He had a brother. He needed to go see him, and if he was in Pleasant Hollow, he could see Cat. He shook his head. Pathetic. He packed his briefcase and headed out to the elevators. Tonight, he'd call Amelia. Maybe she would get his mind off Cat. Cat wiped down the table and restocked the napkins. With no other jobs in town, Harriet had taken pity on her and given her a job waitressing tables. The pay was next to nothing, so she was relying on tips to save her. So far, she wasn't seeing much, though. She picked up the pitcher of water and went to refresh the glasses of the couple sitting at table seven. Do you need anything else? she asked. The woman smiled at her. No, thank you. At least they were nice. The teenagers earlier had taunted her and made rude comments. She may or may not have added pepper to their cokes. She didn't feel bad. They'd left a lousy tip. She finished cleaning the table in the corner and wiped her forehead. She'd been on her feet all day. She was ready to go home and veg in front of the television. Harriet smacked her gum. You doing okay, cat? I'm fine. It'll all work out, I'm sure. Lie. She was barely making ends meet with her newspaper salary. She was in deep trouble. Harriet gave her a small smile. I'm sure it will. Cat hung up her apron in the back room and grabbed her purse and coat. Maybe she'd soak in a bubble bath after watching a movie. That sounded divine. Her phone buzzed as she slid into the driver's seat. She pulled it out of her purse. Damien was calling Amelia. Nice. She almost didn't answer, but she was curious as to what he wanted, so she slid her finger across the screen. Hello? Hi, it's Damien. Hey, what's up? Just wanted to talk. Are you free? Yeah, I'm all done managing all those hedge funds for today. She clamped her lips together. She was so dead. Why did she say that? He was going to figure her out any second. She put her car into gear and pulled out onto the street. I feel like I'm always talking about me, so I thought of some questions I wanted to ask you. Do you mind? Go for it. Okay. Paper rustled in the background. Question one. Are you more of an outdoor or an indoor person? Cat sped through a yellow light. Did you write these down? I didn't want to forget any. That's a little anal retentive, don't you think? Damien made a scoffing noise. Just answer the question. Okay, I'd say I'm more of an outdoor person. I love hiking and nature, but I also love curling up with a good movie and a bowl of popcorn, so I wouldn't say I'm always outdoors. Fair enough. The sound of paper crinkling came through and Cat laughed. Are you writing down my answers? He paused. No. Oh my gosh, you so are. You're a weirdo, you know that. Damien was silent for so long that Cat started to worry. 
I was kidding, she said. I know, I just thought you sounded like someone for a second. Never mind. Cat froze. Oh, dang, she'd forgotten she was supposed to be Amelia. She couldn't do that again. She had to keep her voice low and act more like a million-dollar heiress would. She slowed as she came to her house, promising to pay more attention to what she said and how she said it. Question two. If you could meet a famous person, who would you want to meet? Stephen Hawking. She was trying to think like a hedge fund manager who went to some fancy college, although she did think it would be interesting to meet him. Really? Why? He's done so much and overcome so much. He has a brilliant mind. Interesting. I love your answer. Okay, number three. You don't have to number them. It's making me feel like I'm taking a test or something. He chuckled. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just ask the questions. Thanks. Kat entered her house. Her sister hadn't been there for a few days, so it surprised her when Hillary walked in. Hey, Kat, Hillary said. Kat put her finger to her lips and mouthed, Damien. Oh, gotcha. Hillary grinned at her. You're undercover, she whispered. Kat nodded while trying to listen to Damien's next question. What's your dream vacation? He said. Dream vacation? That's tough. I rarely take them. Ah, I knew we were compatible. I don't believe in vacations either. Wait, you don't believe in them? They're not a religion. Kat rolled her eyes and pulled off her boots to stuff in the closet. No, but vacations waste valuable time. Not when you spend them with the right person. Kat mentally kicked herself. She needed to shut up and answer like Amelia would. Damien seemed to be thinking about that because he didn't answer right away. Maybe you're right. Kat refrained from exclaiming, Ha! She tried to think of what refined Amelia would say. I often am. He laughed at that. Okay, I'm curious about this next one. It's important to me. Really? What is it? Do you have pets? No. Damien let out a breath of relief. Good. What? You didn't let me finish. I don't have any pets right now, but I've always dreamed of having a puppy. You know, something cute for the kids to play with. Damien coughed. You want kids? Cat plopped down on her bed. Yes, I want kids. That's definitely a deal-breaker for me. Crud. She was slipping again. Cat wanted kids, but would Amelia want them? Too late now. Amelia wanted kids, whether it made sense or not. That's good to know. Now, intensely curious, Cat had to ask, What about you? Damien took a few seconds to answer. I didn't think I'd ever have them, so I guess I never thought much about it. If I ever did have a child, I would want to be sure they knew they were loved. Cat's heart warmed. He was a good man, even with his faults. I'm glad. Is the puppy a deal-breaker for you? She giggled. I can't believe you don't like puppies. Who hates puppies? I don't hate them. I just dislike slobber on my shoes and scooping up poop. You can train a dog not to chew on your shoes and the poop? Well, I'll just say that sometimes the benefits outweigh the downsides. That's fair. I don't love the idea of a pet, but I suppose it's not a deal-breaker for me. If I found the right woman and she came with a puppy, I'd find a way to make it work. Cat found herself smiling despite herself. Was that the last question? Oh, no, I have lots more. How many? Cat piled her pillows behind her to get comfortable. You don't want to know. She laughed. You can keep going. I have time. Chapter 21 Damien awoke on Friday in a good mood. He talked to Amelia long into the night. He thought talking to Amelia would get Cat out of his head, but that hadn't worked. It was funny, but Amelia was a lot like Cat, which made him want to see Cat even more. He should be upset about that, but he couldn't muster up the needed energy. He just wanted to forget about the obstacles and enjoy his trip to Pleasant Hollow. He wanted to take Cat out and see what happened. Forget about the things making it impossible to have a relationship. He wanted to just spend time with her. 
Something was pulling him toward her, and even though it seemed impossible, he wanted to see where things could lead. The flight seemed to stretch out forever. It was noon by the time he'd rented his car and driven into town. He couldn't wait to see Cat, so he parked in front of the newspaper and walked inside. A woman in her seventies sat behind the receptionist's desk, a pair of orange glasses perched on the end of her nose. May I help you? she asked. Damien blinked. Where's Cat? Who? His collar suddenly felt too tight. Catherine, she used to be the receptionist here. The woman shrugged. Sorry, I'm new. Heat crept up the back of his neck. Had Lydia fired Cat? His gaze traveled back to the closed office door. I need to speak to Lydia. Oh, I'm sorry. She doesn't want any interruptions right now. Too bad, he said under his breath. He stalked around her desk. The woman sprang out of her chair and followed after him. She was amazingly spry for her age. Sir, you can't go back there. Damien ignored the woman, his footsteps sounding on the hard floor. Everyone looked up from their computers as he walked by. He burst into Lydia's office. Lydia looked up with a startled expression. I'm sorry, ma'am, he wouldn't listen. Lydia held up a hand. It's okay, Marion, this is Mr. Warren, he owns the paper. Oh, Marion flattened a hand on her chest. I'm sorry. Damien was too upset to even care. He glared at Lydia. You fired Cat? He hadn't meant to shout, but it ricocheted through her office like a bullet. Lydia flinched. Please close the door when you leave, Marion. Once the door was closed, Lydia placed her hands on her desk. I'm sorry, Mr. Warren. I had to let her go. Damien clenched his jaw. Why did you fire her? Lydia blanched. She wasn't a team player. That's nonsense, and you know it. Lydia seemed to assess the situation. She straightened her spine. I did not realize you had a vested interest in Kat's employment here. She looked like she was choosing her words carefully. If you want her hired back, I can see what I can do, although our budget would not allow me to keep Marion on as well. Great. If he insisted on Cat being hired back, he'd be responsible for a little old lady being fired. He sighed. Since when did he care about these things? He'd grown soft. Don't fire Marion. He rubbed his temples. Maybe he could find a way to keep them both on. The newspaper could make more money if they had their own printing operation. Give me some time to figure things out. Lydia nodded. I can do that. I'd like to meet my brother. I've cleared my calendar, and I want to spend some time with him. Lydia's face flushed. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why not? He was back to yelling, and he deliberately lowered his voice. I have a right to know him. Wes is special. I know he has Down syndrome. That doesn't mean he can't understand the situation. I was hoping. I don't care what you were hoping, Damien interrupted. I'm not leaving here until I've established a relationship with my brother. Half-brother. Damien shot her a glare and Lydia wilted. Okay. I'll be spending the day with him tomorrow. Lydia sighed. Okay, she repeated. He shoved his hands into his gloves. Where's Cat? Did she get another job? Lydia swallowed and shifted in her seat. She's waitressing at Dale's. Thanks. He stepped out of her office and shut the door. He nodded to Fred as he passed by his desk. Good day, he said to Marion. He pushed the door and walked out into the cold. He walked down the block to Dale's. As he approached the diner, he could see Cat through the windows. She wore an apron and was gathering up plates from a table. Her hair was pulled back into a bun. It looked good on her. His heart squeezed. He'd missed her more than he realized. He entered and Cat's gaze connected with his. She nodded curtly. Damien. Suddenly he felt tongue-tied like a kid facing his first crush. Cat. She turned her back on him and went into the kitchen. He seated himself at a table in the corner. The place was mostly empty. There was only one man sitting by the window and a woman sitting with a young child near the door. Cat came back with a menu. She handed it to him. Would you like some iced coffee? She asked. She had that fake sweet smile on her face. 
He hid a smile. Yep, there was that sass he loved. No, thank you. He opened the menu. How about some water? Her voice was clipped. She was mad, but he didn't blame her. He was rude to her. He needed to apologize. Can you take a break and join me? She gave him a flat look and slowly blinked. No. Harriet appeared behind her. Oh, honey, take a break. I'll cover the tables for you. She gave Cat a little push toward the seat. Cat glared at Harriet, but the look was either lost on her or she ignored it. Cat slid into the seat across from him. Fine. What is it you want? I want to apologize. I treated you badly, and that was wrong. She assessed him. Yes, you did. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get in the way of myself. He made a face. This wasn't coming out well. I get something in my head, and that's all I see. Her eyebrows knit together. What are you talking about? He leaned on the table. I can have tunnel vision. I wanted to get the newspaper off the books, and that was all I had planned on. I didn't expect to come here and find you. Surprise showed in her eyes, but she didn't comment. I was rude to you, and I'm sorry. I want to make it up to you. I didn't mean to get you fired. Cat tapped the table with her fingers. Yeah, well, I'm the one that went against Her Majesty's wishes. I dragged you into this whole thing and didn't think about what might happen. It was my fault. Her gaze softened. No, it's not your fault. I'm the one who made the choice to go against Lydia. He studied her from across the table. The need to make things right between them grew. Look, I'd like to take you to dinner. Maybe to some place in New Haven. Are you free tonight? Yes, she is, Harriet called from behind the counter. Damien chuckled. I guess she's forgiven me for thinking about closing down the newspaper. Cat made a face. She and Hillary should team up. They're both good at butting in where they don't belong. So, how about it? Want to go to dinner with me? Cat looked down at the table, indecision playing across her face. Okay, she finally said, her voice so quiet he almost missed it. Where do you want to go? I haven't eaten at the acorn yet. Perfect. What kind of food do they serve? He actually couldn't care less. She'd said yes to going out with him. It felt like a victory. It's a bar and grill. I've heard their hamburgers are good. What time should I pick you up? Kat sat back in her seat. Ugh, you drive like a grandma. And you drive like you have a death wish. I was in one terrible car accident, if you remember. I don't want to repeat. Her face drained of color. I'm so sorry, Damien. I didn't think. He waved it away. Don't worry about it. I'm mostly teasing you. You can pick me up at six. That works for me. Cat stood. Okay, now, what do you want me to bring you, or did you just come in to bother me? He grinned at her. I'll take a ham on rye. Chapter 22 Cat hurried into her house, tossing her keys in the bowl. She had less than 45 minutes to make herself look presentable. As she stripped off her clothes, Hillary poked her head around the corner. What are you doing? You look like you're in a relay race and have to get naked before the other team. I've got to take a quick shower. I have a date. For reals? Hillary made a face. With who? Elliot? Cat made a gagging noise. No, she slipped off her socks. It's with Damien. She grabbed a sweater, new underwear, and her nice skinny jeans and ran into the bathroom. Damien? Her sister's voice came through the door. I thought he left town. You've been all mopey. He's back. She didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to think about it, because she knew he wasn't back to stay. Why she said yes to go out with him was beyond her. Stupid, really. But her body betrayed her and said yes when her mind had wanted her to run away. She turned on the shower and waited for the water to heat up. If her sister said anything else, the noise of the water drowned her out. After her shower, she dressed and turned on her hair dryer, attacking her head with her brush. Ten minutes later, it didn't look half bad. 
The door rang and Kat rushed to get the door, but when she entered the living room, Hillary had already opened it. Damien walked in and Kat tried not to suck in a breath. How could it be that every time she saw him, he grew even more handsome? He just wore jeans and a button-up shirt, but the way it hugged him, he could have walked off a movie screen. She tried to form a complete sentence. Hey, Damien. She gave herself props for not drooling. Hillary had a smug smile on her face, and she folded her arms. Have fun, you two. Kat grabbed her coat before Hillary could embarrass her. Bye. Her nerves jumped as they walked to Damien's rental car. He opened the door for her, which reminded her this was more like an official date. How did she get to this place? Going on a date with a billionaire? What kind of alternate universe was this? Damien slid into his seat and started the car. You look nice, he said. Kat's cheeks heated. Thanks. He pulled out into the street. The tension between them grew as no one spoke. Kat blew out a breath. This was going to be a long night if neither of them would say anything. How was your week? It was fine, he said. He gave her a glance. I missed you. Her heart jumped into her throat. Had Damien been thinking about her? She swallowed, not sure how to respond to him. She'd been thinking about him as well, especially since last night when they talked on the phone. She'd enjoyed their conversation. She tried to tell herself she was just talking to him because she had to, to keep up the Amelia pretense, but that was a lie. She liked him. Too much. He looked apprehensive, so she gave him a small smile. I missed you too. How's your mother? The familiar pang of pain stabbed at her chest. Not well. He reached over and put his hand on her knee. The gesture was sweet and his touch spread warmth through her. I'm sorry. Could more be done for her if she were in a larger facility? I don't think so. That has to be hard on you. Kat nodded. Yes. Damien straightened. Do you mind if I ask you some get-to-know-you questions? Like what? Simple stuff, like are you an indoors person or an outdoors person? Kat froze. Oh, no. He was going to pepper her with the same questions he'd asked Amelia. Dang. Now what? She couldn't be giving him the same answers. Yet, how was she supposed to change them? Most of the questions she answered honestly. And now she was going to have to lie? Kat cleared her throat. I don't know. I like both, I suppose. But enough about me. I want to know more about you. You're a billionaire. What's that like? He gripped the steering wheel. You know, people always think that once they have money, their life will be easier. But I don't think it's like that at all. Your challenges are just different. He gave Kat a sideways glance before going on. Take my grandfather, for example. He was a millionaire back when everyone else was struggling just to put food on the table. You'd think life was roses, but it wasn't. He had polio as a child and suffered immensely. He could barely walk. His life was hard even though he didn't want for food or clothes. His struggles were more physical. My father's struggles were mental. And I have my leg to deal with. Kat fiddled with the strap of her purse. She hadn't really thought about that before. It just always seemed like rich people had it easy. But what Damien said made sense. Life was a challenge for everyone. You're right. I didn't look at it that way before, but I can see your point. Damien nodded, then changed lanes to pass a truck. Can I ask you something personal? His tone was light, but there was an underlying tension in his question, which put Kat on alert. I guess, but only if I can reserve the right not to answer if I don't want to. Fair enough. I was just wondering where you see yourself in five or ten years. It was a simple enough question, but Kat knew there was something he was fishing for. She looked down at her fingernails. Her future seemed a little bleak, if she were being honest. She sighed. Before I got fired, I would have said I see myself as a newspaper reporter at the Pleasant Hollow Times. But now, I honestly don't know. I don't want to be stuck at Dale's, that's for sure. Do you see yourself married? Married? He was right. That was personal. She didn't want to talk about her lack of dates over the past few years. Well, yes, I guess. Hadn't thought about it much, but of course, that's something I want for my future. 
She felt uncomfortable with his line of questioning, so she changed the subject. Did you know human botfly eggs mature into larvae under the skin of a human host? Damien made a face. Why would you tell me this as we're headed for dinner? Sorry, I saw it on Facebook last night and can't stop thinking about it. Gross. Yeah, in hindsight, maybe it wasn't the best thing to say right now. You think? Cat let out a breath. At least they weren't talking about her love life anymore. But maybe next time she'd think a little bit longer about her choice of subject change. When they got to the acorn, Damien helped her out of the car. His touch sent tingles across her skin. Conflicting emotions surged in her. It would be easy for her to ignore all the things that wouldn't work between them and allow the feelings she had for Damien to surface. But that would only mean more heartache later on. She had to keep herself in check. Damien slid his arm around her and butterflies assaulted her insides. So much for keeping herself in check. Her body was such a traitor. They entered the restaurant. The hostess came up to them and pulled a couple of menus from a side pocket on the reservation desk. Two? Yes, Damien said. She led them to a table. Televisions hung from above with some football game playing. Damien pulled out her chair for her and she sat down. Can I get you anything to drink? the hostess asked. Just water for me, Kat said. I prefer sherry. Do you have any Palo Cortado? Damien asked. The girl shifted. Ah, uh, no, we don't have any of that. All right, then just give me a Diet Coke. The girl wrote something down on her pad of paper. I'll bring them right out. Damien smiled at her from across the table. I'm glad you decided to let me take you out tonight. She wanted to ask him why he was even bothering, but clamped her lips together and just smiled. It would be rude to bring up the fact that they wouldn't ever work as a couple. She should just enjoy the date and take it for what it was. Just a date, that's all. Cat forced a smile. Have you been to meet your brother yet? Damien's smile faded. Not yet. I told Lydia I was going to spend tomorrow with him. How did she take that? She hates it, but I don't care. I grew up thinking I was an only child, and here I find out I've had a brother living in another state that I had no idea about. Cat's heart swelled. She would feel the same way if she were in his shoes. I think it's good of you to do that. The hostess brought them their drinks. Damien nodded at her. Thank you. When she was gone, Cat turned back to him. I don't know how to ask this, but I'm curious, so I'm just going to say it. He looked intrigued. Go ahead. Are you afraid of Lydia going after your money? No. He picked up his drink. If she had wanted money, she would have gone after my father years ago. That was probably true. Lydia didn't come across as a gold digger to her. She was too proud for that. Are you going to keep her running the newspaper? Yes. He looked like he wanted to say more, but took a drink instead. Did things go well with your business deal? He squinted at her. How did you know about that? Oh, no. Had he only told Amelia about that? Her mouth grew dry, and she covered by shrugging and sucking down her water. Everything went smoothly. We'll be announcing the buyout next week. Cat set her water glass down with a clunk. Good. The waitress came by, and they ordered their food. They fell into an easy conversation about surface things. Tamian was easy to talk to. Too soon, they were done eating, and Cat found herself not willing to say goodnight just yet. After they got in his car, she turned to him. Do you want to come over for a while? We could rent a movie. I'd like that. When they got to Cat's house, she noticed Hillary's car was gone. Her sister must have gone back to her apartment. She unlocked the door and tossed her keys into the bowl. What do you want to watch? What's your favorite movie? That's such a hard question to answer. I love so many of them. He shot her a look. You're a movie buff? I just have lots of favorites. For instance, my favorite comedy is probably Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. My favorite action film is the original Indiana Jones movie. My favorite musical is... Cat stopped herself before she said Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. That would give her away for sure. Instead, she said her next favorite. My Fair Lady. I haven't seen that in ages. 
Cat smiled, relieved she'd gotten away with that one. Great. My fair lady it is. I have the DVD of that one. Damien sat on the couch while Cat got the movie started. When she sat beside him, she became hyper aware of his body next to her. She clasped her hands in her lap. Halfway through the movie, Damien's arm slipped around her shoulders and she relaxed into him. She pushed all thoughts of the future away. She just wanted to be near him tonight. Damien leaned over and pressed his lips to the top of her head. It was a simple gesture, but it warmed her to her toes. I feel bad about you working at Dale's, he said, his voice low. It is what it is. He slowly nodded. Maybe it doesn't have to be. I've been thinking about expanding the newspaper. She looked at him and blinked. He was what? The thought hadn't even occurred to her. Hope filled her and she grabbed the remote to pause the movie. Expanding? How? If I buy a bigger building and invest in some printing presses, the newspaper wouldn't need to outsource anymore. Cat tried not to get too excited. Would it be more cost-effective then? Yes, and if I hired more reporters, we could look at printing bi-weekly. Was he saying what she was hoping? Would he really hire her as a reporter? She raised an eyebrow and tried to act cool. That sounds like a good idea. Do you think Pleasant Hollow could support a bi-weekly printing? You know that's an unfair question to ask me, right? Because there's nothing I'd like more than to be hired on as a reporter for the Pleasant Hollow Times. So there's no way I'd tell you we can't support a bi-weekly paper. Damien grinned at her, playing with a lock of her hair. You're right. That's not fair of me. She poked him in the side. And it's so not fair of you to dangle this carrot in front of me if you're not serious about it. His grin faded and he sobered. I looked at a building today. She tried to smother her excitement, but it didn't work. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, he said, chuckling. Oh, my gosh, I could kiss you. Damien's lips twitched. I wouldn't stop you. His voice was deep, and it made her heart stutter. Butterflies exploded in her stomach as she gazed into his dark eyes. All rational thought left her head, and she found herself moving toward him. Chapter 23 Cat couldn't stop herself. She kissed Damien with everything she'd been holding back. He wrapped his arms around her and took command of the kiss, moving his lips over hers. Energy surged through her and she slid her hand up his chest. He kissed her jaw and she closed her eyes, the attraction between them crackling. Damien broke the connection, putting distance between them, his gaze penetrating through her. I should tell you something. Kat steeled herself for whatever it was. He was going to pull back again, she was sure of it. She didn't want to hear once again how they couldn't be together. It might break her. She had taken a risk tonight. How stupid she'd been. Again. Okay, she whispered as she moved away from him. After my car crash, I was trapped inside my car for over twenty minutes. She hadn't been expecting that. She blinked at him as his words sunk in. He was going to talk about his car crash with her. Emotions swelled in her chest. That's awful. The car caught fire. She swallowed. He'd told Amelia about his burned leg, but she wasn't supposed to know. She didn't know what to say, so she stayed silent. Damien seemed like he didn't want to go on. He broke eye contact, looking down at his lap. My leg was badly burned in the accident. In the next five years, I had over thirty surgeries. He hadn't told Amelia that. Damien lifted his pant leg, revealing his skin. Cat sucked in a breath, unable to hide her shock. His leg looked like some macabre patchwork quilt, pink and red patches in crazy angles from the many skin grafts. Her vision blurred as tears welled in her eyes. Damien. Her words left her as she tried to get her emotions under control. He must have been in so much agony. It still looked like it hurt. She involuntarily moved away from him, afraid touching his leg would cause him more pain. He sighed, 
dropping his pant leg. The scars go up the entire leg. Cat couldn't speak. She didn't know what to say. He was sharing something so intimate with her, something that caused him so much misery. She felt the weight of his revelation. Damien swallowed, not meeting her gaze. I understand if... He struggled to go on, and Cat waited for him to finish. If you want me to leave. Her mouth fell open. What? Why would I? Because I know how it looks. It's hideous. Cat couldn't believe what he was saying. She slowly reached out and put her hand on his arm. Damien, I don't care how your leg looks. It just surprised me. You've gone through such agony. I didn't realize. It must hurt so much. He raised his gaze and cupped her cheek. Emotion played across his features. Sweet cat. It's much better than it was. So, I, I didn't hurt you before? He smiled at her. I'd take some discomfort for your kiss any day. She leaned back. Discomfort? He wrapped his arms around her, gently pulling her back to him. Cat, my leg will never be whole again. The pain is always there. But I don't want you to be afraid of touching me. I find it quite pleasurable. She melted into his chest. I can't believe other women have left you because of your leg. Why would you say that? Crud. He told Amelia. She racked her brain, trying to come up with a plausible reason she would know that. I could tell by the way you reacted after showing me. He hugged her to him. You're right, but I don't want to think about other women right now. He kissed the top of her head. She looked up at him, then kissed his lips, slowly this time, enjoying the sensations washing over her. The door opened and Hillary walked in, two paper bags in her arms. Whoa! Cat sprang back, her cheeks heating. Hillary, what are you doing here? I went shopping, but Russ's didn't have the quinoa I wanted, so I had to run to New Haven. She kicked the door shut with her foot while giving Cat a wicked smile. Looks like you two have had a good evening. Cat wanted to sink into the floor. She grabbed the remote and clicked on the movie. We were just watching My Fair Lady. Hillary gave her sister a look. Uh-huh. She went into the kitchen. Don't mind me, you keep on watching that movie, she called from the other room. Damien chuckled. You're cute when you're embarrassed. Cat buried her face in her hands. I'm probably ten shades of red. I like red on you. Hillary didn't come back into the living room and Cat settled in against Damien's chest. They finished watching the movie. After the credits, Cat reluctantly stretched and turned off the television. I guess you better be going. Damien stood and slipped his coat on. Yes, I'm spending the day with my brother tomorrow. But if you're free, I'd like to see you in the evening. Cat's butterflies came back. She didn't want to ruin things between them because tonight had been good. But she really wanted to know what was going on with them. She bit her lip and plunged ahead. What exactly are we doing? Damien took a step closer, wrapping his arms around her waist. I was thinking a little dinner, maybe taking a movie at the theater, you know, a date. She tried not to get hypnotized by his intoxicating smell and the low timbre of his voice. I mean, where are we going with this? Her heart screamed at her to shut up. Things were good. Why did she want to mess with it? But her brain needed an answer. After a small war with herself, she went ahead and asked, Are we in a relationship? From the startled look on Damien's face to the way he worked his jaw, she knew she wasn't going to like his answer. He gazed down at her, his fingers brushing over her back through her sweater. Do we have to put a label on this? Can't we go out a few times just to enjoy each other's company? And there it was. Damien wanted to have a fling with her while he was in town, and then he'd go back to New York and back to his busy life with no room in it for her. Her throat felt tight, and she wasn't sure she could get any words out. What words would she even say? She knew there really wasn't going to be a future between them. 
Why was she so upset about this? She nodded. I see. He pulled her closer, and she put her head on his chest. Hey, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I, I don't know what will happen. I just know I like you, and I couldn't stop thinking about you when we were apart. I want to spend more time with you while I'm here. Do we have to define what this is right now? His argument made sense. Why was she trying to force him into a relationship? They could take things slow. No, you're right, she said, trying to keep her voice from betraying her emotions. We can just spend time together. She said the words, but they weren't true. She didn't want to spend any more time with him, not when there was no promise between them, nothing but a few days of fun. She could already feel her heart breaking, knowing he was going to be leaving again. But part of her wanted to bury those thoughts and let things between them grow. Maybe he would start to feel the same way she did. Maybe he would fall in love with her. The thought was both funny and sobering. Was she in love with Damien? Even as the question floated around in her head, she knew the answer. She did love Damien. She loved him with all her heart and soul. And that was what scared her the most about the thought of him leaving. Damien seemed oblivious to the war going on in her heart. He lifted her chin and placed a tender kiss on her lips. I'll see you tomorrow around six, then. She nodded, unable to say anything. Good night. He slipped on his gloves and left. Kat stood in the living room, staring at the door for probably longer than was sane. She finally got a grip and headed to the bathroom to get ready for bed. What was wrong with her? Why couldn't she set aside her worries and just enjoy spending time with Damien? He was here with her. He was kissing her. Even though he didn't want to say it, they were in a relationship. Her phone rang and her heart sank. Damien was calling Amelia. He'd left her only moments before. He'd kissed her. She'd thought they were growing closer, and yet here he was calling another woman. Anger flashed through her, and she almost chucked her phone at the wall. But she decided on a whim to answer it to see what he wanted. Hello? Her fingers shook as she waited for him to reply. Hey, Amelia, I hope I'm not calling at a bad time. No, this is fine. Good. I need to talk to you. She tried not to crush her phone as she held it to her head. What about... I wanted you to know I'm developing feelings for a woman. All her anger melted away and she blinked back emotion. You are? She said, her voice barely above a whisper. Yes, and it's only fair that I tell you I think it's best if I stop calling you. Kat's heart hammered in her chest. He likes her enough to stop communicating with Amelia, even though he didn't want to call it a relationship. He obviously thinks there's something between them. She let out a breath. I understand. I hope you don't feel like I've led you on. I've enjoyed talking with you, but I feel I would be wrong in continuing something with you while I'm starting to feel something for another woman. His words about melted her heart. Yes, right, I agree. You should pursue the other woman. She cringed. That was a stupid thing to say. She needed to get off the phone with him before she totally blew her cover. Well, I'd better let you go. Thanks for understanding. Bye. She clicked to hang up, her heart in her throat. She bit back a smile. Maybe he wasn't planning on a short fling. Maybe things could actually progress between them. Kat brushed her teeth and got ready for bed. But once her head hit her pillow, she couldn't sleep. Thoughts of Damien ran through her mind, his smell, his kiss, and for the first time, she allowed herself to imagine what life might be like if they were together. Chapter 24 Damien's nerves skittered through him as he knocked on Lydia's front door. A man answered. His round, baby-like face and wide smile told him this was his brother Wes. Come in he said, ushering Damien into the house. He pumped Damien's hand a few times. I'm so happy to meet you. 
Surprised, Damien's eyebrows rose. Do you know who I am? Wes nodded enthusiastically. Yes. Lydia came into the entryway, her arms tightly folded. Damien, she said, acknowledging him, her voice cold. You may go with Wes to the family room. Wes took Damien's hand and tugged on it. Come, I have trains. Damien followed Wes into the back of the house to a room that was mostly dark wood paneling. The floor was covered in plywood and a maze of train tracks took up most of the space. Tiny trees and little buildings were set up as well. Wes sat cross-legged at the control station and looked up at Damien expectantly. Damien stepped over the corner of the plywood and sat beside him. Did you put this whole thing together? Wes nodded. Yes, I like trains. Do you? I do. You've done an excellent job. Wes flipped a switch and the engine came to life. Little puffs of smoke came out the top as the train started to move. Wes showed him how to work the controls and they watched the train for a few minutes. Damien was impressed. He knew from his research that people with Down syndrome have varying degrees of limitations, but speaking with Wes, he realized his brother was quite capable of a lot of things. Do you have a job? Damien asked. Wes shook his head. No. Why not? Mom says no. Damien sat back. If you could have any job, what kind of job would you want? Wes's eyes lit up. Work on trains. I think you'd be very good at that. Or work with dogs. I like them. Mom says no dogs. Damien saw the longing in Wes's eyes. Dogs are cool. Wes picked up his hand. I like you. His heart warmed at Wes's words. They spent the afternoon adding in a miniature garage to the train village, complete with tiny cars being worked on. After Lydia served them lunch, Damien took Wes over to the Humane Society so he could pet the dogs. They let them take one for a walk. After they returned to Wes's house, Damien gave him a hug. Thanks for spending the day with me. Wes grinned with his whole face. Damien loved how enthusiastic he was. Will you come back? Of course. I want to talk to your mom for a minute, though. Is that okay? Wes nodded, then gave him another hug. He ran into the other room. Damien turned to Lydia. Apprehension lined her features. Damien wanted to talk about Wes getting a job, but he wasn't sure it was a good idea at the moment. She was quite protective of him. He shifted his weight, appraising her. You've done a good job raising Wes. A small smile relaxed her features. Thank you. I'm glad you let me spend time with him. She rested her hand on a small decorative table that sat against the wall. I am fine with you coming for a visit, Mr. Warren. The way she said it made Damien take a step back. I'm not trying to take Wes away from you, if that's what you think. Her lips pinched together. I don't know what to think. You show up here without any warning. You barge your way into our lives, digging up the past and demanding to see Wes. How am I supposed to know what to think? I'm sorry, but I didn't know any of this situation when I arrived. Her gaze softened. I know, none of this is your fault. I guess I'm just overprotective of Wes. He was teased at school, and I eventually had to pull him out and hire tutors. It was torture seeing him treated differently. I never want to go through that again. Damien slowly nodded, choosing his words carefully. But he's an adult now. Maybe it's time to let him do more things. People with Down syndrome can hold jobs. Lydia pinched the bridge of her nose. I know. I just don't want him to be crushed when he gets rejected. I think he can handle it. She sighed. You barely know him. What makes you think you can come in and spend one day with him and know exactly what he needs? Damien scratched his chin. You're right. I'm probably overstepping. Just think about it, okay? If you decide a part-time job would be all right, I can make some phone calls. Lydia crossed her arms. I suppose I can think about it. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Damien gave her a parting nod, then left the house. As he pulled on his gloves, his heart lightened. 
He'd enjoyed his time with Wes. His brother was kind-hearted. He was smart, too. He could hold down a job. And it looked like Lydia might come around to the idea after all. He slid into the driver's seat and started the engine. He couldn't wait to tell Cat about how things went. As thoughts of Cat entered his mind, he grew anxious to see her again. Things had progressed between them last night. They were entering new territory, and he wasn't sure what to do about it. He only knew he liked how he felt when they were together. He felt a little guilty for not embracing what they had as a relationship. He was hesitant to enter into something like that with Cat, for obvious reasons. Besides the fact that they lived a thousand miles apart, their lives were very different. But he couldn't deny his feelings for her, and he wanted to indulge himself. Maybe if he flew out every weekend, they could continue to see each other. The thought excited him as he pulled up in front of Cat's house. Cat opened the door before he had a chance to knock. She smiled and curled her hair behind her ear. Hey. How had he ever thought she was simply pretty? She was stunning. Her blue eyes were like liquid glass, and her sweater hugged her just right. He couldn't help himself. He snaked his arm around her and pulled her to him. I've missed you. She blushed. Are you ready? I was thinking I could introduce you to the other mom-and-pop restaurant here in town, the Dragon Palace. He really didn't care about food at the moment, but he nodded anyway. Sounds good. He leaned down and brushed his lips across hers. The feathery kiss ignited a fire in his veins. He pulled back. He'd have to be careful or he'd just spend the evening kissing her in the doorway. Cat grinned at him. Let's go. The Dragon Palace turned out to be the perfect place for a date. They were seated in the back in a secluded corner booth. The lighting was dim enough to be romantic. He sat across from her, gazing into her eyes. I like this. She shied away from his probing gaze. What do you like? Being with you. I like it, too. She gave him a smile, then bit her lower lip. What? I don't know. I just can't help but wonder where we can go from here. It's just my personality, I guess. I've been thinking a lot about our conversation yesterday. Maybe I was premature not wanting to say we're in a relationship. Cat played with her straw. So now you think it's okay to call this a relationship? Damien leaned closer. Last night, I called a woman I met online. Cat seemed to freeze. And I told her we couldn't talk anymore. I realized I didn't want to think about another woman. I like what we have. I don't want to jeopardize it. Cat went back to stirring the ice in her soda. I'm glad. I was thinking maybe I could fly down here during the weekends. Then I could spend time with my brother as well as you. I'd like that. No one spoke for a few moments. Damien grew tired of the silence. What are you doing for Christmas? Hillary and I are going over to the center to open presents with Mom. She gets tired quickly, so it will be short, but the center always does some activities for them, so we'll stay for the Christmas bingo. She might not be able to do much more than that. You're good to her. Thanks. Cat looked down at the table. The waitress brought them their meals. Cat was silent as they ate. What are you thinking? He finally asked. She shook her head. It's nothing. Seems like something to me. She popped a water chestnut in her mouth. Ignore my weird mood. We're on a date. Let's just enjoy it. He pointed to the empty spot beside her. I'd enjoy it more if I were over there. She got a sly grin on her face. What's stopping you? He slid his plate across the table and slipped over to her side of the booth. Ah, this is better. He leaned in closer to her. This side has a better view. Really? She slipped her arms around his neck. Much better. He kissed the corner of her mouth, then worked his way down her jaw to her ear. His heart hammered in his chest. Her smell was intoxicating. Cat let out a little moan. You're killing me, you know that. He smiled and whispered in her ear. Good. You'd better stop so we can finish eating. He kissed her neck. Who needs food? 
She pushed him away, laughing. You're terrible. They finished at the restaurant, then went to Kat's house for another movie. As Kat scrounged around her DVD collection, Damien opened up her laptop. Have you gotten any good emails lately? She shot him a grin. Yes, open the one from Dr. Yong. He searched her inbox, then clicked to open. Dear Miss Filipina, here is the photograph you have asked for. I understand why you must authenticate my identity. This photograph will prove to you who I am and that it is me who ordered the box of ho-hos. It was difficult to balance them as you asked me to do, but I succeeded. When you get this email, you will know that I am speaking truth to you. You may now send the thousand dollars, so I will be able to process the inheritance money of seven million U.S. dollars. Dr. Yong. Attached was a photograph of a man with a box of ho-hos on his head. Damien couldn't believe it. You're kidding me. He actually did it. Yes, he did. Read the next one. It's even funnier. She turned back to the cabinet full of movies. He clicked to go back to her inbox. Another email caught his attention, and a sick feeling entered his gut. What was she doing getting an email from privileged singles? It was addressed to Amelia. He stared at it, understanding slowly creeping in. Cat was Amelia. The whole thing had been a lie. He slowly closed her laptop, his hands shaking. She'd set up a fake profile. Why would she have done that? He tried to remember all the interactions he'd had with Amelia, the things he told her. It had all been Cat and she'd let him think it was another woman. She didn't say anything when he told her about Amelia tonight. She was going to keep lying to him. The thought made him feel like throwing up. Cat pulled the DVD out of the cabinet and turned to him. I found it. Elf, it's the perfect... Her voice trailed off when she looked at his face. What's wrong? He stood. I need to go. She turned to him, her arms falling to her sides, the movie in her hand. Are you okay? No. He slipped into his coat. I just found out you've been lying to me, Amelia. Chapter 25 All the blood drained from Kat's face as she stared at Damien. He stood there, his jaw clenching and unclenching. Kat's gaze flickered to her laptop. Her throat tightened. He'd found out somehow. She let him use her laptop, and now she'd ruined everything. I can explain, she said, her voice small. It sounded pathetic, even to her own ears. You don't need to. I understand. He tugged on his gloves. You created a fake profile on privileged singles. You targeted me. You lied to me. You pretended to be someone else. You talked to me on the phone. You made me think you were a totally different person who lived in New York. Have I gotten anything wrong? Cat felt like scum, worse than scum. She felt like the slime that aspired to be scum. Her mouth dried up, and she shook her head because no words would come out. Right, I didn't think so. He turned toward the door. Wait, she said the words sticking in her throat. He faced her, his expression stoic. She swallowed. What in the world would she say to him that would make this better? That it had been a harmless prank at first? That she never really meant to fall for him? That she'd done it to try to figure out if he was going to close down the newspaper? She tried to say something, but nothing would form on her lips except a lame, I'm sorry, which came out so quietly she wasn't even sure if he heard her. Goodbye, Cat. He left her standing there, holding the stupid DVD case and staring at the door. She sank down onto the couch beside her closed laptop. Guilt and pain washed over her. He'd every right to be angry. He'd talked to Amelia just last night. She should have told him. He was growing serious about their relationship. She should have known keeping up the pretense was a bad idea. She just didn't know how to tell him. And with him wanting to end contact, she thought it would just resolve itself. But of course, he found out, and it ruined everything. Guilt for not wanting to tell him made her feel worse. He was right. 
She'd lied to him. She blinked as tears filled her eyes. She didn't blame him for hating her. She would be horribly upset if he'd done the same thing to her. She took a deep breath and let it out slowly. Maybe he'd cool down and she could talk to him tomorrow. She did a stupid thing, but it wasn't as bad as hiding a secret husband or something. Things could be worse. He'd have to see that, right? She got on her computer and logged on to privileged singles. She deleted her account, something she should have done the moment she realized her feelings for Damien were growing into something tangible, something more than just a crush. A hollow feeling spread through her, and she closed her computer. Damien would forgive her, right? This wasn't the end of things. It couldn't be. She'd just have to call him tomorrow and beg forgiveness. Maybe spilling her side of the story would be enough. If she could get her words out, that is. Cat went into the bathroom and filled up the old claw-footed tub with hot water. Usually, soaking in the tub made everything better, but her heart was cold, even with the steam and heat enveloping her. She'd messed everything up. After ten minutes, she gave up and drained the tub. She got ready for bed, her chest feeling like a large piece of it was missing. Tomorrow, she'd make things right between them. She had to, or she'd never be the same. She lay in bed, tears spilling down the sides of her face as she stared up at the dark ceiling. Kat awoke the next morning, feeling like she'd been run over. Her eyes were swollen and puffy. Her nose was stuffed up so much she couldn't breathe. The stricken look on Damien's face kept flashing through her mind, making her feel worse. She got up and showered, then put her hair up in a bun. She had work today. With things awkward between her and Damien, she wasn't sure what would happen with the newspaper. So she might be stuck at the diner indefinitely. Dating the boss really was a stupid idea. Harriet approached her when she got to work. What's up with your man? He was in here earlier and you'd have thought he had a baseball bat up as you know what. I think I heard him growl. Kat sighed. I did something stupid. Harriet smoothed out her apron. Oh no, honey, what happened? She was tired of rehashing it over and over in her mind. I really don't want to talk about it. Well, if you want to apologize, you'd better do it quick. He said something about changing plans and flying out today. Her heart plummeted. Of course he did. Harriet frowned. Call him, honey. You can take whatever time off you need. Thanks, Harriet. She slipped into the back office and shut the door. Her fingers trembled as she dialed his number. He answered on the third ring. Hello. She hadn't been thinking about what she would say, and as soon as she heard the deep timbre of his voice, her brain cells froze. Words. She needed to speak them. Uh, hi, she finally said, then slapped her hand to her forehead. Dumb. What do you want, Cat? Can we talk? She sounded like she'd breathed in helium and she consciously tried to lower her voice. Damien was silent for a moment before answering. All right. I I'm at the diner until 5.30 if you want to come over here, o or we can talk after I get off work. I'm flying out soon. I won't have time to talk in person. Oh, her heart beat loudly in her ears. She had to do this over the phone. Okay. He exhaled. What is it? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. You mean you didn't mean for me to find out. Cat cringed. He was right. What could she say about that? He'd caught her, and he knew she had no intention of telling him the truth. She plopped down on the office chair. Yes, she whispered. Listen, I think it would be best if we take some time apart. In other words, I'm dumping you, you lying scumbag. Cat tried to hold it together. How long? I don't know. I need time to think about things. And she needed time to drown herself in ice cream. Okay, she whispered. What else was she to do? She'd already apologized. She felt terrible, but that didn't change the fact that she did what she did, and he'd found out about it. He let out another breath. I'll talk to you next week. All right. With a click, he hung up. Her heart stuttered as she slipped her phone back into her pocket. She'd ruined things between them and there was no going back. She'd lost him. Forever. 
Chapter 26 Damien wiggled his mouse to wake up his computer once again. Why couldn't he concentrate? His numbers weren't adding up and his mind kept wandering to Cat. What an idiot he was. He'd let himself believe she was actually interested in him. What a joke. He slid open his drawer and pulled out a fuzzy velvet box. He opened the lid. It was the Tree of Life necklace they'd seen at the jewelry store. He'd purchased it for her last week as a surprise. He knew she'd love it. Looking at it made his stomach sour, so he closed the lid and dropped it to the bottom of his drawer. Chuck walked into his office. You still here? I thought you left hours ago. Damien shrugged. No reason to leave. Chuck squinted at him. It's Christmas Eve. The only reason I'm here is because I hid my wife's present in my desk, but I had no choice. She's torn the house apart twice trying to find it. He held up a box with a silver bow. Looks like jewelry. Chuck smiled. Tanzanite. She's in love with it. I'm sure she'll adore it then. Damien couldn't muster up the strength to be enthusiastic about Christmas. Chuck sighed and shifted his weight. Go home, Damien. Take a break from work. Work keeps my mind off of things. Lie. He was totally thinking about Cat. Call her. After he'd gotten back from Pleasant Hollow, he'd confided everything to Chuck. Told him the whole story, even the pathetic ending of the relationship. The way he'd found out Cat wasn't who he thought. I can't. Why not? You're sitting there brooding over her. You obviously love her. So do something about it. Chuck's words rang in his ears. Did he love Cat? The realization shocked him. He had fallen in love with a small town girl. A spunky, funny girl with a laugh that made his heart melt. He put his head in his hands. She doesn't love me back. Oh, come on. You said yourself she created that fake account before you two got close. Her job was on the line. You can't blame her for wanting to know if she would be out of a job, can you? What makes you think she doesn't feel the same for you? Damien rubbed his neck. She lied. And you never lied to someone you care about? Get over yourself. Everyone makes mistakes, even you. Chuck scoffed and shifted toward the door. I'm leaving, and if you know what's good for you, you'll get on that private jet of yours and go see her. She's probably as miserable as you are. He slapped the door jam and left. Great. Now all he could think about was seeing Cat again. Damien stood and crossed his office. His secretary had hung a wreath on the wall and it reflected off the glass windows. What was Cat doing right now? Was she curled up on that awful couch of hers watching a movie? Memories of the night he'd been on the couch with her surfaced. He'd opened up to her about his accident, shown her his leg. She hadn't pushed him away. In fact, come to think of it, he'd opened up to Amelia about his leg before that night. She knew his leg was burned. Damien closed his eyes and ran his hand through his hair. Was he being stupid, pushing her away? Was Chuck right? He didn't like to think that he was being stubborn and unforgiving. He was just as capable of making mistakes as the next guy. Maybe he was being unreasonable. Another image of Cat flashed through his mind. This one was of her on that stupid sled, grinning like she was a twelve-year-old. She really was something else. He wavered for a moment before picking up his phone and calling his assistant. If he arranged things now, he could be at her house by morning. Maybe this Christmas wouldn't be a stupid waste after all. Cat awoke Christmas morning and lay there, staring at nothing. She tried to muster up the energy to get out of bed, but couldn't. It was Christmas, and she'd thought for one brief moment she'd have someone special to spend it with. She should have realized that was a pipe dream. Hillary poked her head into her room. I made candy cane cookies. Cat moaned and pulled her pillow over her head. Come on, you have to get out of bed. I can't stand to see you like this on Christmas. I don't care. We can watch Hallmark movies, Hillary said as she ripped the pillow out of Cat's hands. Hallmark movies? Where all the couples get together at Christmas time? I'd rather die. Cat pulled her covers over her head. All right, then, we'll watch a Christmas story. You'll love that one, and there's no romance in it. Cat was warm under the covers. She really didn't want to move, didn't want to think. Sleep sounded good. 
No. The sound of her blinds moving rang out. Then Hillary gasped. Oh my gosh, get out of bed. Damien's here. Right. If Hillary thought that would work, she was delusional. You're such a liar. No, I'm not kidding. He's really here. Something about her voice made Kat believe her. She threw her covers back, a panic rushing through her. Are you serious? The doorbell rang. Kat hopped out of bed and ran to the bathroom. She quickly brushed her hair and rinsed her mouth with mouthwash before she grabbed her robe and ran to the front door. Hillary stood nearby, a smirk on her face, but she hadn't answered the door. Kat's heart pounded as she flung the door open. Elliot stood on the front door stoop. Hey, Kat. He clicked and pointed at her. Disappointment flooded through her. Hi, Elliot. I was thinking since it's Christmas and all, maybe you want to go to the movies with me. He scratched his belly. Cat rubbed her temples. What does going to the movies have to do with it being Christmas? I don't know. I just thought it would be a good time to go on a date. And then he tacked on, with me, as if she didn't realize he wanted her to go with him. Cat heard Hillary behind her laughing. She sucked in a breath. Sorry, Elliot. I'm spending the day with family. Oh, right. I got it. He hitched up his pants and nodded. Maybe next time. Sure. Maybe. Cat closed the door and rounded on her sister. You are so mean. Hillary ducked while Cat slapped at her head. Stop. I surrender. I'm sorry. Cat couldn't hold it in any longer. She laughed and Hillary joined in. When they quieted, Kat scowled at her. Thanks a lot. Come on, you were going to stay in bed until this afternoon. I had to do something. Hillary shoved her. Go, shower, you stink. Kat thumbed her nose at her. Fine. Shower really did feel good, though, so Kat wasn't too upset with Hillary when she got out. And when she smelled bacon, she forgave her wholeheartedly. Kat walked into the kitchen. I'm starved. Thanks for making... Cat froze. Damien stood near the stove, leaning on the counter, looking like a freaking Greek god. Hillary gave her a meaningful look. Cat blinked, sure she was having a hallucination or something. When Damien didn't disappear, her knees went weak. Damien? Hey, Cat. All right, you two. Go into the other room and talk. Breakfast won't be ready for a few minutes. Hillary made a shooing motion with her hands. Cat obeyed as they went into the living room. Her heart thumped wildly in her chest. She turned to him. What are you doing here? Damien looked uncomfortable. I came to apologize. You? Apologize? For what? It was pointed out to me yesterday that I'm not perfect. I make mistakes like the rest of the human race. And it was also pointed out that I'm being a jerk for not talking things out with you. He lowered his gaze to the floor. And so I'm here to beg your forgiveness. Cat swallowed as different emotions swelled in her. This was what she wanted, a relationship with Damien. But something still held her back. I forgive you. Relief shone in his eyes. You do? Yes, but I don't know if it's a good idea to start back up where we left off. You still live in New York, and I can't leave Pleasant Hollow. Saying the words tasted bitter on her tongue. Damien looked stricken. You won't give us a chance to see where this is going? Pain swelled in Kat's chest. I already know where this is going, she said, her voice almost a whisper. I've fallen in love with you, but eventually we'll have to realize we're not compatible. Her heart ripped apart, having to admit that to him, to herself. Damien took a step toward her. You've fallen in love with me? She blinked back hot tears. Yes. Why did it hurt so much to admit that to him? Damien wrapped his arms around her waist, pulling her to his chest. He kissed her forehead. Sweet cat, I love you too. Until now, I didn't realize how much. Hearing you say those words. His sentence trailed off and he leaned closer to her. Emotion played on his features. I don't 
ever want to be apart. I'll move to your six-block town if I have to. Cat's mind raced as fast as her heart. Was he really saying he would move to Pleasant Hollow? The thought made her skin tingle. What? He smiled at her. You heard me. I'm moving to your dumpy little town and expanding the newspaper. I'll be closer to my brother, and we can start dating like a real couple. He would move. She could hardly believe it. What about your business? Other people can run it. I don't need the income. He kissed her jaw, and then her neck. I need you. Hillary came into the room. Good. You two seem to have worked everything out. You were driving me nuts, you know that? I could see how crazy you two were for each other. Cat blushed and tried to step back from Damien, but his hold on her tightened. He kissed below her earlobe, and she almost melted into a puddle on the floor. Breakfast is ready if you two can stop this terrible public display of affection for a few minutes. Hillary shot Cat a grin and then left. The room spun as Cat grew dizzy with his kisses. Damien loved her. She felt like she could fly. This was going to be the best Christmas ever. Epilogue. One year later, Cat snuggled into Damien's chest in front of the fireplace. Damien's fireplace. He'd kept his word and built a house on the hill west of Pleasant Hollow. He said it was so he was as close to Starbucks as he could get. Damien let out a contented sigh. Christmas was good this year, he said, his voice low and rumbly. I agree, your brother sure loved that train you gave him. Damien gently caressed the back of her hand. I'm so glad Lydia is letting him work part-time at the Humane Society. He just loves it. He's grown so much more independent since I first met him. I'm proud of him. Damien kissed the top of her head. And proud of you. Cat felt herself blush, even though she hadn't really done anything. You're the one that hired me as a reporter. Right, but your stories are blowing people away. You're good at what you do. The compliment warmed her. Thanks. Do you think my mother will ever forgive me for moving out here? Cat turned to look at him. I don't know. She really hates me, doesn't she? All day today, she was sending me glares. Damien frowned. She doesn't hate you. I'm just not living the life she imagined for me. But I'm happy, so that's what's important. I'm actually surprised she came out here for Christmas. You must have some special persuasion powers I don't know about. Cat laughed. I just invited her and told her she needed to see your new home. I may have mentioned the jacuzzi you put in every guest bathroom. Brilliant. She actually handled being around Wes really well. Damien nodded. I was pleasantly surprised. He kissed the sliver of skin that was exposed near her shoulder. I'm sorry we couldn't spend Christmas with your mother. Cat swallowed down her sadness. Her mother had passed away in July. It was still hard for her to think about, but Damien had been such a support for her. At least I know she's in a happy place. Are you sad your sister couldn't make it? No, she's right where she needs to be. She'll graduate next year, and then I'm sure we'll see her for holidays. She loves culinary school. They settled in a comfortable silence, the sound of the fire cracking filling the empty space. Damien was the first to speak. There's one last thing I got you for Christmas that I didn't have a chance to give you. She turned to face him. What do you mean? We opened presents this morning. Did you forget? He smiled. No, I wanted to give it to you when we were alone. Cat grew curious. What is it? He pulled out a small box from his pocket. Her heart sped up at the sight of it. He slid off the couch onto one knee. Cat's throat went dry. Don't hurt your leg, she whispered. He ignored her and opened the box. A beautiful princess-cut diamond ring sat nestled in the velvet. Before I met you, my life was full of things that only brought me a shadow of happiness. This last year with you has been amazing. You make me whole, Cat. I can't think of living life without you. 
Will you make me the happiest man in the world and marry me? Cat blinked back tears of joy. Of course, she whispered, emotion cutting off her air. She threw her arms around his neck and hugged him. He stood and pulled her close. I love you, Cat, he said in her hair. You are my everything. She smiled up at him. He brushed his lips across hers, and their hearts were knit together. The End This has been Her Big Fat Hunky Billionaire Boss, Clean Billionaire Romance Series, Book 3, written by Victorine E. Liskey, narrated by Karen Gunderson. Copyright 2018 by Victorine E. Liskey. Production Copyright by Victorine E. Liskey.